It's the Mixed Martial Arts Hour with... Martial Arts Hour is back in your life on this Monday, April 15th, 2024. Hello again, everyone. I sure hope you're doing well. Welcome back to the program. What is this? Our fifth episode in the last seven to eight days. I'm not sure if you count Monday as a day or not, but since last Monday, it's our fifth episode. And what a time to be alive. I feel like I could do 10 more after what we saw on Saturday. Guys, this is uh, this is a whole new world. This is the post-UFC 300 world. What are we going to talk about? What are we going to break down? What are we going to pontificate on, hypothesize on? What are we going to debate? UFC 300 has come and gone. And I think the best way to describe what we witnessed on Saturday in Las Vegas at the T-Mobile Arena is if you are a longtime fan of this sport, if you're someone who watched in the 90s, in the early 2000s, if you're someone who watched in the tough era, in the pre-Connor era, in the post-Connor era, in the Fox era, in the ESPN era, the pre-pandemic era, the post-pandemic era, if you're one of those fans, it doesn't matter who you are, you are either reminded, you are either reassured, or you either learned on Saturday why this sport is so special and why the UFC is so special and why perhaps you fell in love with this sport way back when, why you currently love the sport, why you're intrigued by the sport. There are so many different fans now converging on this sport. There's the old school fans. There's the, you know, the ones who came in the last few years. They're the ones who are brand new and they're the ones who are just checking it out. And I heard from a lot of those fans in the last column who said, holy shit, is it always like this? The UFC nailed it on Saturday in so many different ways. And yes, the road to get to UFC 300 was a little bumpy at times. And there were things that we here on this show and every other MMA show on the planet nitpicked. And I think it was all fair game from the buildup to the poster to all that nonsense. But once the week started in Las Vegas, the UFC got it right. And they nailed it every step of the way. From, from the press conference on Thursday and the reveal of all the fighters sitting at the, uh, the dais, every single fighter who is set to compete on this card, to you know even the photo shoots of all the current champs and former champions coming together. The weigh-ins were as smooth as can be. The glove revealed. Feel like, you know, it, it felt like we were watching something new, the dawn of a new era. And then the card itself. And you know what's so interesting about this particular card? 13 fights total. Once it was all locked in, it was the antithesis in many respects of UFC 200. Once every fight was locked in, signed, finalized, done deal, it was the complete antithesis of UFC 200 in this respect. No fights were canceled. No one pulled out. No one withdrew. No one failed a drug test. No one missed weight. It was... Smooth sailing. And I remember watching, you know, UFC 100 was a big deal. It was Brock Lesnar versus Frank Mir was the WWE star who now turned into the big MMA star. And he headlined and there were, you know, three big fights at the top of the bill. Uh, Michael Bisping and Dan Henderson, George St. Pierre against Thiago Alves. And then, of course, Brock versus Frank too. I remember watching PTI on the Monday after UFC 100. And it was Tony Kornheiser... And it was Michael Wilbon. And they were they were debating, you know, what what it is that they just saw on on Saturday. And it was the pro wrestler turned MMA fighter who was talking about Coors Light, who was talking about getting on top of his wife, who was talking about, you know, like he was he was going up into the cage and going, and he was there was foam coming out of his mouth. You remember that? And they're like, this is some crazy stuff. They weren't sure what to make of it all. That was really the talk after UFC 100. The sport was still kind of going like this. So it wasn't quite certain where it would end up. And then the talk, honestly, after 200 was, that was great, but it could have been so much better. It could have been John Jones versus Daniel Cormier too. And what does this mean for John Jones? And all of that was a black cloud hanging over it all. And then the Brock Lesnar thing was a black cloud hanging over it all. And it all felt like it was great. But man, on the Monday after 200, the big story wasn't necessarily 200. 
for a minute, it wasn't even John Jones. It wasn't Brock Lesnar. It was the sale of the company. The company was sold, or at least it was announced that it was going to be sold on the Sunday heading into Monday, and that became the top story. I remember sitting in a chair like this one doing this show, talking about that to lead off the show. On this Monday, April 15, 2024, after UFC 300, it's just about what we saw on Saturday. And isn't that great? It's about Max Holloway and him pointing to the ground with 10 seconds left in a fight that he's up four rounds to none. He could have coasted, put his hands up, gone like this, and he would have won that fight fair and square and probably still would have won the fight of the night bonus. Instead, he goes back to UFC 199 against Ricardo Lamas and he says, meet me in the middle right here. The freaking shot heard around the world, the point seen around the world, and then he knocks out Justin Gaethje in one of the greatest finishes in UFC history and one of the most dramatic finishes in UFC history, up there, in my opinion, with one of the best stoppages ever, alongside Yair Rodriguez and the Korean Zombie. You'll recall on the 25th anniversary show, the upward elbow with a second left in the fifth round. Now, that was a fight night at 1.30 in the morning on FS1. This is UFC 300 in Las Vegas at T-Mobile Arena, one of the biggest gates, third biggest ever, one of the biggest pay-per-view audiences in UFC history. That number isn't out yet, but I can assure you it'll be over a million, well over a million, in my opinion, once it's all said and done. It's about Alex Pereira. Eight fights into his UFC career. Has headlined MSG twice. Two-division champion. Knocking out five current or former champions. Doing it again on Saturday to Jamal Hill. And was never phased. We find out that he had a broken toe going into the fight. And the guy was just like, I mean, it was like a walk in the park for him. And look, Jamal Hill isn't the biggest fan of mine, but let me tip my cap to him. Let me say, coming back after nine months is pretty damn remarkable. After an Achilles tear in July of last year, to come back and be in this spot, it's pretty damn amazing. I tip my cap to him. And, and, and to say everything that he said, people are using that against him. No, that's what you have to say going into a fight like this. That's how you have to think, feel, and believe going into a fight like this. You have to believe that in your heart that this guy isn't on your level. And so you can't use those words against him now in the aftermath. That's, that's, that's bullshit internet stuff. You have to feel it and believe it. And look, it didn't work out. And he met a superior fighter and striker on Saturday. Not the end, but Alex Pereira is on some kind of heater right now. And, and the way in which he just went in there, he is a showman. And, and it's rare that we see a showman like him connect with an audience who doesn't really speak English. He doesn't have to speak English. He, he is so stoic but he is so dangerous and he is so intimidating and so athletic, so talented that you just can't help but watch this guy. Walks out there. He does his patented walk. He does the bow and arrow. Jamal's out there. Shades of Chael Sonnen and Anderson Silva get in the cage, which, by the way, earlier in the night we found out is going into the Hall of Fame UFC 117, one of the greatest nights in the history of this sport. And then very early on, he gets hit in the groin he shoes off Herb Dean. He knocks out Jamal Hill, and then he just brushes him aside. And whether he'll admit it or not, a little bit of payback for what Jamal Hill did to his mentor, Glover Teixeira, back in January of 2023. What a star. What a moment that was. Does he come back at 301? We'll find out. Something tells me a bit of a long shot, but I wouldn't put it past him. Why not? Why can't he get a, a, an Anderson Silva, Stefan Bonner, may rest in peace, like fight? Why can't he get a, a James Irvin, like fight, which Anderson Silva did when he was the 185-pound champion? It doesn't have to be a title fight. Just give him any kind of fight. He's must-see TV. So you get a performance like that. You get Max. You get Zhang Wei Li, which, let's be honest, we're all in a bit of a fog, but she's the best female fighter on the planet, pound for pound, number one. She was this close to finishing the fight in the first round. In the end, historic fight, first time, Two Chinese-born fighters fight for a title in the UFC. Tremendous stuff. And she once again puts the exclamation point. She is the best. But it's the return of Yuri Prochaska. It's the debut of Kayla Harrison. It's Diego Lopez. It's Armand Sarukian. And what a fight that was. It's Renato Moicano. It's Davidson Figueredo. Everyone stepped up. And Dana White said in the post-fight press conference, we put the bells and whistles. We do this. We do that. At the end of the day, it's the fighters who have to step up. And whether it was the 300K bonuses, whether it was the bright lights, I don't know what it was. They all recognized everyone wanted to be on this card. The fighters freaking stepped up. And 
for me as someone, because I'll speak on, on, on that category right there, the first one, who's been watching since the 90s, it's just a reminder of why this sport is so special and why these fighters are so special and why we love this. That was a seven and a half hour card. It did not feel like that. And I was tired and I was tired and I, I never felt like it dragged. It was like, oh shit. Now it's Diego Lopez and Sadiq Youssef. Oh shit. Now it's Kayla Harrison's debut. Oh shit. Now it's Yuri Prochaska. Oh shit. Now it's Bo Nickel. Like it just, every fight coming up was like, oh shit, this is up. This is up. This is up. It was fun. It was exciting. It was entertaining. They, they hit all the notes. They, they, they honored the past. There was nostalgia, the old graphics, the music, the intro, Mark Coleman. It was a, it was a 11 out of 10. There's literally nothing that you could say. Every fight delivered. Every fight was interesting. Every fight was intriguing. Every fight had its own storyline. Every fight mattered. Every fight had stakes. People are talking about the sport in a positive way on this Monday. Everything felt big. Everything felt important. Everything was fun. Everything was entertaining. If you bought tickets, you got your money's worth. If you bought the pay-per-view, you got your money's worth. What more is there to say? There is a lot more to say, and we're going to be talking about it all show long today here on the program. I can't wait to get into it. That was a long intro. I apologize, but it's great to be here on this Monday. As always, we are presented by our good friends over at DraftKings. More on them later on in the program. And how about the Parlay Boys? Rolling along now. Ah, yes, the losing streak very much in the rearview mirror. It's a great time to be alive. Shout out also to our good friends at BetterHelp. More on them in the program as well. Now, back into the show. We'll hear from the Parlay Boys. We'll get the final word, the final verdict on their picks, GC's picks. What a week it was with the team out in Las Vegas. We did two shows out there. They did the watch party, full card watch party on Saturday. And once again, I'll reiterate, if you didn't watch those shows, it was a lot of fun. We had a great time. We had seven in-studio guests stop by. We're hopefully going to do more of that. And I just have to tip my cap once again to everyone back there who pulled that off and everyone here who wasn't with us, but from a technical standpoint, who helped us pull that off because that wasn't easy. The internet was was uh, problematic. We're in a hotel room. We're trying to do this as smooth and nice as can be. And they knocked it out of the park. I just showed up and was talking into a microphone and, uh, you know, all that other stuff is well above my pay grade. And there were no issues, no glitches, no lagging streams, nothing. It was it was incredible to be a part of. And uh, I was really, really proud to be a part of it. And so thankful and grateful to everyone back there who who made it happen. So I hope you enjoyed those special shows. And I thought it was, you know, uh, befitting of the week and moment. And like I said, hopefully we get more of that. Now, prior to all of that, we're going to have uh, Jorge Masvidal join us in studio. They had the first leg of their four-city press conference tour on Friday in Las Vegas. It was Masvidal. It was Diaz. It was pretty good. It was well attended. The next leg is tomorrow here in New York. Then they're going to Dallas. Then it's Los Angeles. Gamebred joining us in studio. He hasn't joined us in studio since, I think, 2017 when he said that infamous, like, you know, I pop him and I run type of thing. Anyway, Gamebred will join us in studio. He was at the event on Saturday, and of course, he's the first man to ever win officially the BMF title, although Nate Diaz did sort of create it after the uh, the Anthony Pettis fight in August of 2019. It's great to have Gamebred. He'll join us in studio at 4 o'clock. At 3.30, Aljamain Sterling, who made his uh, featherweight debut on Saturday, he defeated Calvin Cater. He will stop by to talk about his new life at 145 pounds. Diego Lopez is an absolute star. He's, uh, I mean, he's just unbelievable. Um, this guy takes a fight against Mozart Evloev on five days' notice. Doesn't go his way, but gives him a tough freaking fight. And all he does is win since then. It's now three in a row, three finishes. And he he stopped Sadiq Youssef, who's a really tough and talented guy in just 89 seconds. Shout out to Diego Lopez, who speaks both Portuguese, both uh, Spanish, and now... He's dropping in a little English as well. Tremendous stuff. We'll talk to him. Uh, prior to that, we'll talk to Money Moicano. Uh, looked a little dicey there for a minute. Like first 10 seconds, he got hit to the body with a kick, and it looked like it could have been dicey there. And then he got in serious trouble. Turner walked away. Moicano got you know a little bit of breathing room, and he ended up picking up the win. Shout out to Money Moicano. Big win for him. Armin Sarukian told us last week, I'll see you on Monday. He's a man of his word. He'll see us today after the big win over Charles Oliveira. And that looked dicey. Probably the tightest guillotine 
attempt that I've seen someone escape since Alex Volkanovsky did it against Brian Ortega back at UFC 266. He did escape, and holy shit, just as impressive. Thought he was done. His face was like turning red. It looked like he couldn't breathe. I'm, I'm sure he couldn't breathe, and he got out of it. Shout out to Armin. We suspect he's the number one contender, although there is a title fight happening before he gets his title fight, and we'll talk about that in a second as well. Kayla Harrison will join us at 2 o'clock to talk about her debut. So it wasn't just about 300, by the way. If you stayed up late or you found out on Sunday, we also found out two, dare I say, three massive pieces of news via the post-fight press conference. Now, if I were to nitpick about one thing, if I could, if that's all right, if I could nitpick about one thing— I do believe that the return of the biggest star in the history of this sport, the biggest star in the UFC, deserves a little more pomp and circumstance than a little piece of paper like like this big being brought to Dana White. At like it, literally, it looked like this. And he's like, oh, what do we have here? Now, when he said it on Friday, it was, it was Cap City. It was a done deal. It was a done deal prior to that. And in, uh, in the conversations that I had, I had heard that there was a debate as to how they would announce it. If it was up to me, if I was leading the charge, I would have announced it during the show, maybe on the ESPN prelims, ABC prelims, or at some point in the pay-per-view like they've done time and time again, but they opted to save it for the post-fight press conference, so it is official. It is going down. UFC 303, June 29th, Las Vegas, International Fight Week, main event, five-round fight, 170 pounds, It's Conor McGregor versus Michael Chandler, like he told us back on December 31st. Yes, the only difference is it's 170 and 185, but, you know, close enough. I don't think many of us thought it would be 185. Um, And he did say that he was being a little cheeky when we spoke to him a few weeks ago. So that's a done deal. But then we also found out that the main event for UFC 302, very close to here across the river in New Jersey, Newark to be exact, Prudential Center, will be Issa Makhachev defending his lightweight title. So great to see him back. Great to see him fighting in the United States against Dustin Poirier. So how big was that win over BSD? It ended up getting him a title shot. Dustin Poirier gets the title shot one more time. Can Dustin finish his story? We just saw Cody Rhodes finish the story. Can El Diamante, one of the most beloved fighters in UFC history, to never win an undisputed title? Can he finish the story on June 1st? We'll find out. It's... Makhachev Poirier, June 1st, main event, UFC 302. We also found out it's going to be Sean Strickland in his first fight since losing the middleweight title to DDP. Sean Strickland, Paulo Costa in a five-round co-main event. Now, it hasn't been deemed a number one contender fight. Never really quite sure when, how they determine what becomes a five-round fight and what doesn't. Of course, we know later on in the month, June 22nd to be exact, it's going to be Robert Whitaker against Hamza Chemaev in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. A lot of us suspect that that's a number one contender fight, but still, it's a very important fight, and something tells me the buildup to this fight is going to be fascinating. So we got three massive pieces of news. Could talk about all that and a hell of a lot more. Let me talk to the boys about what we saw on Saturday. They did a great job all week, had the watch party. How are you feeling, uh, GC, first things first? Seven-hour watch, eh, seven-and-a-half-hour watch party? Did you uh, did you survive? Did you feel like crashing afterwards? It, your microphone is not working right now. I don't hear you. I'm hearing you off of someone else's microphone. All right, we're just going to do a little mic check here live. On no, the- that is not working either. Rick, can you say something? Check. Well, just a little bit more than just one freaking word. Hello. No, your microphone sounds like shit I, as well. How about now? I'm coming through? You're very loud. It's not as crisp as usual. Very loud, yeah. So he, he can't hear me now. Now we just got to get No, 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 no. This yeah. sounds awful. I don't know what's going on back there, but it sounds awful. Now I don't hear you all. This is a fantastic, fantastic. I'm coming out hot out of the gate, and uh, and nothing's working. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, so Frankie is working on it. We'll get to Frankie and uh, the guys in a moment. But yes, they did seven and a half hours on Saturday. Some great reactions. Actually, we had some, uh, we, ha- we actually have some clips of the reactions. Let's see, let's see GC and, uh, and Mike react to the uh, Max Holloway win, the pointy to the ground. Do we have that one? Max Holloway knocking out Justin Whoa! Gaethje. Here it is. Hey, you crazy son of a bitch. Eight seconds. They say go to the I'm middle. The swing it out. Go to the middle and swing it out. Come on, Max. 
Come on, Max Fried. Oh! 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 It's over! It's over! Max Holloway just marked out! Just the game team! Oh, he just killed him! This is amazing. I mean, this was the world. Oh my God! Just Holy Gigi is shit. unconscious, face Oh down my God! On that the was mat. the sickest thing I've ever seen. With he one second me. left, he said, "Me oh ability on the put him out." That was the whole world. Oh my Every God. single person on the planet reacted that way because everyone thought, you know, all right, great win, great fight, fun, as we expected, five rounds. But you know, it, it was clearly a Max Holloway fight. Justin had his moments, and then it's like, oh, wait a second. He's doing the Ricardo Lamas thing. He's doing the 199 thing. He's pointing to the ground. He's actually going to do it. And Justin is obliged. I mean, what does he have to lose at that point, right? Swing for the fences. And then he knocks him out cold. Face first, face plant, Ric Flair style. Uh, you feel bad for Gaethje. And look, I have had my things to say about the BMF title. I still feel like the best fighter, the BMF, the number one guy is the champion. But... It does seem to bring out something, and 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 yes, it's it's strategically booked, right? Like Justin Gaethje and Dustin Poirier are allergic to boring fights, as are Gaethje and Holloway, as are Masvidal and Diaz. Those are the three BMF title fights that we've had. This validated it. This made it seem like a thing. This made it seem important, and I think that fight is that fight is ending that way. If it's if it's a five round fight, it's ending that exact same way, whether there's a title on the line or not. That fight is going to end that way because of who's involved and just how they are and how they're wired. But, I mean, is is it not perfect that Max Holloway, one of the most beloved fighters in, in MMA and UFC history, is the holder of that belt? And what about the fact that not that long ago, Max Holloway loses his third title fight to Alex Volkanovsky? And, and what about the fact that we wonder, okay, like, what's he going to do? Is he just going to be that contender? Is he going to try to go for a run at 155? But, oh, by the way, in 2019, he went up to 155 and he met Dustin Poirier and it did not go his way. And so what is he going to be now? Is he going to be, you know, that guy who's just kind of around, but the UFC doesn't want to put him in important title fights because he'll be that guy who will knock off contenders like he did against the likes of Arnold Allen? Like, what do you do with him? And now fast forward to mid-2024 and all of a sudden he's on fire. He's like the most popular guy in the sport on this Monday, most talked about guy on this sport, more talked about than anyone else on the card, obviously, because of the finish. He walks away with a $600,000 bonus. That's never happened before because there's never been bonuses that were 300 each. He got the fight of the night and the performance of the night bonus. And all of a sudden, it's Max Holloway staring at a scenario where he could, you know, say, hey, I'm the number one guy at 55 and 45. And it's, and it's Volk who I still believe is one of the greatest of all time, obviously, who's coming off the loss, who's now on a two-fight losing streak. Like, how quickly everything changes. It's unbelievable. Now, because of what happened on, on Saturday, because of the announcement, this is how I think... Like, when, 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 when Max won, he called out to Poria and he called out Makhachev. And then I was looking at things, and I was like, all right, like, he can have a legitimate claim to both the 55 title next and the 45 title next. The, the world is his oyster. He's got the whole world in his hands. And, and I thought, all right, what's he going to do? Because he mentioned both of them, and they're both massive fights, in large part because he's a part of them, because he's that damn good. But then we found out in the post-fight press conference that it's going to be, um, as I said, Islam versus Dustin Poirier. And I had heard, and we'll talk to Armin about this, that they did ask Armin if he wanted to fight on June 1st, but the turnaround, understandably so, a little too soon. That's in a month and a half. That's that's less than the the time frame that DDP got when he was offered the Izzy fight in September in Australia. Less than a month and a half. So Armin said, I'm going to chill. So what I think happens now, the best thing to happen to Armin was not only him winning, of course, but Justin losing. And you feel for Justin. Talk about how things change. Back in July, Justin Gaethje knocked out Dustin Poirier. He takes this fight, wins the belt, of course, at the BMF belt, and now he's not fighting for the real belt. And Dustin is after one. Like, it's just so crazy. It's all kill or be killed stuff. And you, ha you, know, like you, you have a scenario where Justin now is, is obviously going to need some time off. Dustin's fighting for the belt. I think you do this title fight in a month and a half and Armin fights the winner. If it's Makhachev, it's a perfect fight for Abu Dhabi. And if it's not, then you're getting 
ATT versus ATT, although Islam probably gets a rematch, and that would probably be in, in Abu Dhabi as well. So I think Armin will be next, just by virtue of the fact that they they asked him to fight on this card. And then uh, and then I think you got to do Max Holloway versus Ilya Teporia. How do you not do that fight? They showed Ilya in the front row, and I know people said that he looked nervous, and, you know, I know that people can, you know, I know people were saying, like, okay, you know, he looked scared, he looked nervous, he looked this, he looked that. They're putting a camera on this guy sitting in the front row. Like, we're, we're getting real time. I, Ilya Tapur is not scared of anyone. Stop with this stuff. He'd probably like, oh, shit. All right, here we go. I got a big-time fight. Now, does it happen in, in Spain? Does it happen at the Bernabeu? Does it, does it happen somewhere else? Not in Madrid, but so, I don't know. But all I know is Taporia versus Max is one of the biggest fights that the UFC can make right now. And and uh, I wonder what that means for Volk, but Max has all the momentum. And I also wonder if he defends the BMF title in that fight. Like, are both belts on the line? Remember, when Jorge won uh, the BMF title, he didn't defend it when he fought Kamara Usman in his next fight. So maybe it chills for a little bit. Who knows? But that's how I I kind of see things shaking out at 45 and 55 after what happened on Saturday. Huge win for Armin. Charles was so close. Still very much in the mix, but I think Armin will be next after the Mahacha Poirier fight plays out, and I think Max has to be next at this point. The other big question is, what do they do with Alex Pereira? Um, again, I, I, I would love to see him come back. I could totally understand if the UFC doesn't want him to come back, and, and, and at 301, that is, on May 4th, and I can understand if his team doesn't want him to come back with the injured toe. I did ask his team if that was being discussed at the moment. Haven't heard back just yet. But that would be, I mean, that would be epic shit right there. All right, man, I think we're both good now. Oh, hey, how are you? Frank, Frank working his magic. Yeah, it sounds like you got me now. Oh, uh, you're both Frank, back. Calm, cool, collected. Got it done. Guys like Jordan in game seven of the finals. Got it done. Well done. Around. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me just let me just finish one thing because I wanted please, to get one thing finish, out. Finish it, um, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I just want to say when I was talking about everything, you know, the the new people, the old people, the 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 people who are just checking out the sport, I do hope that every single promoter on the planet was watching Saturday's card. And I'm not just talking MMA promoters, but Lord knows every single MMA promoter is 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 fooling themselves that they're not trying to at least learn from the UFC and copy the UFC. But I really hope boxing promoters and boxing broadcasters were watching that card on Saturday. That's how we want our combat sports. 13 fights, three of them were five round fights, meaning 25 minute fights. It all kept moving. There was no fluff. There was no time killing. There was no let's send it here, let's send it there. Of course, some fights are ending shortly uh, and you have to go because it's on TV and there's commercials and all that stuff. But like once it got rolling, that thing I really felt flew by. And yes, it went well past 1 a.m. That usually happens when you have three 25-minute fights scheduled and uh, you know two of them went the distance, essentially. I know the max one was one second short, but you get the point. Um, I really hope they watch this and learn that this is how it should move along. This is the pace. This is the speed. This is what people want. Boom, 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 boom. You already got us. You don't need to sell us while we're there. We're locked in. We bought the pay-per-view. We've, we've committed. We're devoting our night to it. Stop selling us while we're there. We don't need the fluff. We don't need the filler. We just want to see the action. A nice little package is great. Perfect. Two minutes, three minutes, wonderful. But keep it rolling, and I hope everyone learned from that. All right, uh, let's go to the guys. That, you guys good? You guys ready to go? Oh, my God. Really? Are you? I hope you're fucking with me. Hello? Right. Yes. What is going on? Nothing. We're here. Yeah, that was like a 20-second delay when I said, are you good? Is everything good? Everything is good. Connor? Yeah, I think everything's good. What is going on? We're good. It's technical issues. Man. So, okay. USC 300. All right. Max Holloway, baby. I, I want to ask that question the to you. The best is Seven and a half hours. What was it like? Uh, it was a lot, man. It was a lot, but it went by quick because of how good the card was. Uh, I mean, the card was fantastic. We got carried by the Holloway finish, the Diego Lopez first-round finish. We started off with a finish in the Figueredo fight. The Kayla Harrison debut was unbelievable. Uh, I mean, what else happened? The Charles fight was incredible. Oh my gosh, the Yuri fight. The any if I made it halfway through that card, any tiredness went away once Yuri Brahashka 
got in the cage and did his thing. And then the main card, it was easy. So, yeah, I mean, it honestly went by fast. That's what you said earlier. Like, it was just flying by. Uh, don't know how, how soon I want to sign up for a full card stream again. You know, by the end, you are kind of like, man, these lights are starting to get a lot, huh? Like, they've, they've really been bearing down on you for a while. But uh, if a card calls for it, if it has the depth of UFC 300, I would happily do it again. Okay, so maybe a stupid question, but I'll ask it anyway. Rick, what's the top story? On the Monday, we were talking about this last week. What's the top story? You're at the water cooler. If someone says, oh, that UFC 300 happened this weekend, what's the first thing you're telling them about? I'll tell you what all my friends who are like semi-casual MMA fans were talking about, and that's Max Holloway. Yeah. It, it's it's, it's, it's got to be Max. It's Max for sure. When I, I talked to my girlfriend on the phone who uh, is do, be, very busy doing some other work and she didn't get to see it, and just getting to explain to her without her having seen it what transpired, it was like, oh my gosh, that really was just such a sick moment. I, I cannot believe that that happened. Uh, it was amazing. And then I was I was getting lunch today, and uh, you know, shout out, I got the got the three hundred shirt on. Yeah. Uh, the the guy serving up the lunch was like, oh, sick shirt, man, UFC three hundred. I was just like, yeah, you watched it. He's like, yeah, how about Holloway and Gaethje, huh? I think that's the, I think that's the litmus test right there. The guy in the lunch line. Tells you the that truth. is it. Yes. And that is a nice shirt, by the way. Oh, you got know, the shirt got the fanny pack on, too. Oh, uh, yeah. No, you're so. Wow. <laughs> wow, that's a nice fanny. Ooh, it's got some white in it. I mean, got some white. Got multiple zippers here. Holds the phone. I mean, holds the keys, wallet, whatever <laughs> you need. I'm, I'm 300 branded <laughs> out over here. Some people got BMF belts. Some people got championship belts. I got myself a fanny pack. I'm telling you, in a few years, this thing's going to be vintage. This thing is going to be nice. You know, you know, it's crazy. I remember when uh, when the UFC was just rolling, like this was down the tough era. Uh, I remember Dana saying that there was a discussion about like, should we get rid of the numbers? And that's another thing that if I was a promotion, I look at the UFC and it's like, if if they don't have numbers, this is just a card in April. It, it's probably it's like a pay per view. It's you know they're rolling right now, they're killing it, but it's just a card in April. The numbers allowed for this to be a thing, and and if you're a very new fan. I hate to break the news to you. It's not the 300th uh, card in UFC history. It's not even the 300th pay-per-view, to be honest, because uh, there was a half one, I think 37 and a half off the top of my head. Uh, there was um, one fifty one was canceled. One seventy seven was canceled. There were some spike ones um, that were like 70 and 75 and then and then 122 were all numbered but not pay-per-view so the point is it's just a thing but it just shows when there's something that we want to celebrate when there's something that feels round and whole when there's something that feels like it's a, a moment in time everyone gets up for it and it's beautiful and, and that's another thing that I would copy if I was running a promotion. You don't have to do it the exact same way, but uh, it's just like a thing that was almost fabricated that everyone celebrated and rose to the occasion. And they really do deserve, like those graphics and and like bringing back the 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 whatever that guy's name is, the old school guy, Ultiman, and then bringing back the music and the face to pain. They really freaking nailed it, didn't yeah. they, EJ? Like it was just amazing. I loved every second of that. The the classic little touches. I, I I'm actually curious what Connor thought of those because you know naturally we have associations with it. But geez, so what, so what like it, I, I actually I went back and rewatched some of UFC 100 and 200. UFC posted the the full cards on their on their YouTube channels, and I immediately picked up because they I think they remade the UFC 100 intro where like it's like the epic Roman guy and then the black yeah, the and gladiator. white interviews uh, with the fighters. I thought that was really cool. I liked how they did at the very beginning. It was like they showed the full screen of uh, Alex Pereira and, and Jamal Hill, and it was formatted like UFC one, like the or or whichever one it was, but like super old school. Um, so yeah, I loved it. I loved it. I loved how they walked out. Mark Coleman, uh, everything, man. I, I thought it was was tremendous. It, it's like you said at the beginning, man. When this sport is at its peak, it is it is tough to top, and it was at its peak on Saturday night. Oh my gosh. It's like, uh, I'm still, I still feel like I'm coming down from it all. Um, I think it's worth just running through all the results just because every 100%. single one was, uh, you know, significant. was, was yeah. significant and, and, and worthy of at least a, a mention here. Davison Figueredo submitted Cody Garbrandt in the first round. Um, another, excuse me, in the second round, uh, another win for Figgy 
at 135 pounds. Two very solid wins at 135. Like that's a nice way to debut in that division. I, yeah, I saw some people saying like, "Oh, he's fighting no namers." Are you what? No, get out of here! What? Rob who Font. That? Who said that? And Cody Garbrandt. Oh, I said the first thing I I think I tweeted all night was you know oh. like fig, 135 figgy is a real what thing. We, we 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 just can't even acknowledge those people. Top ten bantamweight and a former bantamweight champion are his first yeah. two wins. Next, one dominant decision and another finish. Please. And by the way, this isn't. You know, this isn't a a struggling Cody Garbrandt. This is a Cody Garbrandt who had two wins in a row. And I know he's not fighting top five guys, but, you know, the last win over Brian Kelleher was a very nice first-round finish. It looked like he had gotten his mojo back. So, you know, anytime someone moves up, especially in those 25, 35, 45, 45 to 55 weight classes, you do wonder how they will look and fare. And so far... Uh, the the extra ten pounds is doing Figgy a lot of good. So love that start. Um, then we moved along to Bobby Green versus Jim Miller. What a moment for Jim Miller getting to fight on UFC 100, 200, and now 300. Unfortunately for him, it didn't go his way. A great bounce back win for another veteran of the game who has been around for so freaking long and has had so many ups and downs. Bobby Green, an OG of the game, a guy who debuted before UFC 100, <laughs> 2008 was his debut to get an opportunity like this in almost his 50th fight. I think if my math is correct, his 48th pro fight. Uh, this is a guy who is coming off a brutal knockout loss to um, Jalen Turner back in December. Uh, that was the, uh, the short notice fight after uh, Dan Hooker withdrew and he gets a huge win against a veteran who is on a roll himself and doesn't just get the win but bloodies up Jim Miller. I mean, that was, as Jim Ross likes to say, the proverbial crimson mask that uh, Jim Miller was wearing. Cut up, the pictures afterwards, pretty damn gruesome. But a huge win for Bobby Green, and I was very happy for him. Just gone drudge, uh, uh, an OG in her own right, in, uh, in what was her 38th pro MMA fight. Former champion, of course, getting to fight a fellow Brazilian in Marina Rodriguez. An important fight in their weight class, 115 pounds. She picked up a big win, and that became a bit of a theme in the early prelims because the first, um, the first few fights, except for the Bobby Green, uh, Jim Miller fight, all had Brazilians going over. The next one was Money Moicano, who, like I said, started off dicey for him, but what a story he has become! What a comeback! Uh, not only in his career, but also on the night against the very tough and very talented Jalen Turner. Money Moicano gets the W, and then as is uh, custom these days, cuts a killer promo on a, on a boatload of different things, economics, um, America, all kinds of stuff. But Money Moicano is turning into a star. And I would love, 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 just like I would love to see um, Alex Pereira fight in Brazil. I would love to see him fight in Brazil, but I, I feel like that's just, it's, you know, it's a shame. I almost wish that the newer card was on May 4th and the Brazil card was on June 1st to give these fighters a little bit of more time. But unfortunately... Not meant to be. Diego Lopez, another Brazilian. Like I said, an incredible win. Two mammoth uppercuts. Um, and he disposes of Sadiq Youssef. He said afterwards that he wanted Movsar Evloev. And he wanted um, to fight on the International Fight Week card. And then he wanted to fight on the Sphere card on Mex Mexican Independence Day weekend. So we'll see if it all works out for him. He didn't take a lot of damage. And of course, we're going to be joined by him. We're also going to be joined in about 20 minutes by Kayla Harrison. And what was interesting about Kayla was... She was a talking point throughout the week. I thought she came across like a star. I thought she came across like a superstar at the press conference. And then we all wanted to see how she would look um, at the at the official weigh-ins on Friday morning. No beating around the bush. She looked sunken in. She looked tired. She looked drawn out. She wasn't shaking. It wasn't Aspen Ladd up there. But she definitely looked affected by the cut to 135. She had not weighed 135 since she was a teenager. And she freaking nailed it. She made the weight. She made 136. And then by the time the ceremonial weigh-ins happened, so like she made weight in the 9 o'clock local time hour, by the time 4 p.m. came around, she was, I mean, it looked like she had gained at least 10 to 15 pounds. And then in the, in the post-fight press conference after the win over Holly Holm, she said she weighed around 155 to 160 in there. Now, I don't know how much Holly Holm weighed, but I can assure you it wasn't 155 to 160. She looked big. She looked strong. She looked healthy. Holly made the very, you know, very big mistake of clinching with her and 
trying to go for a takedown. I think she was just sort of frazzled in the moment. In the second round, Kayla gets the RNC. And then what about Amanda Nunes in front of her TV, her former ATT teammate with the with the phone waiting for the call out, waiting for the call out, doesn't get the call. And I'll ask Kayla, obviously, about that um, when we speak to her at the top of the hour. But I'll tell you right now, Kayla Harrison versus Amanda Nunes would be one of the most anticipated and biggest fights, especially if it's a returning Amanda Nunes, and especially if it's for the belt. Let's say Kayla gets the belt in the next, I don't know, eight, nine, ten months. Look out. The story there with them being former teammates at ATT with, uh, with, with whatever rivalry they once had, with whatever training sessions they once had, uh, would be absolutely gigantic. Wouldn't that be amazing? This time next year, guys, let me ask you this. This time next year, do we get Kayla Harrison versus Amanda Nunes? Does it happen or not quite yet? Yes, we absolutely do. You think we get it by then? How do you think it plays out? Because we have Raquel Pennington, right? We suspect it's going to be Pennington Pena. Both of them have great relationships with Dana White. We suspect he'll be a man of his word. That fight needs to happen. And then here's the question. Does Kayla fight someone else in the interim? Nope. Okay. You just have her. Kayla Harrison's next fight is against Amanda Nunes. No, yeah. no, no. Against oh, the champion. Well, okay. Against the champion. Okay. So against the winner of Pennington Pena, you do yep. Kayla. Okay. So maybe that's by the end of the year. Yep. And then and Next then by- year you roll into Amanda Nunes. Done. Wow. Done and dusted. Wow. I mean, what else are you gonna do with those? I was gonna say that division, but those divisions, like you've got no other options at this point. You need an injection of talent. You need an infusion. Uh, to get people excited about that division, if and if 45 even exists anymore. And so this is how you do it. This is how you do it. Kayla Harrison versus the winner of the title, and then Amanda Nunes. Now, that this is all predicated on the fact that Kayla Harrison wins that fight for the championship, um, because if she doesn't, I don't think Amanda Nunes is going to be compelled to come back. Um, so she's got she's got her work cut out for her, but there is a path there to one of the bigger fights in women's MMA history. I, I, I mean, I don't know if there's a fight that interests me. There's a million and I don't, I'm not going to say that it is the most, but it is freaking up there. I don't teammate even. Teammate versus teammate. Ex-teammate, but yes, yes. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I, I should be clear. Ex-teammate versus ex-teammate. It's massive uh, with, with what are conceivably two of the, the best women to ever fight. Uh, if Kayla stays on this trajectory, obviously, I think she's a little young in her career to, to potentially put her there, but man. That would it's just it's just a massive fight. It's one of the only massive fights the UFC has in those divisions. Let's let's call it what it is. They don't have options there that, that can be, be on that the level. The only massive fight. <sighs> yeah, massive. I mean, Grasso Shevchenko is pretty big. Oh, it's was, not even in the same Cynthia stratosphere. One thirty-five. Oh yeah, yeah. I, do, I was just thinking of all women's MMA. Uh, it's the biggest fight by far in all of women's MMA. Yeah. Uh, even even like if we want to play the super fight game, right? It's yeah. it's way bigger than it's 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 what we thought ha- Harrison Cyborg was supposed to be, right. and now it's like completely eclipsed it because of her coming back. Uh, who would be the favorite? Is there even like a, a fictitious line for that? I don't even know. No line. What do you I think? Would, I think I would have to. Assume I think Amanda Nunez would yeah. be the favorite. You think so? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, she was like a minus nine hundred to Juliana Pena, and then lost, and then by by brutal finish and then came back and was still like a minus 300. I, I think she would be a favorite over Kayla Harrison. Probably not by a ton, especially if Kayla looks good in her next fight. Uh, but I still think she would be the favorite. Man. So, you, wow, that's interesting. Don't have her fight anyone between now and then. Why go through it? What's the point of that? What, another weight cut for Kayla Harrison? Why? Well, why? I'm cool with it. Between now and fighting for the belt? No, you can't. No, don't yeah. make her. Don't make her. Well, then we need to get this Pennington Pena fight rolling. Oh, well, that's that's a different Let's put it on story. Board, but yeah, so parlay pals can go support. Let's go. Uh, no, the, yes. the fourth parlay pal. That's right. Get this thing going already. Come well, because remember when we spoke to Pennington, and and I know she doesn't fully have the say here. But she said maybe September or so. Too that's late. Too late. Move it faster. Too late. Too late. Man, but how about? I'll tell you what this. If, what if Pena beats? Uh, Yo, Kayla Harris. By the way, Pena the mic be like, you were going to come back, Nunez? How about you come back? From <laughs> oh, fight? You're right. I still deserve wow. that third fight. Yes. Okay, but here, here's the thing. action at 135. All of a sudden, right? It was All dead. All of a sudden. It was like it was, DOA six yeah, months ago. Not looking good. If you are Juliana Pena, ago. and you want to come back in September, but the UFC wants to put on a fight sooner, that puts a, an interesting kind of situation kind of on, on in play here. Because if Kayla Harrison can go, you could do a title fight with Kayla Harrison right off the bat. Why not? Yeah. I mean, you why can't off- Kayla fight for the title next? Like now, right now. Before Pena. 
Timing is everything. Would it shock you if the UFC did? Would that? it shock? Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be shocked. They bring in this big star. It, she wins. No, by it finish. Does, well, also, also like you know, Pena has been a little bit hurt. That's well, that's what I'm know, saying. So if she isn't ready to go, yes. Um, someone asked Kayla about the turnaround. She said she's going to need some time. I mean, she she you know she needed 12 weeks. Yeah, it was a 12 week camp, so it's not like she's going to be one of those people who can just turn around on four weeks. Um, Dana White historically has had a very good relationship with Juliana Pena. I'd be surprised if she's healthy if they don't go through with this. So why September? What? what, what is, uh, the uh, September thing is just what she said she wanted, but like, I mean, I don't, I don't foresee. Here's the thing. That's a long ways away. Here's the thing. It's not, it's not happening in May. Maybe the June card, but that's getting pretty close. Then you've got International Fight Week. Historically, they're not putting another, you know, title fight on a Connor fight. Then we think it's Manchester, right? Doesn't really make sense, but I guess you could just put it there for the sake of putting another title fight. But why? You know, if you, you could already have two title fights. Exactly. Then we get it to August, and August is supposed to be Perth. Kind of random. And then and we get it to September. Well wait yeah, to and September. The sphere. Are they putting it at the Sphere? Because of Pena? I mean, she's Venezuelan. Um, it, I just feel like there's going to be so many big options for that's, the Sphere. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Would they go with that at the Sphere? Now we're talking about October. Are they going to Dubai? Are they going or Abu Dhabi? I would love uh, if some of these fights that aren't big sellers but are title fights would get reserved for like an ESPN. Thinking the same thing. You put know, this, an ESPN on fight a, night. On a big fight night. Right? Oh, well, you could do that. I think you could do that. Uh, I, I just, they don't do it anymore. Well, they, I know it was, they made it UFC Noche, but they did it for Shevchenko. Grosso Grosso and Shevchenko. Yeah, but very, very rare. It used it to be a thing. It was also a special night. That was a special night. Like, used to be a thing to... with DJ. Back in the day, they right. put him on Fox a bunch of times. They put Benson Henderson on Fox, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I would love to do it, but it's just they need they need title fights to headline pay-per-views. They, Hence the reason why they brought the BMF back in July of last year. They also need this division to actually move move and exist. Like it is, It is eroding in front of our eyes. There is nothing happening here. It, well, it well, it's a crazy happen. thing because it, it might be that right now, but on the on the horizon, you got to get to the horizon. Gigantic, if we're just yeah, pushing we, it we, off we a year, get to the horizon. It's it doesn't it does and not work. Wait till September. It needs to, the fight needs to happen. The fight needs to happen. We can't just watch this division just wither away. It is it is eroding. It is it is post Amanda Nunes. It has been no good. We we need something to happen here, and Kayla uh, Harrison can be that thing. The conspiracy theorists. We'll look into the fact that only one person was not given a post-fight interview, and that person was Aljamain Sterling. I don't know if it was a timing thing. I don't know how he feels about it. We can ask him about it. Um, but I was fine with the win. He just needed to get a W. He needed to get back on track. New weight class, tough veteran, um, did what he had to do. And I suggested off the bat, why not Aljamain versus Mofsar Evlev? Now, I had some lunatics get so offended by this. I mean, I was getting spammed. How dare you suggest Movstar Evlo versus Aljamain Sterling? First of all, why? Aljamain Sterling is a former champion. He is way more known and popular right now than Movstar Evlo. What Evlo needs is a win over an Aljamain Sterling. Are you out of your freaking minds? So the Evlo isn't getting a title shot anytime soon. The position was that Aljo is not worthy of a fight with Evlo. That was that the- Evlo had just beaten the number 4 ranked guy Arnold Allen. Why should he fight Aljamain Sterling? I mean, you're you're out of your fucking minds. You're out of your absolute not paying minds. Not attention to how this sport actually works. You're out of your minds. And and honestly, that's a great like from a stylistic standpoint. That's fascinating theater he right beat there. Beat number four, and the commentary in the post fight from Dana White was the most boring fight that he's ever seen in his entire existence. Like that ain't that ain't the one that's moving the needle. Yeah, fight honestly, Aljamain it, Sterling. It kind of feels like the perfect fight. You get in against a popular love former it. champion or a, or a notable known former champion during the like you're not next anymore. After after Max Holloway's performance on Saturday, you're definitely not next. So you need a fight in the interim. It feels like a a good stylistic matchup for him, like a, a fascinating one that could lend to a fun fight. I feel like that's the best for for most. Or who's going to fight instead? I Listen. will say from the other side of it, I I would much rather see uh, Aljamain versus Brian Ortega if that's even on the ah, table or a possibility. A a that doesn't solve Evloev's next fight. Although I would do Diego Lopez versus Evloev if if I was oh, that's oh, good if too. I had the pen to Mr. Decision. He's earned Diego that. Lopez, Lopez has has earned that fight in my opinion, and I think he deserves an opportunity to have it on a real camp and run it back. So those are the two I would do. I would I would do those if those are available. So so what's interesting is. 
if they're going with Taporia versus Holloway, that's one title fight. Then who knows what happens there? What, what, what if it's an all-time classic and they run it back? And then if not, you've got Volk right there. Like there's at least two to four fights before Evlov is in the mix. Just look at Marab, look at Bilal, look at Leon. It's just not happening right now, given the momentum or lack thereof. Have he, I missed that, like, Evloev is, like, actually a title con- Like, what did I miss? Nah, Where is this coming from? He's definitely a contender. He's in the top five. But, like, but he's, he's booked in and he's waiting in line for a title fight already? Like, when did this happen? I missed all that. I didn't see that. In any so, event. A lot of people were discussing that if, if Volk lost. But now Holloway I love it. is supplanted. And you know what else I also loved? I loved on Saturday. See, we were talking about this maybe on Thursday or Friday, someone tell me about their run-in with Yuri, and then all of a sudden I see this video of a fan saying that he was walking outside T-Mobile Arena late at night Friday going into Saturday, and there's Yuri Prochaska, who I can let you all know will be joining us on Wednesday's show. He's flying home right now, oh. standing in front of T-Mobile Arena and like taking in the rays, taking in the power, taking in the energy. And and I, I guess I missed the whole samurai thing, but I, was it Rakic who questioned his samurai ability or skills? I don't know what it is, but this is the closest that we have to a samurai in MMA. I don't care what you call him. The guy is, is he is the most lovable, crazy fighter that maybe we've ever seen. And he is so much fun to watch. And let's give Rakic a lot of credit. It had been two years, essentially short of a month of, of, uh, you know, of, of a layoff with a, a, a really bad knee injury and all that stuff. He comes back. It was a bitter feud, all that stuff. And he was looking good, but you can't count out Yuri Prochaska. Now, if I'm Yuri's team, I, I try to slow my roll a little bit before I get back to Alex, get on a bit of a roll here. But that was fantastic stuff. I thought that was, I thought that was the lock for fight of the night. I was like, okay, this is it. Yuri's getting two bonuses. And then of course, Holloway and Gaethje, uh, meet up and do their thing. So that was tremendous stuff out of Yeri. Bo Nickel was upset with his performance against Cody Brundage. He immediately went like this afterwards. Bo Nickel, by the way, is going to join us on Wednesday's show as well. Um, he he beat Cody Brundage. First time he sees the second round, he's now 6-0. and A ton of pressure, a ton of expectations. People were upset that he was on the main card. This guy is going to fight for a belt and, in my opinion, will be a champion in the next, I don't know, two, three years. He's that talented. He's that special. Um, people just need to chill a little bit. That was Cody Brundage's 16th pro fight. That was Bo's sixth pro fight. First time that he's ever gone into the second round, and he still won via submission. Like, what the hell are we talking about? Um, but nevertheless, he puts a lot of pressure on himself, and he said, yeah, the 300K definitely made me press a little bit, but all good. I'll learn from this. The main thing I want to see from Bo at this point is just a little bit more activity. And and there's a good excuse. He was having his first child. He wanted to be more present. All that, like, the guy has been very active leading up to this point. But I'd love to see him get at least three fights in uh, in 2024. So that was the first. And the timeline would work. Maybe he comes back summer and then end of the year. Uh, like I said, Armin Tarukin with the split decision win. I had it for him 29-28 over Charles Oliveira. Uh, Charles Oliveira showing up like I did back in... 1995 to my bar mitzvah wearing the talit. I still have no idea why, but I loved everything about it. That was incredible. And I got 400 texts from people that I know um, that were asking me what was up. And I still don't know. I asked his team, uh, but a big win for Armin. We spoke about him and uh, we will, we will talk to him in about 30 minutes time. Spoke about Max with the knockout. We spoke about Zhang Wei Li and her win over Yan Chaonan and how she almost beat her uh, in the first round. And do you guys agree that, it's got. I, I know she had to pull out of the last fight, and I know she hasn't been terribly active. But you got to do Zhang Wei Li versus Tatiana Suarez now, right? It has to be now. Yep. <clears throat> like that's another one. Don't much like I would. I would gather your stance on on Kayla is like don't beat around the bush. Put her in a title fight next. Please put Tatiana in a title fight against Zhang Wei Li. Who else yeah. would it be? Well, I guess the. I guess the only. The only retort would be, oh, she was supposed to fight. She withdrew, blah, blah, yeah, blah. She, she's undefeated. She's, she gets finishes. I mean, she's worthy of a title shot. And if you just look at the women's strawweight division right now, you have Zhang, who's obviously the champion. Jan, who she just beat. Amanda Lemos, who she's beat. Jessica Andrade, I don't think, is, is at title shot level right now, especially not over Tatiana Suarez. Uh, Virna Genjiroba, Marina Rodriguez, like none of these it's are gotta be. title shot worthy. This is Tatiana Suarez. 
I'd love to see that fight in oh, China. That would be amazing. In China. Oh, Imagine that, that would be incredible. That would be so good. Yeah. Sign me up for that. That's another one. If Tatiana's healthy, I really don't know. I used to think it was like fed accompli. Tatiana's fighting for a belt. She's winning. Zhang is so good, so strong, so powerful, so quick. I'm not really sure. She got the dog in her too, man. She was looking gassed. She was looking bad in that third round after she wasn't able to get the two finishes. Even though that first round, like, she, she Jan was out. Conscious. Jan was completely out. Yeah. And, like, she technically did get a finish. And then she, she was just laying down hammer fists in round two. Easily could have stopped that fight there as well. Jan also just tough as nails. An insane fight. By the way, is, is, is that Jason Herzog Twitter account the real Jason Herzog? I believe Herzog? it's actually him. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Actually him. He was clapping like back the, at I a like lot of people. Replies. Yeah, he's Did you see funny. that? He's pretty, he's pretty uh, snarky and good. on. Well, he was replying, like, quote, retweeting people yeah, yeah. who were calling him an idiot for keeping the fight going. And his responses were all like, how much was the bet? Yeah. Or, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Which, by the way, he's correct about. He's 100% correct. Like, it's usually related to some bets that, that didn't. Related to the bets, but also, I mean, Yan John Ann was completely out. She was man. out. Like, she, what is it that they were talking about? Do you, do you guys know of waking them up? Smelling salts. So smelling they, salts. What they were saying was that they had smelling salts on on their hands and they were putting them under the nose of the athlete, which will will bring them closer to consciousness and kind of wake them up. Um, we don't know. I mean, it's impossible to say. Whatever it was, uh, it was a great performance. And by the way, Jan was super tough too. Like she didn't give up. That's she, what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. She, she could was, have given up. No, that was that. Uh, her stock was took took a, a jump up in my estimation. Like she, she's going to come away as somebody who had a good fight with Zhang Wei Li. I, I don't think there's anything shameful about that performance, and she can build on that. Zhang Wei Li put on two just absolute beatings her last time out, and came so close yeah. to getting a finish a million times, and wasn't able to finish either of them. What's what's the what's the most iconic moment of the main event? Because there's several, in my opinion. Oh, the, the, there's the herb. there's well, there, there, there's the walk the walkouts always great. Yeah. The shorts were great, shorts right? Were great. Jamal waiting at the front of the the sure. cage was great. Um, Jamal catching the arrow. Jamal catching the arrow was great. Jamal aged poorly though. Sure, but sure, I just like in the, in, moment, the moment, like, in the moment, it's like oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. I yeah. mean, the whole thing didn't last very long. Three fourteen of the first round, it ended. Um, okay, the action early on. The kick to the groin, the <laughs> yes. the, the herb that that's the, the most herb, iconic. There's no question. He the, stiff arms him, stiff. and within five seconds, Jamal Hill is completely flat on his back, not knowing his name or where he is. <laughs> and then like, it's the I know. I what know, was this? What was I this? know we zag, but I'm uh, going with the Kabi Lemay. I don't know what uh, that is. Tell me what that is. He's a very famous influencer. I mean, like a hundred million followers on TikToks, and that's what he does. He like takes videos where things <laughs> are like incredibly obvious, and then he just like cuts in and he does the. He t- it was basically <laughs> just like you knew this was gonna happen. He takes that. videos that, that people overcomplicate simple things, right? Yeah, people exactly. are doing too much with something that's very simple, the and then he shows happened. you the very simple version oh. and goes. And you think Alex? He, was- he just copy made me. I I gave like kind of a, a a bad explanation of it, and he just made it really simple and easy. And you guys think Alex was was referring to that? Oh, that's no, that's, that is what it was. Dude, this guy has doing it. This I guy is cannot believe you've never massively. Heard of him. I'm talking famous. like you, him, and Izzy have hung out before. Like he has got on t- on Instagram right now, 81 million followers. On TikTok right now, like this guy is massively famous. Wow, um, and and where's he from? I actually don't know. 162 million followers. On Whatever it was, I'm sure you've seen his videos. By the way, it was fantastic. It was Senegal. That's where he's from. Yeah, and and 100 and, him. And before we get to Kayla, I mean, I talked about you know all the big performances from from Max to Kayla to Alex, yep. to Armin, to Bo, to Henato, to Diego, etc. I mean, what about the performance. I don't know. I, I, I referred it to Wilt 100. I mean, it, every time I opened social media, there was another 10 memes by GC. <laughs> Not even on Saturday. It was like kind of leading up to, I'd say, Wednesday, then Thursday, then Friday, then Saturday. And then yesterday, every time Saturday was like a real peak. But even yesterday, it was just meme after meme. And the crazy thing was, it was like, hey, GC, want to go eat? Want to go hang out? He's like, no, no, I have two. I was like, what could he possibly have to do? Now I know. He was working on all these memes. And they were. I was getting texts from people like, this is the best one ever. No, this is the best. Uh, Conor McGregor news. Eight memes. This this thing. Eight memes. Like, someone in the con- – I'm stealing it from someone. Full disclosure. But I, I didn't like the meme king. You are the meme machine. I'm trademarking this. I like that meme machine. It was, it was unlike anything I've ever seen. 
it was just meme after meme after meme. I've never. This is the greatest week of your life as far as meme, you know, production. Yeah, the socials are on fire. Right now, I have to say this. <laughs> I mean, I was looking at some of your Twitter. It's like twenty four thousand likes. Yeah, we got a, We got a, We got a thirty k in there. We got several twenty k's. We got a lot of ten k's. Uh, yeah, I mean, you got to strike while the iron's hot. Smoke them if you got them. I mean, this You're is something I knew it was coming. I mean, I think I started my three hundred meme folder in like late February. I've been working on this for for a long time now. Uh, yeah, and I mean, even when you went on Twitter, the people were just like. Twitter was just on fire for UFC 300. I mean, I saw like, I saw MMA memes and stuff reaching the the mainstream, like getting like hundreds oh, yeah. of thousands of likes. And you like, you rarely see that unless it's a massive card. So, yeah, I mean, it was fun. It was fun. the 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 MMA world was was on fire. It was it was a blast. Well done. All right, let's go to our first guest of the day, one of the big stars of Saturday. Ah, uh, today would it have been the same without her? And I'm so grateful and thankful and glad that she is here. Without further ado, she is the two time Olympic gold medalist, multiple time PFL winner, but now very much en route to becoming a UFC champion. If you ask me, the great Kayla Harrison, UFC veteran, one and zero. Wow. <laughs> How are you? Should I hide and pretend like I'm not here again? Oh my god. You know, Do you, you hold your breath every time now? Uh I will be even honest. Like, you've even started like panic texting me. Like if I don't respond within two minutes, Why? you send like no two minutes? And two I'm minutes? like, whoa. Wow. <laughs> Calm down, Clinger. <laughs> uh stage four. First of all, it's not two minutes. Uh I I I, I at least waited an hour or so. And, uh, you know, there's nothing I hate more than sending those texts. Nothing I hate more. Hey, congrats. Do you want to come on the show? No. Please? Wow. Now you're exposing me. Uh, how else am I supposed to get people to come? <laughs> congrats. Wow. It's all changed. Congrats. Here she is. She's tasted the UFC and it's all changed. I knew this was coming at here? some point. You are here. Am I here? But it wasn't without a little begging. It was a little bit of begging along the way. Ariel, in my defense, <laughs> I had literally 500 texts. Wow. Was it was it really buried. that much? Yeah. It was out of control. I couldn't believe it. Unlike it anything you've experienced? Um, I mean, maybe the Olympics, but I probably didn't have that many people who have my number then. So I, you know, yeah. I was actually wondering, like, did the react, I mean, obviously the UFC is the, but like, did it feel reminiscent of when you won gold? The, the, yes. From your yes. friends, family, people yes. that know you? From the... Like fight week, the professionalism, the electricity, even like them giving you your gear bag, you know, having a tailor there. I was like, oh, this feels like when I got my op my opening ceremonies jacket and they tailored it and they gave you the UFC 300 jacket. Like it was very, um, very nostalgic kind of for me. And like I was, I was hype. I was like, yeah, we're here. Did did it, it did it live up to what you thought it was going to be? I'm sure you've dreamed of this. Did it feel? It was amazing. The whole week was magical. Um, yeah, it was really magical. It was funny because it went so fast. I couldn't believe it. Like the fight went so fast in my mind. We I like got on the shuttle, took the two minute bus ride, you know, <laughs> from the place to the venue. Got off. I feel like I like walked around a little bit. Got my hands wrapped. Jogged. Like hit the pads, and then I was like, I was in the cage, and Bruce Buffer was announcing my name. It was very like, it's funny because I asked God for peace because you know fight week like anxiety, and then peace. Like you just are like, it's a roller coaster. Like you're like, I'm the best, I'm the best, and then you're like, why am I doing this? What the hell is wrong with me? So I was like, you know, I prayed to God like, please just give me peace, and He made it so fast that I didn't have a chance to get nervous. Like it just. Boom. Okay, so before we get to Saturday, I'm just curious. Obviously, yeah, the big thing was was the way. No, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, I love it. I love it. Um, I'm so happy you're here. Yeah. Thank you again. I really appreciate it. But was there any point? I wouldn't want to talk to anybody else. Oh, thank you. That means the world to me. Um, was there any point? I can't believe you didn't invite me to talk to you in Vegas. I was like, kind of like, oh, oh, okay, oh it, that's <laughs> such bullshit. I was not. I didn't ask a single fighter on the card. The last thing I want to be to anyone is a nuisance. And I knew you had big things to do. Come on. Wow. What is going on here? Can't, my, <laughs> my confidence can't take all of this. Okay. Back to you. Stop making this about me. Was there any point where you thought this was too difficult, insurmountable, that this hill was too hard to climb, the 135, that you had bitten off more than you could chew? Was there any point where you thought you, had, you, had, you were broken? I mean, the entire camp. Wow. Uh, I was scared. Not of the fight, of the weight. Like, 
I was scared. You know, I just really, I haven't weighed 135 pounds since I was 16 years old. And on the test cut, I got down to 140. And, um, you know, I walked away from millions of dollars of like pretty much guaranteed money to take it, to gamble on this, you know, like to take a chance. I got real quiet. I got real still. I prayed and I felt like this is where God was calling me to go. And this was my dream. And this is why I started MMA in the first place. And so like, let's go, let's do it. But I was all in, like, I didn't know if I was going to make, I can't believe I made weight. (laughs) 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 When did you make weight? Um, Friday morning, I got down to one thirty seven. uh, Thursday night. Wow. And then, and then I ate and drank a little bit. I drank more than I was supposed to because I probably would have floated, but I was like, Oh, I really want to sleep. So I'll drink a little bit. And then, um, I woke up and I was still a pound over. So the last pound was pretty hard. The last pound was the hardest part for sure. How, How miserable was it? It sucked. Worse than you thought? weight cut wasn't worse than I thought. Like all in all, it wasn't as bad as I thought. It was just that last pound. Like I didn't sleep good Thursday night. I was uncomfortable Yeah. in my body. And the last, like it took a while to start sweating Friday morning. So then I was like getting nervous, but it was just mental. You know, it's just mental. It's mental anguish. You know, it's my weight coach, my weight, cutting specialist, Eric, you know, and Dara, everybody was there. Like they were all big Jim was there. Even I knew I looked, I knew I didn't look good. Cause big Jim who like, you know, has watched me cry with like a broken arm and told me to shut up. Like uh-huh. at one point he was like, should we check her weight? She looked dying in there. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, I better turn away. Like if big Jim's worried about me, like I must not look good, but I mean, it, it was fine. I'm fine. Is this something you can do? Mentally tough. Can you do this more than once? That's the big question, right? Doing it once. I'm gonna. Okay. In your mind, like now that you've done it, it's like, it's like, it's like you ask someone, I don't know, uh, doing something incredible, like giving birth. Like you want to do this again? It was crazy. You want to do this again? So you're down to do it again. Now that you've done it, you're okay with it. Okay. Of course I am. Of course I am. The first one, I didn't even know I was going to make weight. Yeah. I didn't. That was a leap of faith. I signed that contract, <laughs> but it's all working out how it's meant to work out. Now I'm going to fight for a UFC title and then I'm going to draw back the goat and then yes, I will yes. be the goat. Yes. Yes. And, and I'll ask you about that in a second, but I'm just curious, um, Friday afternoon. So at four for the ceremonials and then Saturday for the fight, could you tell me how much you know, or think you weighed on Friday? Cause you looked considerably different come Friday afternoon. Yeah. And then Saturday you looked even better. Well, so- the rehydration process, in my opinion, is the most important part of why I have these professionals, you know, like, I mean, I was very disciplined for 12 weeks and stuck to this plan and walked six extra miles a day. And I was biking, swimming or walking, you know, an hour and a half a day, a day and doing all the calories and the water loading, drinking two gallons a day for the last five days. And then, but the rehydration process, like I wanted to like chug, you know, and he was like, take this sip, sip, sip. So I had like the first shit, the first rehydration shake, then the second, then the third, then the fourth, but only sipping. And so I didn't even eat my first meal after I made weight for like a couple hours. And I was like, this is some horse shit. Like somebody give me some food, but it's also the body can like absorb back what it's lost basically. And I don't know what I weighed at Friday, but, uh, Saturday morning I was 154 pounds. Wow. And then by the time I got to the venue, I think I was with my clothes on 160, like with my shoes on, on their scale. So, um, like we talked about in the past, you have been on big stages before, but in the locker room, how were the nerves? I wasn't too nervous. I was excited. I mean, I was like, it was good. They put all the ATT people in a room. I had like a little sign. I had my own little cuppy. I was like, oh, wow. I was, I, I enjoyed the experience. I really did. Okay. So, 
Then the fight happens. It starts. She yeah. clinches very early on. What are you thinking? I was, sh- I was not thinking. <laughs> <laughs> like, kind of just went to, you know, instinct kicks in. I did not expect that. I really was not. I, yeah. I mean, for 12 weeks, I was not expecting that. I'll tell you that. We didn't really. We thought maybe later in the fight, if I did damage and she was tired, that she might engage in the clinch. But I expected for the first round for me to have to be chasing her and like trying to cut the cage off and being patient. And I mean, I spent 10 weeks chasing this kid, Hudson, uh, around the cage at ATT. So I was I was surprised. And then she fucking reversed me too. I was like, oh, don't uh-huh. fuck this up. Get up. Uh-huh. Um, but no, I kept calm, kept composed. I really, um, but that surprised me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> were you, were you, was, I don't know, just wondering, like, were you disappointed just knowing the competitor that you are, were you disappointed you didn't get a first round finish? I feel like you wanted something. Yes. Okay. That's what, yeah. It's because I, if I got a first round knockout or TKO, I get, I got to do a power slap to Mike Brown at oh, the gym. That was a, we that was a thing <laughs> on the line. Yeah. <laughs> and second round, nothing. Cause we went into the PI one day. And the bat, like the bags are there. Yeah. And I keep, wham, wham. And we look over and there's a power slapper and he's in there <clears throat> training for the power slap. Wow. He's practicing. And I was like, yeah, I was practicing. And I was like, Mike, can I slap you one time? <laughs> he was like, if you get a knockout. And I was like, bet it's on. So if I had gotten a first round knockout or TKO with my elbows, I would have gotten to slap him. But not meant to be for now. Um, what, what compelled you to ask her to pray with you and to embrace her like that afterwards? I don't know. I think, um, God compelled me to, I guess. I don't know. I, I'm just really grateful and I'm in a really beautiful place in my life, mentally, physically, spiritually. And I'm super grateful for Holly Holm. You know, she inspired me. I mean, it's hard cause she knocked out my old teammate to yeah. become, she is, you know, but I mean, she's always carried herself with such poise and such grace. And, um, she's been such a legend of the sport and, and really helped make women's MMA what it is today. So for me, it was an honor and, um, I'm grateful for her. I'm thankful for her. And I just wanted to, I just wanted to share a couple minutes with her and yeah, that was, it. I don't know. Um, I know it's a tough question, but Dana White said afterwards he would like to see her retire. Do you agree with that assessment? I mean, I'm not going to comment on her. You know, that's her personal choice. That's her. I can't comment on that. If someone commented on what I should do, I would probably want to slap box them. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um, Okay, so you have been asked about Amanda because everyone backstage asked you about it and and all that stuff. Oh, my God. Did you see those? Did you see those? (laughs) those? What I'm wondering is, did you expect something from her if you won? Like, did you have a feeling she was watching? Did you have a feeling she was interested? Kind of. Kind of. I don't know. I didn't didn't know. I don't know if I didn't. Yes, I expected her to chat. I mean, I expected her and one other person to. Right. So. The other person being uh, Larissa Pacheco? No. No. Don Davis. I actually haven't heard from her in a long time. Um, yes, I, I, I didn't actually see what Chris wrote cause unfortunately the admin blocked me block because of you, name. cause of you, Kayla, I've been blocked after all these years. What, you know, that's not really well, fair. Yeah. You need to go talk to her husband then. Okay. Fair enough. Just, um, um, I think she said something about like Amanda, she piggybacked off Amanda. They were like ganging up on me. She said, Amanda said, Shama. And then was like, why didn't you say my name, I guess? And then Cyborg said that she wants to win her. Yeah. I'm not sure if that one's going to happen anytime soon, at least not in the UFC. But could I ask you, why didn't you say Amanda's name? Just she's not, she doesn't have the belt and she's been retired for a while now. I mean, look, like if Amanda was still here and she was holding the belt, then I would have been calling for Amanda Nunes. But for all intents and purposes, I thought she was happily retired and living her best life, you know? Am I wrong? Uh, I mean, that's for her to answer, but yes, uh, that was the general consensus. She retired back in June, 
And so we were debating before you came on what the UFC mm-hmm. should do. Our consensus mm-hmm. was, all right, you mm-hmm. made a promise to Pena and Pennington, let that play out hopefully this summer, and you should not fight before getting a title shot. And then hopefully this time next year, you're likely fighting Amanda Nunes for the belt in what could be one of the biggest fights in women's MMA history. Do you like that or not? Yeah, but I heard that... Uh, I heard that uh, Rocky's hurt all of a sudden. Uh-oh. So if she can't fight right now, I'm happy to fight whoever this summer for a title. Oh, but it would it would have to be for a title? Would you be interested in fighting Pena in like a number one contender fight? Why not just an interim title then? And oh. then I'll unify it and then I'll fight Amanda. Okay. And, and uh, when you say this summer... Like, obviously, you had 12 or so weeks to prepare for this. Realistically, to go through this again, how soon could you fight? I I mean, if it's for a title, <laughs> I will make myself available. Like, you think June 29th, or is that too soon? I would love that. Oh, wow. Because on Saturday, I feel like you said it was too soon. Fuck it. Fuck it. My time is now. So what are you feeling? What are you feeling? You're feeling June 29th interim title fight, you versus Pena? I like the sound of that. Do you? I love it. Yes. I like it. I like it too. Let's go! (laughs) Wow. And you versus Pena would be some good shit talking leading up to it. I mean, uh, there would be good, there would be some good shit talking (laughs) from me. Yes. Wow. Do you know what the injury is with Pennington? I don't know. No. Okay. Are, are you saying this with like a little bit of inside info? Like, do you no? How would I have inside info? I'm the new girl. You know, I'm you're the, you're the bell of the ball. They tell you everything. I'm the new kid on the block. You got I the... don't know anything. Come on. All right. Uh, can, can I ask, for those that may not, you know, be so familiar, what would you say is the the root of the issue or relationship between you and Amanda. Why did she, why do you think she did that? Why is there, she's not on the team anymore. And I think you're part of the reason, maybe not the full reason, but part of the reason why she's not on the team ATT anymore. So what is the story that is going to be told here? I don't know. I mean, I think that, um, I think that Amanda's worst enemy is her own mind. And like she got it in her head that like I was coming for her or like I think after she lost to Juliana she thought that I was like gonna get in the cage that night and challenge her which was not true not the case not even near true she thought that everyone at the team kind of was against her again not true not the case like actually everyone on the team was doing their best to keep us like in separate organizations even though I didn't, I wanted to go then, you know, like I was like, I'm out, let's go. I think there was still a 145. I was like, come on, let's do this. Um, and so I think it just like left a bad taste, like her, her in her own mind. Like she just had this like not true image of what was happening behind the scenes. And she didn't really ask anybody. She just kind of assumed And then she left and I have no ill will towards Amanda. Like I don't, I think she's great. She's the goat for a reason, you know, she's awesome. Um, You know, I don't think that the bad mouthing that she's done about my team is fair or appropriate. And I don't respect that. And I have personal beef with that. But other than that. Man, this will be so good. What a fight. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, it would be gigantic. Do you think in your heart it happens? Do you believe it happens? We'll see. I think uh I think money talks. So it could happen. For you or for her? No, for her. Okay. You're content though. You feel taken care of, you're happy. I'm about to uh, yeah. Yeah. Everything that I wanted was waiting on the other side of that oh. scale. <laughs> oh, my God. What do you mean by that? Just like it was a big risk. I, t- I took a big risk. I had kind of guaranteed money at a higher weight against 
with less pressure. Um, and I was all in and it's going to fucking pay off. Like I'm doing what I'm, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. And it feels so good. You know, like it feels so good. I will, I will never forget the first time we spoke after the last Larissa Pacheco fight. When I, when mm-hmm. I said, Oh, Kayla Harris is joining us. And we turned to you and I will mm-hmm. never forget how you looked. It looked like you had been crying for like three weeks or whatever that period was. I had. Would that Probably. person have ever believed the story would unfold like this? Yeah. I mean, I've never been a completely hopeless person, Ariel, you know, despite everything that has happened in my life, I've never completely lost hope because if I had, I wouldn't be here. And there have been a lot worse things in my life than losing a fight. But I will say that it feels really, really good to finally be here. Like, I was not certain that. Oh my goodness, who keeps calling? Oh, it's probably UFC uh, to offer you the fight. They heard the promo. It's too. <laughs> <laughs> I was not. Okay, stop ringing. Oh, sorry. I was not certain that um, that I would ever get here. I didn't know um, if this, I just didn't know. I didn't see a clear path and there was a lot of diversions and a lot of twists and turns and I had a loss and like it was, there was a lot of shit that happened in, in my personal life and in my professional life. And I just keep trying to do the next right thing. You know, I think that's all any of us can do in this world. Like we just keep doing the best we can. Like you just keep putting one foot in front of the other. You just keep taking one more little step. You just keep trying, like do it a little bit different this time. Okay. A little bit more. Okay. A little bit more. And when you do that, it doesn't happen overnight, but like eventually beautiful things come together. And before you know it, you're living a life that you never even dreamed of. And I keep doing, like, I keep waking up and thinking that, you know, even like during this whole camp, there were a lot of moments where, you know, cutting to 135 pounds was a very difficult process and changing my body structure, basically, you know, like losing a ton of fat, losing muscle. And I spent a lot of time alone. Like I spent heat acclimation, getting ready to sit in a sauna. Listen, I have like PTSD from saunas. I had a lot of trauma from it being a child, being locked in saunas, like bad things happened to me. Like how, so like I'm sitting in a sauna three days a week by myself, you know, for two 30 minute sessions. I had a lot of time alone walking six miles a day or biking for 90 minutes or swimming. And I got to sit with my thoughts and I got to, to really reflect back on my life and what an amazing journey it's all been. Like if I never if I never do anything else in my life, like my life is beautiful and I'm so grateful for all of it. The highs, the lows, the ups, the downs, my, my two beautiful kids. Like, I just can't believe, I can't believe it. I can't believe it sometimes. And it just keeps getting better. And I keep, um, I just keep trying to do the next best, the next right thing. You know, that's it. That's all we can do. You're an inspiration. I'm so happy for you. Congratulations. Thank you for Thank coming you, on. And uh, I can't wait to see how this story continues to unfold. For now, though, well done. I really am happy. For, I'm, I'm delighted for you, truly. And uh, it was amazing to see you on that stage, the superstar that you are. So was thank it you. Cool? Did, it, it look, it, it, did you I look, look cool? You, you fit in. I have to in. watch the fight. You fit did in. I look like, and, and you look like a star. Yeah, you look like a star. How was my interview? Was it okay? Everything. After everything. I said, I, I said, I even <laughs> tweeted, I feel like a great promo is coming in. People thought that I had written the promo for you. Uh, and I didn't. I had nothing to do with anything. Um, I can't even as get you to text me back. Could, as if you could write my promos. I, 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 I've written so some of the best. You, uh, check yourself before you oh, wreck I'm yourself, Kale. I've written some, some, some of the greatest promos history. in the history of the sport, okay? So uh, just like, yeah. I know you're new. Here, I know you're new. What would you have said? UFC you 187, said? Daniel Cormier, okay? Look it up, okay? I wrote that thing for him. <laughs> okay, all right? Go look it up look right it up. Now. It's one of the all-time I greats, will. all right? What I would have said was, Amanda Nunes, get your shit together. I'm waiting for you. And then I would have walked off. Put your work boots on, baby, yeah. and get back in the gym because it's time to go. Um, yeah, that would have been good. I mean, I don't know. I just didn't think she 
I don't know. I thought she was like off in Brazil, like frolicking somewhere. So, <laughs> um, we have Armin Tarukian standing by, so I don't want to rush you, but he also had a big win. So much love and, uh, thank you. And we'll Rest talk to you Armin soon. As well. Yes. Okay. Bye. 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 There she is. Bye. Kayla Harrison, high on life doing her thing. And, uh, yes, today is a stressful day. If I could break the fourth wall for you guys, only one of our zoom machines are working. And, uh, usually we have the people being able to go back to back and be queued up. This is way too much information, but now they have to wait in a waiting room. This is no one's fault, but, um, I, I don't want to be rude to someone like Kayla Harrison. And I always feel like I'm a nuisance to everyone. Uh, this is part of my neuroses. And so I don't want to keep anyone else waiting. It's all a big problem is what I'm trying to say to all of you. But I can't wait to talk to uh, Armin Tarukin here in a matter of seconds. And you'll recall last Monday we had him on the program and I said goodbye to him. And this is what he said. Well done on getting to this point and uh, good luck on Saturday. Can't wait for it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'll see you on next Monday. Yes, I will see you then. Thank you, Armin. Good a luck man to you. of his word. Here he is. Next Monday is here. Armin Sarukian. Hello, Armin. Thank you so hello, much for the hello. time. Congratulations. Thank you, so much. thank you. Thank you. So I said we got to meet on Monday and uh, I'm here. So happy. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. Can you describe what last week was like for you to be a part of this historic card with the biggest names in the sport for you? You've you've been in big situations. You obviously main evented in December. But then to have this fight against Charles and then to win and, and be as, as dominant and good, you know, look as good as you did in the fight. Can you describe the whole week for yourself, the feelings, the emotions? You know, you know like, you know, uh, I was feeling so good, so happy, you know. And I finally got what I wanted. So, like, number one ranked guy, you see 300, you know, like, so excited. And, like, it motivated me, you know. And especially, like, when Dana White an announced the 300K, I said, oh, this is, like, going to be, this. that's going to be mine, 300K. But, like, unfortunately, I didn't get it. And, uh, yeah, but I'm... I'm glad I win, you know, and like now I'm but I'm number one contender, and uh, and tomorrow I'm gonna be in in, in rank number one and get in uh, pound for pound fighters so top fifteen pound for pound. You're you're usually um, you're not a very like when we see you fight, you're not a very emotional guy. But I'm just wondering, like when you're there at the press conference and there's all these champions and former champions around you, do you look around and say, "Wow, like what a journey for me to get here from where you come from." to be a part of this like did you did you take any opportunity to smell the flowers as they say yeah you know i like one point i couldn't believe it's me or not like I'm, what i'm doing here you know like 5 years ago I, I didn't think even like i can be in ufc you know because i did my debut in yeah like uh 5 years ago like before that i didn't think i'm going to be in ufc even so and like the close to me was sitting the Max Holloway, you know, like a lot of champions, and like I'm fighting with uh, the former champion. Yeah, I was super super excited and uh, was was fun, and uh, hopefully I won that fight. And uh, yeah, so uh, it was a little bit uh, it was a little bit dicey, a little scary in the first round. How tight was the guillotine? Yeah, so. The first guillotine was very tight. So, but when he got the guillotine, I already knew I'm I'm gonna get out from here because I know how escape escape from there, and uh, I didn't nervous, so I can handle that. And uh, I trained hard, and I knew like I'm not gonna tap. So it's a, it's a my fight, and I'm gonna win tonight. Done. So uh, yeah, it was tight, but like I train every day, you know, like. People try to submit me like in the gym, you know, but like I knew I, I know how to escape that from that position. But like for fan, it was scary for my family. Like my father called me and say, <laughs> I almost died for that moment. I said, I, I, said, I said, no worries. It was I was control. I was controlling all situation. <laughs> he said, uh, you're like, a, yeah, he said something bad to me. <laughs> well, was, was there any thought at any point? Like, uh, just for a millisecond to tap? Like, were you close at all to tapping? No, 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 no. Never? Sleep or... Sleep, sleep or... <laughs> no, I mean, like... Yeah, like... I didn't think about tap. 
because it wasn't there maybe it wasn't there and i i i know how to escape from there how I'm, why i'm gonna tap if of course like i'm like that i'm like if i'm if i feel like i can escape and like i'm like already sleeping of course and, like maybe i'm gonna tap but you know like i'm like different guy a little bit so it's difficult to stop me could I ask, how do you like escape that. when it's that tight? What is the technique? What do you do to escape? Because you, you were gotta, dry, uh, right? You, it wasn't like you were sweaty. Yeah, it, yeah the, the the worst thing it was in the first minute, first round. Yeah, I was, I was, I was dry, and uh, it it was difficult to escape. But I did it. Uh, so the first thing what I gotta do is uh, like. Um, um, uh, break his uh, legs, you know, and like escape from from that position, because he's gonna grab my just hand with uh, like a guillotine without legs. It's nothing, but like when he like uh, in he grab his uh, his legs, it's uh, difficult. That's why you gotta break his legs and like get out from there. Wow! And uh, that's why in the third round, and then the third round, I just stayed there because if I stand up, he's gonna jump again, and that's why I like was staying there because. I didn't feel anything there, but if I stand, he's gonna jump again and again. I gotta like get out from his uh, like uh, legs, you know. So uh, I think like some fans thought when you went flat that you were actually like going out, but I I saw some fighters. No. Andrew Ben was one. That was your that was your defense, right, to go flat. Yeah, it's a it's a defense because if I'm gonna get up, he can take my back or he's gonna jump again to the to the guard and like from that position is more more dangerous and. Uh, I don't know. So I didn't watch my fight, but like I just bef- before your interview, I just wanted to watch one more round, the f- uh, round number three, and why the one judge gave that round uh, to him. And like I just watched, and like even now I couldn't understand. On the striking, I was better. I took him down. I held him, and then the he just thirty seconds, and uh, I took a risk. I wanted to uh, choke him. I t- uh, I want took his back and choke him from there, but like I lost that position. Okay, he he got the choke, but like he was there at thirty seconds, and like why you gave that round to him, like for what? I'm just I just want to know like okay why nobody like judge him like do you gotta ask him because he can he can like he can break my career you know sure like no you deserve to like. Know. And like that guy, he's like, oh, uh, like Armenian, you know, the judge oh. is Armenian guy. Wow. That's crazy. And like he, 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 in his, in his Instagram page, Armenian flag, he's, uh, he has Armenian last name and like he put Armenians music, you know, his posters and like you gave the round to him. Like, okay, if you're Brazilian, I got it. You want to like, like push your guy, you know? Okay, I got it. If you're Armenian, it's a 50-50. Okay, you can, like, still, like, give to him. But it's not 50-50. It's, like, 90 and 10%, like, 90 mine, 10 his, uh, like, round. It's, like, how you, you give to him. I just want to hear from him that uh, that comment about that, that fifth, uh, third round. Did you write to That's him crazy. on Instagram? No. Not yet, but I'm going to text him. And I have a friend who knows him. I just want to lo- know, like, not just, I am just want to know, like, why. Maybe I don't know rules. That's why I got, I want to I wanna learn. Sure. I want to know, like, maybe, like, next fight, I'm not going to do that mistake. And, like, pressure was my pressure. Striking was mine. I didn't watch, like, first round, second round. I just turned on the third round and just watched before your interview. Yeah. And, like, I want to know, like, what happened there. And, like, nothing. Just, guys, please like crazy and uh, that's why so you never gotta let them judge you you gotta stop yeah but like guy like Oliveira, it's so difficult how you gonna choke this guy like you know you gotta drop him and then choke uh i, I was just wondering about something that happened at the very beginning of the fight because daniel cormier was talking about it when he walks into the cage and he shows you love and he shakes the hand of your entire corner. You know, when he came in, Daniel Cormier is like, nah, I don't want to be friends with the guy who I'm about to fight. What are you thinking when he does that, when he comes up to you right before the fight? Does that, is that something you like or would you prefer not to be in such a good standing with your opponent? No, I like it. You know, he appreciates everybody. You know, it's a, he's a super, uh, 
super good guy, you know, and uh, this is good. Uh, he he shows everybody like we got to respect each other, you know, even we can talk shit about uh, every, uh, like uh, about like our uh, like uh, fighters, like who we are fight with, but like, but still we got to uh, like uh, be respectful you know right and uh, he's one of the respectful guy and uh, uh even that it's a sport you know you, you're not going to for war you know or like you know you just you, you have uh, your technique skills you just go there do your thing and that's it and doesn't matter you like him or you don't like him or you appreciate him or i don't know like anything you just go there do your job doesn't matter what what maybe he's good to you or not good doesn't matter like i'm gonna do same thing if i drop him and uh, i want to knock him out i don't want to just like cut him do anything even like he's a very respectful guy so i don't know you know you got it what i what i mean 100 <laughs> percent. yes of course of course I, under, I totally understand i thought it was very cool I, I was just curious if you if you had the a different opinion than than dc did um i was told that after the fight they asked you if you wanted to fight june 1st against islam but the turnaround was too quick, yeah. so they decided to go with Dustin. Is that true? Yeah, it's true. When I like uh, when I uh, went from the uh, when I left Octagon right away, Hunter came and uh, said June first, uh, uh, Islam. I said I gotta think, and uh, it was like seven weeks left, and uh, I gotta I can jump too fast, so I gotta rest a little bit, and then have a camp in if it was like june uh like 20th or like and the end of june's so yeah i'll i would take that fight because i i have like at least 10 weeks you know two weeks two weeks rest and eight weeks for preparation and like why i gotta take the same risk like i did first first fight it's the same thing you know short notice i want to be ready uh and i want to have full training camp and uh, why if I'm number one contender, so why I gotta take a risk? Of course, if I like in, in top 10 and someone say before seven weeks, like, can, can you fight in June first? Of course, I'm gonna take the risk. But like, I'm like, I just beat former champion, you know, Hall of, Hall of Fame fighter and like, it doesn't make sense. So was that difficult for you though? Because it's still a title fight. Was it hard to say no? It was hard to say no, but yeah, you know, it's it was hard to say no, but like, I know I'm going to fight next for the title uh, with the winner of that fight. Okay, so did they say to you, okay, no problem, you'll fight the winner of this fight later this year? Like, I, like I understand, yes. Okay, are you worried that, you know, it's a crazy sport, uh, what if Dustin beats Islam, then they do a rematch, and you have to wait, you know, so much could happen. Yeah, a little bit, but if... Poria wins, yeah, he's gonna try to escape me, you know. And but like, if Islam wins, Islam gonna fight with me definitely. He, he, Islam, he doesn't pick fighters, you know. If you see, say this guy, he's gonna fight. Sure, probably in October in Abu Dhabi, right? Yeah, it doesn't matter. October, November in Madison Square Garden. I'm ready. September, August, like any day, because I just, I'm, I'm not gonna be ready in June first. Yeah, and that's it. Okay. After that, I'm ready for every every date. Who do you think wins on June first? Oh, it's a difficult question, you know, because the Borja he's my teammate and uh, Islam, the guy who I want to beat so much, you can Im even imagine. So it's a uh, first he has a he has a title, and second it's a rematch, you know, and uh, that fight. Uh, for me, it makes sense. And uh, definitely, I want to see the winner is Islam Akaji. So would it be fair? But, to... it's... but like, I'm, I'm not going to support sure, anybody sure, there. Sure. I'm just going to be out and watch, like, the good fights. And uh, I'm, uh, like, Poria, Poria, he's a good, you know, he has a good condition and he can knock out people, you know, very easy. And if if Islam did, like, if Islam going to do, like, small mistake. Poria gonna knock him out. You know he has a like very powerful punch. Um, do you ever train with Poria? Do you guys ever roll, spar, anything like that? 
Long ago, long ago. Okay. Yeah, we sparred role. Yeah, long ago. But we have a like good uh, relationship. Yeah, but we are we we don't train together because you know we know like one day we we could fight. Sure. Probably less, just less. Uh, not to say that you're rooting against him, but less awkward for you, and also it's more personal. The the uh, the Islam fight, right? Because of your history. Yes. Yeah. History, much title, you know, all things. Yes, um, it's uh, it's. I, I can't imagine the emotions that you were feeling on Saturday because you win against Charles UFC three hundred, great win. Then you're offered title fight, but you have to say no. No one wants to say no to a title fight. But the time, I agree hundred percent. That's a quick turnaround, uh, a month and a half away, and then you have to see how this all plays out. So I bet it was like a range of emotions that you were probably happy you got a title fight, but then you know a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean conflicted yeah i know what you mean and uh that's why i couldn't sleep you know like yeah yesterday night i slept like one hour wow or maybe less because like the adrenaline and all things you know a lot of like people like came to support me you know and uh that title fight they talk about title fight you know i was super excited and uh even now, I'm still like, uh, still like feeling that th that thing, you know. Yeah. C could I could I just ask you about the walkout? Uh, <laughs> yeah. What happened? <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know how I saw that that guy. <laughs> That's crazy. Like yeah. The the uh like some uh, like usually I don't I don't see I just go straight and like like open my hands and like shake their hands and like run you know yeah but this time like the fuck was like here you know like <laughs> on my head <laughs> and i wanted like grab his hand and like like break him his uh like finger and like yeah and um it's a was a like a fake you know punch but i didn't punch to him i wanted to like uh scared him you know yeah and uh yeah, so did and it, he was scared, definitely. Yeah, I would, I would be scared too. But you looked a little bit upset. Like, was it, was it uh, annoying in the moment? Were you fixated on it? Were you? No, 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 no upset. I was like super angry, you know. Okay, yeah, all right. Because like I'm a fighter, you know. Like we are like a little bit different. Like yes. if someone does that shit, like we, we, we sometimes we lose our our mind, you know. Like sometimes, like. Those 10 seconds or 15 seconds, you can't control yourself sometimes, you know, like, because people, like, when, like, close to you do, like, this shit is, like, unrespectful, you know? You can do from the, like, far away from me. Yeah. No. Uh, did anyone... Hopefully next time, next time when I'm gonna, like, uh, walk, mm. the bodyguard's gonna, like, like, uh, gonna protect me very well. Sure. It's crazy that you saw him because you're probably so focused. Yeah, in that's that moment. crazy. That, yes. Because the, his his finger was like <laughs> like here, you know. That's why I saw that. Thing. If it was like here, yeah, okay, yeah. I'm I'm good, you know. I'm I'm like, but like, he wanted like maybe like to, I don't know, like that uh, to show that the finger. I'm, I sure. don't know, like okay, never mind. Did anyone talk to you about this after? Was anyone upset about it? Yeah, my manager. Okay. He said, don't do that again because, <laughs> because next time you're going to have more haters and, like, you can spend your energy for everybody. And, like, I said, okay, I got it. Yeah, yeah, probably for the best. Uh, will you will yeah. you come to Newark to watch the fight to, to, to yes, be there? I want, yeah, 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 definitely. I want to come watch because I'm the next and uh, <clears throat> super – excited fight you know and i can say islam Mahach are gonna be uh, gonna win for sure because on the top level it's so difficult to like to say who is gonna win yeah like if we're gonna compare skills maybe islam has a good skills but like who is gonna be better that day yeah. who's gonna cut better the weight cut and who is gonna have better training camp and that guy gonna win you know but a lot of uh, small details uh, like make sense on the biggest fights, you know. Well, I, I think you made the right call. Uh, you deserve a full training camp. Congratulations on an incredible win, and uh, thank you for keeping your word. 
coming back Monday and also uh, for making me look smart because I said end of the year, I think you're going to be champion in the UFC. So you're well Thank on your you way. Thank you so much. You're well on your way, Armin. Thank you so much. Thank you and congratulations. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate it for your time. Okay, we'll talk to you soon. There he is. Bye-bye. Armin Tarukian, the, uh, I guess you could call him number one contender, although uh, I do think that to a degree, uh, they're, you know, like you could say, well, Dustin's next, so he's the number one contender. But you know what I mean? He's the next guy after. And if I were him, I would uh, definitely make sure that I'm there on June 1st. It's always good to be, to be you know, sitting there and um, in the camera shot, in the crowd, you come in the ring, whatever it is. I wouldn't count out Dustin Poirier. He's got, at this point, nothing to lose. This is probably his last chance, his chance to finish the story. Um, don't count out El Diamante is what I'd say to you, uh, but I look forward to seeing him get his title shot. So it's a bit of an ATT day today. We go from Kayla to Armin to now Henato, and then later, of course, Jorge Masvidal in studio for now, though. Let's go to Money Moicano who had the big win on Saturday. He's back. And it's so great to have him as always. Renato, congratulations, my friend. Parabéns. Muito obrigado. Yes. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, my friend, you just won at UFC 300 on one of the best cards of all time. Has it sunk yes. in? Has everything sunk in? The week, everything, all that you did, the great fight. We'll talk about the fight, the, the promo. I, I mean, like, you're, you're, you're on fire right now, Renato. I'm still waiting for the 300K. Where is my 300K? <laughs> Are you disappointed? Of course, 100%. Because, Ariel, Ariel, let me tell you something. One thing is go over there and smash all your opponent. But then when you got knocked down on the first and then you got back even better and finish a guy that is very hard to finish, I think that that was 300K in my opinion. I know, I know. I was hoping maybe they'd give a few more out. Dana did say he's going to take care of this person, that person. I think he mentioned you. So do you know what that means? No. Okay. <laughs> I hope that means 300K. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and did you really want it in Bitcoin? 100%. Wh I would, I, 100%. Why? Why? 100%. Don't you want the money? No. You're no, not Bitcoin no. Moicano. You're money Moicano. Uh, money money is, a tough, tough, is a tough topic, you know? B because like 300K today in dollars, 10 years from now, how... We don't know how much Bitcoin is going to be, but probably that will, that will worth much more than dollar in 10 years. That's my opinion. The way the economy is doing, I don't know if you heard, but the inflation is getting, is kicking in again. And the interest rates, they're going, I think they will go high. And I think Bitcoin is going to be even better than dollar. Wow. Okay. That's a big statement. And by the way, it's so great that we're talking to you today on all days because uh, today is tax day. Did you did you follow your taxes? I didn't. I did the extension. Ah, smart. I smart, did sorry. the extension. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the the week for you, did you enjoy? Because I know you're a fan of the sport. We talked about 300 even before you were on the card. Like, did you enjoy being a part of such a a, a big event, a grand event? Did you take some time to enjoy everything? That's the problem to be a fighter because you don't have time to enjoy. Mm. That's the, my only problem because it's so hard for me to make the weight. So the whole week I was really focused on make the weight and on performing good on Saturday. That I I could I didn't even could watch the fights after my fight. I went to talk to the reporters and to and do the whole ob obligations. So I didn't watch the fight today later. I have one more podcast to do after that, the Show Me The Money podcast. Yes, yes. And I hope you guys enjoy the Show Me The Money podcast. Me, Gilbert, me, Gilbert Burns, and Maddie, we're going to talk about UFC 300, 300. But after that, I will watch UFC 300 from the beginning to the to the top and watch all the fights. Because, of course, I watch Max Holloway and, the, and, and Gaethje uh, and, and Pereira, of course, but I want to watch all other fights, too. Okay, so have you watched your Crazy fight? Crazy card, right? In incredible. It was amazing. Did you watch your fight? Yes, I watched my fight. Okay, so the, the kick in the first, like, 10 seconds, uh, the broadcasters were saying, oh, that hurt him bad. Did it hurt you bad? A little bit. Not that much. A okay. little bit. <laughs> yeah. And then what about what about when he when he, it seemed like he was on the verge of finishing you when he dropped you what 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 happened there what are you thinking and are you shocked that he walked away? No, I as soon as he dropped me, I was ready to like to defend myself, you know. To and I saw he didn't uh, 
tried to punch me, then I got back to the feet. I don't know why he did that, but that cost him the fight. So <laughs> that was not a smart move. But one thing is for sure, I say on the on the end of the interview, I cannot afford to lose. Even if he uh, jump on my guard and start to punch me, I would get him on an arm bar or something. I'm not losing, Ariel. I'm not fucking losing. <laughs> are you thinking anything in that moment or are you just kind of like uh, playing off your instincts? No, I was thinking. I was thinking I have to get this motherfucker to the ground right now and beat the shit out of him. I'm not gonna be playing any games. And when I uh, went to the corner, my coach say, hey, uh, he got you bad, you lost the round, and then I, I, I realized, no, now I have to do and I have to go and do something big. And that's what I did. Like on the second round, right away, I was chasing him, uh, land some punches, I landed a good right hand. Then when he felt the hand, I, I went for the takedown and, and I did my job. Um, when, you, when you have a fight like that and then you have a finish like that, are you checking, you know, because you're, you're a little bit early in the card, so are you getting nervous? Like, oh, okay, I, I hope this guy doesn't do better. Okay, this this fight. Okay, yes, I'll just, you know, one hundred percent. Since the beginning, I was just, I was just. Uh, when Bobby Green was about to finish Jamil, I said, No, like don't that. finish him. <laughs> don't finish him. Like when the girls were fighting, I said, Don't finish. Don't finish. I, I, I wanted only body decisions, but unfortunately, Diego Lopez is a monster. Yeah. You just saw that knockout. After that, I thought, Man, my bonus is over. This guy's gonna get my bonus for sure. And then Max Holloway come, come over there and, and he just delivered a picture-perfect knockout. One of the best fights that I ever see. Gaethje is a monster. But let me tell you something. Max Holloway is a different animal. I am a huge fan of Max Holloway. He's a guy that never was involved in polemics. He doesn't call anybody out. He just go over there and do his job professionally for the last 15 years fighting the best. I think... He's for, he for sure is one of the best fights ever. I really appreciate Max uh, Holloway fighting style, his personality. I think everything about Max Holloway is legendary. Yes, what an iconic moment, right? Pointing to the middle of the uh, the cage and then he freaking knocks him out with one second. I mean, that's like a movie. Next time Max Holloway do that against you, don't go over <laughs> there chasing <laughs> him because you're going to be in trouble. That man is a man on a mission and to put Justin Gage out like that was unbelievable. UFC 300, I could not have been so wrong about the car. I think uh, I, in the beginning, I was talking shit about UFC 300, <laughs> but in the end of the day, in the Free. end of the day, was one of the best. Uh, because one thing is when you put the card, right? When you when you are making the fights, but this card delivered. The knockout of Pereira, the fight between Gaethje and Holloway, and the finish uh, me, obviously, uh, the Bobby Green fight was amazing. The, the the girls, I think only people was were not satisfied about Algernon Sterling, but that's none of my business too. Yes, yes. We we cannot have only we cannot have like uh, all fight by finish. We have to have some Algernon Sterling over there, right? <laughs> <laughs> he was the only one who didn't get an interview for whatever reason. I I thought he deserved. Uh, you know one. the reason. You know the why, reason. Why? Why he deserved? Why? It. Because that no because. Because I think, like the UFC is thinking, uh, we're not gonna give him the interview, so the next guy know he needs to finish to get uh, the microphone. Maybe it's there, right? Like an incentive. Yes, yes. What about Poatan, though? I mean, this guy, he comes in there, the referee, Herb D, he pushes him away, and then he knocks him out, and then he goes like this. I mean, what is this guy? He's, I, I don't even know what to say. Eighth fight, and he's doing all this. Iconic, iconic. That shows the level of focus and discipline of Alex Pereira because he was fighting. He got kicked on the nuts when <laughs> when RBG when when RBG was, was trying to stop the fight. He just, he didn't even look. He just felt RBG was over there. And yeah, like you say, you post that. Let me cook. And yeah, ta! bang. And it was a bang, iconic moment. Uh, like uh, Aljamo, uh, like no Aljamo, like Max Holloway, iconic. <laughs> but. <laughs> What was a great night of fights. I, I, I was really impressed. By, and I like Jamal Hill. Jamal Hill is a cool guy. I like him a lot. He went in our podcast. But I, I say that before the fight. Like, it's not a good idea to strike him, like, like to fight on the feet against Alex Peter. He's such a good kickboxer. And I don't know if you saw, he punched in the thing on the PI. Mm. Like, he's stronger than Ngano. So imagine Alex Pereira, 205, punching that hard. Uh, the guy is just a freak of nature. 
Would you like to see him fight in Brazil on May 4th? Do you think that's a smart idea at heavyweight? I like to fight in the, uh, in the Brazil for. I like to be on the card. But of course, people would like to see Pereira more than me. He's the champion. And, and to be honest, I will be, I will be very happy to see him at the heavyweight on Brazil. I think he deserved that. And I think he's, he has the power to be a heavyweight, right? Yes. Uh, is there any chance of you fighting on that card? Did you, did you speak to the UFC afterwards? Is there any up, you know, opportunity there for you? 100% I'm down. I'm willing. I can fight tomorrow. Wow. You know, I can fight tomorrow. I am a man on a mission. I want to, I want to be on the top five this year. And I know, man, l- let me tell you something. I know Jalen Turner got me, but did you see, uh, how fast I take him down the first round. He's not a he's not an easy guy to take down, especially now that he's training with the Russian guy. Like he's training a lot of wrestling. He's putting the work. But but I am the best in this division. I'm telling you, and I'm going to prove everybody. So I need to fight the opponent if they want to fight in Brazil, uh, London, America. I don't care. I want money and I want to beat these motherfuckers and get to the top of the division. Who, who would be realistic for Brazil? Who, who do you think, that, you know, like Patty's not fighting in Brazil in three weeks. That's not realistic. Maybe in the summer, but who do you think would be realistic? That's the problem. I ask you, who do you think would it's fight tough. in Brazil? Not many fighters. That's the problem. In three you know? weeks. In three weeks, probably a guy outside the rankings. But guess what, UFC? If you have the, the right opponent, I fight in Brazil for sure. You know, I want to fight as much as possible. And I want to get to the top of the division. And I want a new contract. You know, I want oh. money. Are you done? So, Is your contract up? No. How many, no, how many no. left? How many left? Three, three fights yet. Okay. Three fights still. Are yeah. you going to try to renegotiate now? 100%. Why not? Of course. Why not? Why not? Why not? <laughs> why not? Why not? Yeah, why not? Why not? But you're, uh, Renato, how do you explain all this? Like the momentum that you're on now and, and, and the popularity, you said you were surprised at how much you were cheered. It's just unbelievable yeah. to see you were in the UFC so many years. Like, I feel like I've asked you yeah. this version of this question every time we've talked recently. But even now, like I can't get enough of you on the show. People want you every week on the show. You're so popular. And, and if you want, I can be on the show giving financial advice to people. My that's friend. right. That's right. I appreciate <laughs> that. But what, like, how do you explain all this, this momentum that you're on? What, what is the secret to all of this? Uh, I don't know if you believe in Jesus, but I do. I really think it's like Jesus. Jesus to me is the truth, you know, and, and if you stick to the truth, the truth will show up. And I am a good man, you know, I, I walk my way up. I have, been, I have been in UFC for a long time. If I was not, um, people were not recognizing me, was be, was my fault, not UFC fault, not anybody's fault. You know, I was not, I didn't want to talk. I didn't want to do podcast. I didn't want to do interview. I thought, the business for MMA was fighting. But the business for MMA is, is perception of other people, right? It's a business. You have to sell tickets. And if they know you and if they, if they like you, it's even better. And I, think, and I think people like what I have to say. And the way I'm saying is very funny. So I think, I think people are interested in me. And I think that's what it's making that huge turn for me. Speaking of which, um, the biggest question that I can ask you in this interview is about something you said on Saturday. Quote, this is the quote from you. I love private property. And let me tell you something. If you care about your fucking country, read Ludwig von Mises and the Six Lessons of the Austrian Economic School, motherfuckers. Yes. 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 End quote. <laughs> yeah. Ask, please. Yes. 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 Continue. What, what prompts you to say this in the moment? Like most people are talking about a whole host of other things when they're fighting, when they're on adrenaline. Why do you feel the need to, to talk to people about the Austrian economic school? Because I'm very concerned. A lot of people talk to me about money, but, but the problem is, is not about, is not about how much money you get. Is, is about how much money you can keep it. And like, if with the inflation, this book, Six Lessons of Mises, I think in English is, an, is another name. This is the Portuguese name. But uh, on this book, you learn about capitalism, socialism, interventionism, inflation, uh, like foreign uh, 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 currency and political and ideas. And on this book, he explained uh, what the government does with your money of taxes and how they print the way out of debit. And if you see the debt in America right now is 37 trillion of dollars. And if you look at the GDP, like the growth 
product of the of the country is like 27 million. So we are in debt and America is printing his way out of debt. And this is make the dollar less value. So let's say like, again, I'm let's say I make the 300K now of the bonus one year from now. I cannot buy the same things with the 300K. I will, ha I will need more money. So what's the point of, on capitalism, the whole point of capitalism is to get money, right? And what's the point of you getting money if you cannot keep your money safe from inflation? So I'm very worried about that because I see people want welfare. If you see the numbers of uh, how much government is spending on like on, on healthcare and, and welfare, that's a lot because... I know some people are struggling and they are on a bad place, but the government wants that. They want people in bad places so they can make their money, can keep the cycle of poverty. And if you start to learn and understand about economics and about money, you don't want to be rely on government, rely on, on, on welfare, because... On the look on the look on the long term, this is going to destroy not only the rich but the middle class and the poor too. Many, many empires collapse before that, before inflation and uncontrolled debt. The Roman Empire was uh, uh destroyed because of that, not only because the barbarians, but because they were falsifying the coins, right? They could not print the money, but they were uh doing uh like they are they were mixing metals with the the silver and losing the value so the 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 degeneration of money the degeneration of society leads to a weak to to a weak society and i want to live in a strong society with good values so that's why i recommend you you if you never uh, listen to read Mises, Ludwig von Mises, the six lessons is, is six lectures that he did on Argentina. Very easy topics. You don't need to be a scholar. It's very easy to understand. And and let me tell you something. On Brazil, people went crazy over this, uh, this video of this viral moment. Everybody's talking about that. Even mayors are, are sending me a message like because a lot of people got interested on in that. And I'm telling you, Try to understand about money and what government is doing with your money and how they are taxing you with inflation. That, that's very important. That's why you have to understand about, about Bitcoin, economics, and money. That, that might have been the greatest answer in the history of this show. I've been doing this show 15 years. That might have been the greatest answer ever. What, no, the, I, I, the, I don't the, believe this you. Is, uh, yeah. What about Jordan Peterson writing about you? Did you see that? I see that. And that's why I, that's why I say my message is so important. Ben Shapiro and even Fox News. On the Wednesday, I have like an interview with Fox News and, and tomorrow with Fox, Fox Business. <laughs> so the, the, so my, my message is crystal clear. If you not control the debt of America, uh, this is going to ruin this country. We need a free society. We need a free market of ideas. And we need less interventionism. We need less government take control of your life and of your money. This is a very important message. And I think Jordan Pitzel knows that because I have been, I have read his books, 12 Rules for Life. And the, one of the first lessons is always tell the truth. And that's why I'm telling. That's my truth. If you don't agree, try to, to argue with me. But it, the debt is just crazy. The, the inflation is going to go up and... If they if they lower if they low the interest rates of out of the blue, this is going to cause even more poverty in America. So uh, stay with the Austrian economic school principles, and we're going to be fine. Unbelievable. Well, by the way, were you a good student? Were you a good student? No, I was not a good student. <laughs> I was not a good student at all. But let me tell you something. When I was in in in, in, in school, I didn't care about school. I just care about fighting. I remember since I'm 11, 12, I was skipping school to go training because that was my motivation. At the time, I wanted to be a fighter. That, that was always my dream. But now that I am a father, that I'm a family man, that I'm family ha household, uh, it's about it's not about me. It's about my family, and I want them, uh, and I want to keep them safe, and I want to keep them wealthy, and I want to keep them free. And the best way to do that is less government and more power to the people. What do you think happens? Like your next fight? Do you think it's Patty? Do you think it's this summer? How do you feel? Like uh, Rio might be a little bit too soon. What do you? How do you feel it plays out? 
<laughs> I don't even know. I don't know what UFC are going to do if that. I'm in a strange place. I'm going to be on the top 10, but I don't know if they're going to give me Darius or Don Hooker. But at the same time, I don't think they ha they have the star power to be to be a star. And I think I will be a star. I just need a couple more fights. If I keep fighting the way I'm fighting, if I keep talking the way I'm talking, if I keep connecting with the truth, my message is going to resonate with people. My English is going to get better and I will be a big star on MMA oh, yeah. and not only in MMA. So I don't really know. And I wanted to talk shit about Perry, but he made a lot of good comments about me. So I'm not oh. going to trash on him. What do you yeah. say? What do you say? <laughs> Uh, he congratulated me. He, he congratulated me about the fight. He said, "Ah, very good fight for Moicano." Somebody uh, sent me the video, and he said he want to do the maybe the ultimate fight of Moicano against Paddy. I would not be against that. I uh. think that would be very, very, very funny. So I'm not gonna talk too much shit about him. But if he wants the smoke, I'm gonna <laughs> make him easy fucking money, brother. <laughs> I know you being nice. I know all that shit. But no, don't forget, Moicano wants money. In God, we trust. All the others paying cash, motherfucker. <laughs> oh my, what a lie. What a lie. That's a great, that's a great line for a, a, a shirt. You should put that on a shirt. That's an amazing line. By the way. Talking about shirts, I have a new T-shirt oh, oh. that I made for UFC 300. Go to moneymoicano.com and you have Money Moicano shirt stand for freedom. And if you use the code REL10, <laughs> we're going to give you 10% of discount. So you're helping the show, yes. you're helping uh, the money Moicano, and buy your T-shirt and help the cause, my brother. I love it. Can I ask you, because you always, you're always the most truthful one, Kayla Harrison, Amanda Nunes, how does that fight go? <laughs> Tough question for me because Amanda Nunes, uh, she's a very good friend of mine. Okay. And... and, and and Kayla Harrison, she's a monster. Maybe Amanda not going to like what I have to say, but I think the moment right now is for Kayla Harrison. Mm, wow. Okay. I think, yeah. I, I think we can never count Amanda out because she has she she has proven everybody wrong. But I think at the moment, K Kayla Harrison. Dustin Poirier Islam was announced. Man, that's, that was a bad question. That, no, that I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, because you keep it real. You keep it real, Hainat. What about <laughs> that's Dustin, the problem. And, that's Dustin the and problem. Islam? What do you think? Uh, unfortunately, I think Islam. Okay. Do you think Armin could beat Islam. Islam? I don't know if he beat, but stylistically, he, he has what it takes to beat Islam, right? A, a good wrestling. But again, I think... I think Sarukian is too short for the division, especially for Islam Makachev. Islam Makachev is tall, but don't get me wrong. Uh, I was wrong against Sarukian. He's a very, very good fighter, you yeah. know? I say that he was unproven, he was, but after the Charles fight, I think a lot of people are respecting him more because the way he escaped the guillotines. Uh, and, and, and to be honest, he may have the best ground and pound of the division. Very, very good ground and pound. Very good elbows. He's a tough He's a tough fight for everybody on the division. What a delight you are, Renato. Very happy for you. Congratulations on an incredible win, an incredible week, an incredible run for you. It's so much fun to, to watch you do your thing. It really is. And you're, you're seizing the moment. And uh, very happy that you're getting these uh, mainstream opportunities as well so more people can Crazy. learn about you. It's a beautiful thing. So well done. Enjoy it, my friend. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All Thank right. you so much, everybody. There he is, Hinata Moicano. What a guy. Check out his uh, Show Me the Money podcast with Gilbert Burns and company. Uh, and he is just uh, hes just such a delight. He really is. Uh, really enjoy talking to him. And I know a lot of people love when he is on the show as well. Um, still to come, Aljamain Sterling and, of course, Jorge Masvidal joining us in studio. We'll get the recap from GC and the boys as far as... Uh, everyone is concerned. I think that they are rolling right now. I think that's what I'm hearing. By the way, what about this? Huh? Huh? What about that? Can you see it? I don't know. It's the post UFC 300 show. And we haven't heard from Frank once. I don't know what to make of it all. Doesn't seem like he's going to start now either. <laughs> what is he mad at me or something? No, he's just he's in the trenches. He's is it is it is Who, me? <laughs> there he is. Maybe a Jazz Davicius or something, just to make sure you're okay. I'm sorry. I'm trying to help get Diego on. But... Oh, okay. Sorry, 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 sorry. 
Um, did he just bud you? Did he give me a bud? Yeah, I think he might have just. Wow. Ah, there was no bud there. What, what, I could hear you in my right ear. You guys wow. are a bud or a crazy. bud at the end. It sounded like he was what, like, did, did I get a pal? Buddy will pal. Did I get a pal? Hey, pal. Ready, by the way. <laughs> wow. Um, okay, listen. You know, we. Uh, we spent some time in Las Vegas together, and every, I guess I, th- I actually thought that the team got stronger. Apparently, uh, we're falling apart at the seams. All right, no problem. Uh, it was on May 6th of last year, 2023, right here across the river in Newark. Diego Lopez took a fight on very short notice, like five days' notice against Mofsar Evloev. Um, the fight didn't go his way. He lost a decision, but he got the fight of the night bonus. Since then, he's undefeated in the UFC. Three straight wins, street, three straight finishes, First a submission win over Gavin Tucker, then a knockout of Pat Sabatini here at Madison Square Garden, and then on Saturday, TKO win over Sadiq Youssef. What a star he has turned into, what a fan favorite he has turned into, and uh, what a performance on Saturday. All it took was 89 seconds to finish Sadiq Youssef. He's kind enough to join us right now. Diego Lopez is here. Hello, Diego. How are you, my friend? Thank you so much. How are you, brother? Oh, look at that. Uh, some fireworks. <laughs> and that is uh, apropos. <laughs> that is amazing. Uh, it's very reminiscent of what you did. And we're also being joined by Jacob of uh, Iridium, who's here to uh, translate for you. Jacob, are you there? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you so much, Jacob. But uh, dare I say, I, I don't think Diego needs an interpreter because uh, your English is getting better, right? It's much better. It's much better. But I think it's now I, I need a translation. <laughs> okay. Well, every time we see you, it's getting better and better. So well done. Are you taking lessons? Uh, yeah, it's a little bit. Okay. Well done. Uh, all right. So another big win for you. Could I ask, uh, just being a part of 300, now that it's done, being with those legends, with those superstars, it was such a big event. How would you describe your week, your experience in Las Vegas last week? So, siendo parte de me gusta el 300, como cómo se sentía, cómo cómo eran tus sentimientos de estar en un evento tan grande, como que cómo cómo te sentías. No, pues me sentía genial, la verdad es que hacer parte de UFC 300 para mí fue algo increíble, ¿no? Yo creo que mi carrera ha despegado mucho en los últimos meses, o sea, menos de un año de llegar en UFC y estar peleando en UFC 300 con tantas estrellas en la en la cartelera, para mí fue algo increíble. I mean, it was an incredible journey for him and, you know, just uh, just a jump for him in his career. I mean, being in the UFC only eight months and now, you know, fighting on such an amazing card for, for him was just an amazing feeling. Um, are, are you aware of uh, the popularity that you have, especially online? Because when this card was getting announced, like all the fights, when they added you to the card, the reaction was huge. People were like, oh, they were so happy that you were on the card, so excited because you're a big fan favorite now. Do you see this? And uh, are you surprised that so many people are so, you know, so so into you, supporting you right now, so early into your career? Do you understand how tan largo presencia, or how tan grande presencia you have right now por redes sociales and los fanáticos? Como que muchos de los fans estaban super emocionado cuando cuando anunciaron que usted iba a ser parte de este evento como Tú, tú sabes qué que tan grande es. Sí, o sea, sí, en un momento, al principio, pues no, no podía dimensionar, ¿no? Pero cuando anunciaron la, la cartelera de UFC 300 y yo empecé a ver que mucha gente preguntaba si yo iba a estar en UFC 300, al principio me asusté un poco, pero después viendo todo que lo todo que había hecho en mis peleas pasadas, yo creo que era una posibilidad muy grande de estar en UFC 300, ¿no? Este... Aún más porque el UFC me había puesto en, lugar de, en, en la cartelera de, de New York y que fue una cartelera muy grande también, ¿no? Entonces yo tenía la expectativa de pelear en una gran cartelera y pues bueno, el UFC me brindó con la cartelera de UFC 300 y tener el apoyo de todos los fanáticos para mí es increíble. Yeah, I, I think at first he was, uh, he said he got nervous, right, and, and scared when they first announced the card and uh, you know, but as time came by and he saw all the announcements and the fans are just supporting him and he just, you know, he felt ready and he had already been a part of a bigger event with UFC New York, right? And how, how immense that opportunity was. So I think his nerves were kind of calm and, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a great opportunity and it just kind of seized the day. How, how were the nerves in the locker room on Saturday? Because there was so much attention and so many people watching, how were you feeling right before the fight? 
¿Cómo te sentías como de tus nervios o cómo te sentías? ¿Cómo tenías mucho ansiedad antes de, de la pelea o te sentías bien? No, la verdad es que pues, me sentía bien. Soy un peleador muy tranquilo. Este, yo sé que no se compara, pero soy un peleador que tiene bastante experiencia. O sea, tengo esta fue mi pelea de número 30, entonces he pasado por, por cosas así muchas veces. Yo sé que pelear en la cartelera de UFC 300 pues, era una presión muy grande, pero traté de no, de no enfocarme en eso y solo enfocar en en ser el mejor esta noche y salir con la victoria. He's not a he's a very relaxed fighter as a whole. He doesn't really get too excited or or anxious. Um, this is his 30th fight, you know, so I think he just kind of went in there and obviously he felt a little bit of pressure, but you know, went in there did his job and you know, obviously everything went the way that it was supposed to. Um you you come into the UFC on five days notice against a tough guy and it doesn't go your way, but a lot of people start to realize that, oh, you're, you're going to be a, a, a player if you stick around and get a full camp. If we would have talked in May of last year, okay, what's going to happen now after Mofsar? Would you have believed that you'd have had such success and such popularity so soon, or is this happening sooner than you thought? Entrando al UFC con cinco días de aviso, you know, peleando contra cuando tu oponente la primera pelea y muchos empezaron a, a dar ojo de, de qué tanto talento tienes como tú te imaginaste de qué tan qué tanto sucedía en tu carrera hasta este momento este cuando yo llegué a la pelea como sabía yo sabía que era una pelea muy difícil pero yo sabía que era una pelea que me podía proyectar para grandes cosas no este yo me acuerdo que platiqué con mi manager platiqué con con mi con mis coaches, yo decía, mira, es la oportunidad de mi vida, yo voy a hacer, yo voy a hacer de todo pues, para que la gente sepa quién es Diego López, ¿no? Yo creo que así fue, así fue, y pues bueno, las cosas fueron pasando poco a poco, supe aprovechar todo lo que está pasando en mi carrera, y pues mira, mira dónde estamos ahorita, mira con el estado que tenemos, ¿no? I, I think the, you know, when he spoke to, to Jason and his coaching staff, uh, I think, you know, knowing that it was a tough fight, but knowing that it was going to put him in a really good position in his career, right? So, Um, obviously knowing, you know, what the risk was, but, you know, just having that confidence and trusting the people around him, you know, just, you know, look at where he's at now and just trusting that process. Um, your, your hair is always a big topic of conversation. <laughs> I noticed it's a little longer in the back, right? Is it a little, are we letting it grow in the back there? Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, que, que lo estás dejando crecer un poco más uh, atrás. De atrás pues está un poquito más largo que normal. Yo siempre lo he tenido así. Lo que pasa es que esta vez en New York, cuando fui a cortar mi pelo, lo cortaron mal. Por eso se veía muy corto. Entonces, pues hasta me molesté. De hecho, Jacob fue conmigo a cortar yeah. mi pelo. Y yo me molesté so, porque me cortaron mal el pelo. Yeah, so, so it's, it's actually funny because uh, I went with him to get that haircut. We had first got... The whole LA trip was crazy. Uh, I get a call Sunday night Uh, or whatever day that was, and Jason's like, hey, I'm flying Diego to L.A. I need you to pick him up. You have X amount of hours to complete his medicals and put him back on a plane. Uh, we literally picked him up at LAX at like 8 a.m., went to do a full run of medicals like all over L.A. and got him on that 4 p.m. flight out of LAX to the East Coast. But he he was, his eyes were dilated. Like he couldn't see. Like it was a mess, right? So we get out to New Jersey the next day. And his hair was a little bit longer. We're like, oh, okay, we'll just go find a barbershop somewhere. And went in, and the first thing the guy does is he's like, hey, how do you want it cut? And he's like, oh, you know, just take a little bit off. And he just literally grabs probably about four or five inches. And, just goes, and Diego just looked at me like he was like, dude, I'm going to punch this guy in the face right now. And he walked out. <laughs> and so that, that haircut was not his usual length. This is kind of, you know, a little bit longer, but this is usually the length that he goes with. For, for oh, I love occasions. it. That is a great story. Yeah. So are, are we going to let it grow even more? Yeah. Wow. How long? Oh, so I, I think the same. I think the same. So, lo vas a, dijo que lo vas a dejar crecer largo o lo vas a dejar Oh, no. Yo creo, que, yo creo que ahí ya es el límite. Ahora está nada más de como ya arreglándolo poco a poco. <laughs> yeah, he said, he said that I think this is the limit. You know, maybe do a couple trims here and there, but I think that's, yeah, okay. that's, that's as far as it's going to go. Um, as far as the fight is concerned, Beautiful performance. The the uppercuts in particular were were incredible and on point. Did you believe going into the fight that you'd be able to 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 stop him so so early? 
so, dijo que tu performance era increíble, que los outputs estaban genial y ¿Tú pensaste que iba a salir así ese resultado? Yo creo que, bueno, sí pensaba porque nosotros trabajamos muy duro pues, para esta pelea, ¿no? Yo tenía un plan bien específico, sabíamos que podíamos a tocar a Sodic. Este, si, creo que nosotros somos una, somos un, yo, mi coach y mis compañeros trabajamos de una manera diferente, ¿no? Yo creo que aprovechamos una una oportunidad que vimos en el juego de Sodic, ¿no? Si tú das cuenta, casi todas las peleas de Sodic lo alcanza a tocar, pero no lo alcanza a terminar. Entonces, mi objetivo fue este, tocarlo para después terminarlo, ¿no? Y así fue. Yeah, I think they all believed, you know, that, that this was going to be the result. I mean, for him, him and his team are, are very different. They work very hard. Uh, you know, his, his training partners are all a part of that. I think when looking at the fight, they knew that, you know, you could touch Sodic, Uh, but not very many people have finished him, you know, and I think that was the goal uh, for him. And, um, you know, obviously the results went the way that they did. And I think that's a testament to their hard work. Right after the win, you jumped over the cage and you had a, a pretty long conversation with Dana White. What did you say to him? Después de la pelea, dices a Dana y está preguntando qué le dijiste. I'm jump the cage. I talked to Dana the Dana. I'm going to be a champion one day. Uh, take me my rematch the Move Side Live in the International Fight Week. After this, I'm going to win Move Side Live, go to Spain. Wow. <laughs> And what did he say to you? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you notice that Mark Zuckerberg was sitting right next to him? Viste al Zuckerberg que estaba sentado cerca de él? Es, es chistoso, yo vi muchos comentarios de las personas diciendo que lo ignoré, ¿no? Pero no, la verdad es que pues, la adrenalina estaba tan, tan, tan arriba y, y tenía, pues, este, ¿cómo te puedes decir? Tenía, tenía tan pensado lo que yo quería hacer, que era ganar mi pelea, hablar con Dana y, y hacer con que él me entendiera, ¿no? O sea, porque to, estoy mejorando mi inglés, pero yo quisiera que él entendiera claramente mis palabras, ¿no? Entonces yo estaba tan concentrado sí. en... en <risa> En, en que Dana me entendiera que acabé este, olvidando que estaba Mark y Zuckerberg al lado de Dana. No, no, no es que lo hice de, de para malo. ignorarlo, pero estaba muy concentrado en lo que yo quería decir a Dana. ¿no? Hasta entonces que cuando termino de hablar con él, voy directo pues, bueno, a lo que toco otra vez. Él dijo que, you know, for him, he had it in his mind exactly how he wanted to play that moment. He says, like, man, I, I see a lot of people that said, like, I ignored Zuck and no, I just, I had it in my head that I wanted Dana, he's been practicing his English, and I wanted Dana to understand me 100%, the plan, the vision that I have. And, uh, it, it wasn't in a way to be disrespectful, but I just, you know, win the fight, go talk to Dana, and then go back to the octagon. So no disrespect to Zucker. Of course. Uh, do you believe that they will give you Evloev next? ¿Tú piensas que te van a dar Evloev otra vez? Pues espero, espero que sí, es la pelea que quiero, es la pelea que busco, yo he platicado con, con mi manager, pues es la pelea que queremos, que nos interesa, y pues bueno, hoy en la mañana, yo pedí pelear con él en la Internacional Fight Week, y, y justo hoy en la mañana vi que subió un Twitter que está listo para pelear en la Internacional Fight Week, ¿no? entonces yo creo que las cosas se están acomodando, si él quiere pelear en esta fecha, yo quiero pelear con él, pues aquí estamos, ¿no? yo creo que él no puede decir que nadie en la división no quiere pelear con él, pues yo estoy aquí para pelear con él. Uh, he said that he spoke to Jason this morning and, and, you know, put out there that he would love to rematch and that's the fight that he wants. Uh, he also saw that, you know, you've all put out there that he's ready to fight. And, you know, Diego wants to, he wants that fight. That's the fight to make. And, you know, he's, you know, he can say all he wants, but, oh, hey, you know, guys don't want to fight him. He's like, no, but I'll, I'll fight him. I'm here. I'm, I'm here to scrap. Okay. So ab above anything out there, that's the one that you want the most. The, the, the next one for you, you want it to be Movsar, right? That's number one for you? Esa es la pelea. Más de que cualquier otra, esa es la pelea que tú quieres ahorita en este momento. Sí, definitivamente. Definitivamente porque Movsar ahorita es el número cinco de ranking, pues sería la pelea que básicamente me pondría en la línea por el título. Yeah, that's definitely the fight that we want. Um, you know, it's, it's right there. It's, he's number five, so... Beating him puts him right there in the in the title contention, and that's what we want. I'm just curious. Um, we also saw Max Holloway have a great win, and it seems like they might try to do Max versus Ilya as a title fight in your weight class. Who do you think wins that fight, Max or Ilya? 
uh, viste que Max, obvio, que tuvo la performance que, que tuvo el sábado, uh, hay, hay pláticas de que él va a pelear contra Ilya. ¿Cómo tú ves esa pelea en tu división? No, pues es una pelea muy interesante para la división, ¿no? Pues nosotros ya hemos tenido años este, mirando a, a Holloway pelear y sabemos cómo él puede manejar la presión de todos los peleadores, ¿no? Pues mira, no, mira lo que hizo con Justin Gates, que es un peleador de la categoría de arriba, ¿no? Este, pero también vimos a Tupuria este, a tener muy buenos resultados en sus peleas, ¿no? Y pues también mira lo que hizo con Volkanovski, cosa que nadie lo había hecho, ¿no? Entonces es una pelea muy, muy interesante para la división, ¿no? Es una pelea muy, muy interesante para la división. Este que yo pues, estoy emocionado para verla. Yeah, I think this is a really interesting fight. Obviously, you know, watching Max do what he does and putting that pressure on people, I think he, he thinks it could be a really interesting fight. And, you know, seeing what Ilya did to Volkanovski, I mean, nobody's done that to him. So just I think it's a really good fight, an interesting matchup, and excited to see it. Okay, fair enough. And um, Fabiano, the, the UFC translator, yeah. he, he put out that you uh, asked him before the post-fight interview To, to, that he would do that you would do one question in, in Portuguese, one in Spanish, one in English. And then, and then he asked what order and you said freestyle. Is that true? And if so, why, why was that important for you? Dijo que, pues obvio, de, de la plática que tuviste con Fabiano, pero ¿por qué era importante pues, tomar esa decisión? Hacerlo uno en inglés, uno en portugués, uno en español. Um, ¿por, ¿Por qué era importante hacer eso? Pues yo creo que, bueno, cuando yo llegué a UFC, pues yo hablaba cero inglés, ¿no? Hablaba cero inglés y, y pues yo me acuerdo que la primera, la primera semana de pelea, pues se traté de hacer un poco en español, que es el país donde vivo. Bueno, es el idioma que más hablo hoy en día, que, porque vivo en México. Y en portugués, pues para interactuar con el público de Brasil, ¿no? En esta pelea en especial, pues yo hablé con Fabiano, me preguntó si... Me acuerdo que cuando entró me preguntó, ¿quieres este, hacerla en español o portugués? Yo decía, no, este... ¿Te acuerdas que yo dije que iba a ganar rápido la pelea para que me hiciera tres preguntas? Entonces yo quiero que me haga una en portugués, una en español, una en inglés, no importa el orden. Este, para mí está bien. Y pues para mí es importante pues, para interagir más con el público. ¿no? Ahorita he ganado bastantes seguidores acá en Estados Unidos también. En México tengo muchos seguidores, en, en Brasil también. Entonces yo creo que hablar los dos idiomas que son más importantes en el mundo, más hablados en el mundo, que es el español y, y el inglés, pues me va a ayudar y me va a presentar para grandes cosas, ¿no? I think, you know, for, for him being in that first fight week, he really didn't speak any English, right? So, uh, you know, he was really trying to, to get it out that first week and now you know, he's been practicing his English and, and really just to connect with the, the three different countries that he has connections to, right? He's got a big fall in Brazil, You know, he lives in he lives in Mexico, so he speaks Spanish, and, and I think he just feels the importance of speaking the three and connecting with as many fans and, and people as he can. I love it. Well, uh, you continue to impress, Diego. It's a lot of fun to see you climb the mountain, so to speak. Well done, uh, parabéns, uh, felici, <laughs> felicidad, Dades. felicidades, Dades. and congratulations to you on an incredible win once again. And uh, I, I hope to see you soon again and uh, to see you continue to climb because uh, you're a very fun fighter to watch. So thank you so much to you and to Jacob for the time. Appreciate it very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Bro. Thank you. Thank you for the space for the, my, my conversation for you. Yeah. See you soon. Okay. Thank you. There he is, uh, Diego Lopez and uh, his uh, interpreter, Jacob, joining us. Appreciate them. Uh, stopping by, and uh, yeah, that is that is definitely a name among many that emerged from Saturday that it is going to continue to be fun to see them uh, climb the mountain. The next big one, of course, is that June 29th card, so we'll see now how they build. I, I feel like that's 300 level. I mean, I th honestly, I think it's going to be bigger than 300. I think, I think uh, the return of Conor McGregor is going to be a bigger pay-per-view than whatever 300 did, and uh, as of When we started the show, something might have come out while we uh, we started, but as of uh, earlier this morning, there is no word. Sometimes they'll give it to SBJ or some other source as to how it did, but I'm very curious to see that number, and whatever that number is, I think that the Connor fight does, does more, does a bigger number. Um, in a moment, we are going to be joined by the one and only Aljamain Sterling, who had a big win 
on Saturday. I'm looking here. Uh, I guess they announced the uh, the five on five for the uh, Queensberry Matchroom card on June first. June first going to be a crazy day in combat sports because we've got that event, the Arter Better Biev versus. What is this with uh, with Deontay Wilder? Deontay Wilder leading the charge for Matchroom. That's a crazy thing. Um, there was a press conference earlier today in London to announce this five on five, this Queensberry versus Matchroom uh, card. Headlined by Arter Betterbia versus Dimitri Bivol. So on that same day, we're getting that card. We're getting Nate Diaz versus Jorge Masvidal. And we are getting UFC 302. What? June 1st is nuts. Yeah. Um, and at 4 o'clock, we're going to be joined in studio by... Our good friend, Jorge Masvidal. Um, while we're waiting for Aljamain Sterling, uh, no UFC this weekend. There is a huge boxing event going down in Brooklyn. I will be working for DAZN for that one and very uh, thankful and grateful to be able to do so. That's the Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia card. More on that throughout the week as well. But do want to let you know that on April 19th, that's Friday, the PFL is back. In Chicago, with welterweights and featherweights taking center stage. In the main event, it's former Bellator welterweight champion Andre Koreshkov taking on knockout artist Magomed Umalatov. 2022 PFL world champion Brendan Lochnane, the pride of Manchester, is back. And he is going up against former Bellator fighter, current SBG fighter, Pedro Carvalho. So it's fun to see these uh, Bellator fighters continue to make their debut in the PFL. Uh, that is this Friday, April 19th at 10 p.m. Eastern on ESPN and ESPN Plus. That is the return of the PFL. So that's a Friday card from the PFL and a Saturday massive boxing event. That's the Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia card. And that is on DAZN pay-per-view. That is on April 20th at Barclays Center. More on that as we continue. But great to have uh, the man who made his featherweight debut on Saturday. Successful return to the Octagon. His first fight at 145. His first win at 145. He is the former bantamweight champion, Aljamain Sterling, a.k.a. the Funk Master, who had a very dominant win over Calvin Cater. He's kind enough to join us right now. Whoa, was that an earthquake? That looked like an earthquake, like the one we had in New York. Everything shook. No, no earthquake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for doing this, Aljo. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. So uh, how do we feel? How do we feel about what we just accomplished? There was so much talk about your future after what happened in August. You take some time, you move up, massive card, big opportunity. Uh, I thought it was really cool that the UFC put you on the card. You know, that felt like a vote of confidence. How do you feel about being a part of this whole week and then the body of work on Saturday? Well, I felt happy to be a part of everything. It was, it was a really good weekend, you know? Good week, good um, experience with the fans and everything. It was a little different because I stayed at my house the whole time. And I think that was a little bit different from the the typical fight week where we stay at the hotel. So then I, I kind of get into a fist fight and then I drive right back huh. to my house. <laughs> <laughs> the same night and I ended up going out. So it was kind of weird in, in that regards. But the whole experience, the card, the buildup, the lead up, everything, the the emotion, the anxiety that I had, um, it was just a lot to take in. And thankfully, um, things worked out. We did we did some good homework and uh, it showed on the night. Okay, uh, two follow-ups to that. Number one, is that the first time you've ever <clears throat> stayed at home and fought and then gone back home, like even uh, East Coast or whatever? Have you never done that before? Never done that before. Okay. Uh, so that's obviously unique. And then the anxiety, the emotion, all that. More than even title fights? Yeah. You know what it is? It's, I Like 35, I, I know what I was already capable of, and I knew I could compete. This was like the big unknown. I, I didn't know if I was really big enough. Um, a new challenger, a dangerous guy. Uh, I mean, you look at some of the guys in the highlight reels of, of Calvin Cater and you see what he's done. Um, I mean, even with the Max Holloway fight, he did some good stuff in that fight, although it was pretty much as one-sided as it can get in a stand-up affair. But he did some good stuff in that, some good stuff against Giga Chikadze, Josh Emmett, uh, Dan Ige. He's fought a lot of good guys 
Andre Feely, Shane Burgos. So there was <laughs> there's a lot of uh, concern for my health going into this fight. <laughs> I was like. I don't know, man. If I can't get the takedown, this might be a rough night in the office, and I'll probably be taking a trip to the hospital. What did you do to uh, to bulk up? Like, what what was the? Because you and usually you're so focused on cutting. Here, you had to get up a little bit, right? Um, you didn't have to cut as much. You definitely look bigger out there. Did you have to transform your body? Was that difficult? No, I, I didn't do anything. I my my walk around weight is the same exact walk around weight for one thirty five. Wow. Uh, I, I lifted a little bit more. Um, but I told the PI team that I didn't want to get bigger. I was like, my weight's already good in the sense of what everyone else was walking around at. And um, based on all the stats that they, they showed me for the average weight of the typical UFC fighter at the featherweight division, I was like, okay, well, clearly I don't need to put on weight. I just need to up my numbers in some of these speed power departments and, and things like that. And that's what we worked on. Okay. Um I was just wondering, like, when I saw you in those, um, you know, before the press conference, they took the photos with all the other champions, former champions, current champions, and all that. Did you, did you, like, what, what did that feel like for you? Did you take pride in that? Like, you're, you're among the greats here, and I know that at times maybe you haven't felt the love, but, like, to be a part of those, you know, legends and, and to be sort of showered with praise and recognized like that, did you allow yourself to enjoy everything while you're also preparing for the fight? Oh, 100%. I thought that was probably one of the cooler things. Um, I had uh, Ray Longo take a picture of everybody together as well while they were taking that that photo. Um, it's just a historic event. There's, it's never been done before to have that many champs and former champs on a card at the same time in the same building. Um, so to be a part of that, I thought it was pretty cool, unique. And I was hoping, you know, to, to do my best to, to be one of those champs, those former champs to win on that historic night and uh thankfully you know just i'm just very happy that everything worked out but that that was a surreal thing to see just look around like man there's a lot of badasses in this room right now and uh to to have my name thrown in with that hat uh i think there was a lot to be said about that and whether or not people liked my championship reign or not um you know again uh, not every fight is going to be a, a finish and sometimes it's just the way it goes. A close fight is uh, it's just exactly that. It's a close fight. Uh, how would you say your confidence level was going into this? Because not only are you moving into the great unknown, a new weight class, but you are coming off the, the, the loss to O'Malley, and it had been so long since you suffered a loss. And so how are you feeling about yourself going into the fight? I felt good. The only thing I was trying to figure out was, can I still compete with these guys? And um, if I could compete at 145. Like at 35, I know I could compete. Yeah, I'm one of the bigger guys at that weight class, but I've always made the weight, especially if you gave me the time to do it, I can make the weight. Um, I wasn't always this big. I got bigger as the years went on. I think it was my Pedro Munoz fight where I really started to notice the change in my weight. And uh, in between camps, where I was like, man, this weight cut is not as easy as it used to be. Or I mean, it was never easy, but not as much of a breeze to get kind of get through it, if that makes sense, to kind of put it in some kind of perspective. Um, so confidence level, I, I think I was pretty good until I got to the back room fight day in the back room is when I really started to second guess a lot of everything. I was just like having doubt of like, man, if this doesn't go well, I don't know where I go from here. Do I continue to keep fighting or do I just call it quits kind of a thing? Um, and it, those are real thoughts I had. A, Cause I was like, at the end of the day, I'm not just trying to just collect the check. There's so many guys that stick around just to do that. I, I, I respect them. But I'm I'm here to be number one, man. I'm not I'm not here to just be second fiddle unless I'm like unless it's to like a really good teammate or something and I knew that my shot was coming. That's a completely different argument, right? It's just a completely different case. But if it's just like I'm just gonna be in the pact, I made enough money. I think I've done enough with my career where I'm like, all right, I it's probably time to find a new job. That's kind of the way I look at things. And you know, if you're not first, you're kind of last. Well, so you you really think if you wouldn't have won on Saturday, you might have walked away? It depends on how it would have happened. I, I think if I had got my ass completely kicked by Calvin Cater, I was probably done. Wow! And uh, no one no one knew about that. I, I didn't I didn't share those sentiments with anybody. Um, even your fiance. It's just one of those internal. Even my fiance. Even it's just one of those things. I just don't really. 
I mean, I, I mentioned to her, like, well, if I can't beat him, I don't know. I, but I didn't really go into detail what that actually meant. It's just kind of just said it like, right. eh, we'll see what happens. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, that's kind of the way I kind of kept it with everybody. And my my internal thoughts were, hey, this guy is good, but if I'm claiming to be who I think I am and who I want to be, man, I, I feel like I should be able to beat a guy like this. And if I can't, then how am I ever going to expect to beat a guy who's sitting on top of the throne right now? I was curious about the weight cut because sometimes we see guys like when you add the 10 pounds, it still ends up being tough because your body is just like so used to like, oh, yeah, in the past it was those extra 10 pounds. But now you're like, OK, I can maybe take my foot off the gas. I don't have to diet as much, et cetera, et cetera. Was it was it, you know, a breeze or was it actually still tough because it's just never a normal thing to cut weight? It was definitely still tough. I was, I think Saturday I was 163. Wow. Um, so I still had to cut a pretty good amount of weight. It's it's not easy, man. I'm a I'm a big I'm a big guy in general. Not I'm not saying I'm like I'm a huge human being. I'm five foot seven, but I'm very lean. I don't carry a lot of body fat on me. So for me to lose the weight is always tough. I think if people watch my vlog on my my YouTube channel, they will see that I still struggled a little bit. Um, I cut two pounds the day of the fight. I'm uh, not the day the day before the fight, which was Friday. So Friday, the day of the weigh-ins, I cut two pounds. And the day before, I cut about uh, three. So it, it wasn't too bad, but it was definitely still challenging, still hard. And I was still feeling it. And I was actually surprised. I thought I was going to be able to get through that a little bit easier. But there was parts in that where I was just like, I'm just overcutting weight. Like this, this, this is so many other things I would rather be doing right now. And then I'm like, okay, think about the end goal. The end goal, we win this fight. We get paid. We get well. We get paid regardless. But we win this fight. We get paid double time, and we win this fight. We get ourselves an opportunity to possibly put our name back in the conversation for a title again. So it's all about perspective. You, know, what is your why? Um, and I, I keep it real, man. I, I don't like so, some of these guys. They try to make it like a show, pretending like oh, I'm so bulletproof this and like yeah, we we all have these thoughts that go through our heads. And it's just like the heck am I still doing here? I got over. I got a couple million in the bank. Why am I still doing this? You know what I mean? So these thoughts happen. They're they're normal. It's but I love competing. And I think that's what drives me to want to keep going and um trying to achieve um bigger and greater things. I, I thought it was somewhat ironic that it felt like you were getting cheered and loved. And now that you're not champion, it felt like the fans now are are showing you respect and love. Did you notice that as well? And and how do you feel about that? Yeah, I, I noticed it. I, I was kind of indifferent because I'm just like, I'm like, this is cool, but you guys hated me when I was a champion. Yeah. I'm just so confused. It, it, it's, I get it. I mean, I got knee in the head. People thought I was acting. Wasn't acting. The shit actually hurt. I was really fucked up. Um, I, I right the wrong. I'm still getting booed for winning a close fight during during a U Russia Ukraine war on American soil by Americans. And I'm just like, I don't even understand. I'm like, I, I am I in America or am I in Russia right yeah. now where I'm getting booed by a fight with Piotr Jan? Um, the TJ Dill fight was a little weird when Henry Cejudo, somehow he got more booze, more cheers than I did, which was very telling. And of course, the O'Malley fight, he's more of a fan favorite, so I get that one. But um, it was cool to kind of get back to what it used to be when I fought San Hagen, some of the other guys, uh, I think the fans appreciated me a little bit more. And I think this is why, you know, I don't, I'm not saying this to to slight the fans at all, but I, this is why a lot of the foreign fighters, you don't see this type of stuff. When when they go overseas and they they fight, their whole country is behind them. You know, it's always nice to see that. And I, I do wish we had a little bit more of that, um, even if you don't quite like the fight style. I just think they don't like the fight style. They still support their own. And that's just the way that they do things in other countries. Americans, we just we just don't give a shit, I guess. I don't know. When did you start to feel like, all right, I'm the man, I'm going to dominate this guy? Because you said you were a little, you know, there were some thoughts in the locker room. Will I be big enough, et cetera? But clearly that wasn't an issue, and clearly you were very big and strong enough uh, to beat him and dominate him. How early into the fight did you start to feel like, all right, I'm, I'm good. This is going to be okay. I think after the first round, I started to I started to kind of get into that groove. I was like, okay, maybe he's just kind of rusty from his layoff. I was like, don't get cocky. Don't get, um, don't drift off with your focus. You still got to have tunnel vision. Still got to be dialed in. Um, and don't let him get back into the fight. And then I think after that first round, 
I kind of had the confidence like, oh, shit, I actually do belong here. This is where I should have been the entire time. And the speed difference was apparent. The strength felt apparent. Um, the height was non-existent. Like, the height difference was non-existent. He had a one-inch reach advantage over me. That was non-existent. Uh, I think I used my reach pretty well. More effectively, I, I mean, I outstruck him on the feet. And I, I just, you know, like I said, this is a guy I was really scared about. You know, and to go out there and do what I did, I think it, it shows a lot. And it wasn't just like I eat the win. I, I dominated from beginning to end. And I, I I get it wasn't the craziest ground and pound, but it takes two to tango. If he's not trying to give a position so he doesn't get finished, what am I supposed to do? I mean, Max Holloway couldn't even put him away for crying out loud. And we saw how that fight was, right? So with that said, I, I mean, I was pretty bummed about it until I went back and I watched it. And I was actually very pleasantly surprised with the performance, and I was actually really proud of what I was able to do. So when you say bum, what were you bummed about initially? I get, I just thought it wasn't enough. I was like, man, that I was like, I felt like shit. Not, I didn't feel like shit. I was like, I felt like that might have looked like shit. Mm. And I'm in my head, I'm like, I didn't know if I was tweaking or not. I was like, I, I'm either tweaking or that that was a really crappy performance. And then I'm just thinking, you know, I started like tearing up a little bit in the back. So I was like, man, if I how am I supposed to beat a guy like Ilya, a guy like Volk, if I'm going to perform like that? You know, you know, I'm talking about fighting for a belt. I know I need to be able to do a little bit more than that because that's not that. That mean maybe that wins. Maybe it's enough to to hang in there. But is that enough to 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 beat those guys? I, I don't know. I I really was questioning that because again, I'm not looking to just be in the middle of the pack. I I, I want to know that I have a clear a clear path. And I want to know during that path, yeah, I'm going to have some opposition, but uh, it's winnable. You know, that's something to look forward to versus like, you you know, you have no shot. And if you have no shot, you're just like, well, what the heck am I doing? Mm. You know what I mean? So it's it's one of those kind of things. And uh, when I got back to watch it and I talked to Zuckerberg in the back a little bit, <laughs> he was like, bro, what are you talking about? He's like, dude, that was as dominant as it can get from beginning to end. And I went back and I watched it and. I gotta send Zuckerberg a message, but like you were right. Um, I'm an idiot for <laughs> for the way I was uh kind of carrying myself afterwards. If I knew it was like that, you know, I would have been a little bit more excited when Bruce an announced my name. But um two checks is always better than one. So I'm happy about that. Was there any part of you that felt like you shouldn't take risks or couldn't take risk or couldn't go into another gear because you just wanted the win to get your mojo back, to get your confidence fully back? Nah, I, I was trying. The guy, I had him in side control. He had chest body lock on me. And then when I did pass, he had my arms tied. It was doing like a, almost a weird modified buggy, buggy choke without actually trying to choke me. So I couldn't do anything with my arms. And it was like one of those things where, well, if I stand up and pick him up and just lose the position altogether, now I'm like wasting energy. I'm picking up a big, pretty big dude for no reason. I'm not getting anything out of it. I'm giving him back the position that he wants where he's going to be on his feet. So there were so many things. It's just like the Kayla Harrison fight. Thankfully, she had Holly Holm make a bunch of mistakes for her. You know, with all credit to Kayla, of course, like she did what she had to do. But Holly put herself in some bad positions that kind of gift wrapped opportunities, right? And that's what it is. It's, it's a fight. I'm not, I'm not knocking Holly. I'm not knocking Kayla. I'm comparing the opportunities between opponents. Like if one person presents the opportunity, you take advantage of it. If if I was there and I had a clear cut path to just posture up and throw punches, and I didn't, boo the hell out of me, boo me out of the stadium, boo me out of Las Vegas, back to New York. <laughs> you know what I mean? But th there weren't any real opportunities like that. And I went back and I watched the fight like three times now. So I I I, I get the frustration from the fans because the fights were all so good. But Cater did what he had to do to shut me down to keep him in the fight and. I did what I had to do to dominate the fight. And I think when you look at it like that, then it's kind of like, well, you kind of got to give me a little slack. Come mm -hmm. on, guys. Give me a little slack. How do you feel I about it? I tried. Yes. Try it. it. It looked to me like you were. And I thought it was just what you needed. You get your mojo back. I, and maybe you didn't feel that way, but I was like, okay, get back on track. First fight of 45, tough guy. How do you feel about the fact that you were the only one to not get a post-fight interview? I don't, I don't... <laughs> I don't want to say I was upset, but then when I thought about it, I was like, well, that kind of does suck a little bit. <laughs> it, definitely, it, definitely, it definitely did suck a little bit, I guess. Um, I guess, you know, former champion, defended the belt three times, no interview. It's kind of sad. <laughs> so sometimes um, it's a timing thing. So I don't know. Like, is people at home will be like, you didn't get an interview. But, you know, they're, they're on TV, 
and they have to get to 10 o'clock with the pay-per-view. So yeah. I don't know the reason. I don't know if it was on purpose. Obviously, you know, there, who knows? I, I was wondering if you asked someone, hey, why didn't I? Was it because, you know, it went too long? They're worried about the timing? Is it because they were unhappy with the fight? You never know. So I was wondering if you inquired. No, nah, I thought it was. I thought we would have had enough time because Kayla got to finish. Yeah. So I thought they would have used the extra minutes and then we would have had to finish. But maybe, I don't know, maybe it was just a timing thing. And I guess it is what it is. It would have been cool, you know. But, you know, I think I'm probably the first one to get like a power bomb slash power driver in the octagon. So I was happy about that. That was pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> and even after that, I, I tried to go for the ground and pound finish. I saw Calvin, when, like when I slammed him, he like looked up. Like deer in headlights, like shock. Like, did you just slam me like that? Like, yeah. what the hell? Like, I, he looked at me with like, yo, that was like fucked up. And then uh, I just made eye contact. I was like, yo, sorry, bros, either you or me. And I just <laughs> start, I started going off with the hammer fist. And I'm like, damn, I thought I was going to be able to possibly get him because I was like, maybe he was, maybe he hit his head in a weird way where he was a little bit rocked. I don't know. Um, but again, I was like, the opportunity presented itself and I went for damage. You know, I, I, don't, I don't, I've never been one to really just, get a takedown and just hold the position and do absolutely nothing. I always try to transition to the back or transition to something. Um, you know, it's just, it was just really hard for me to do. I, again, if I could have done more, I would have, uh, I had no issue risking those type of positions. And, uh, yeah, it, I mean, it is what it is. I, I think I had a pretty damn good performance and I saw Mozart's tweet to me, Evloev <clears throat> saying, welcome to 145, but also saying he doesn't want to hear nobody calling him a boring fighter ever again. And I was like, I don't know if that's supposed to be a compliment. You're, you're almost like backhanding both of us. <laughs> but uh, I still like to think my fights are a little bit better than his, respectfully. But um, whatever. Well, I have to say, uh, the first name that I said, even before all of this, was I'd love to see you fight Movsar next. I think that fight makes a lot of sense. And I got a lot of shit from his fans. Why should he fight? He just fought number four. Why do you hate Movsar? This and that. I'm like, wait a second. This guy's a former champion. I know you're not ranked at 45. That's just because you haven't fought at 145. You're 100 percent one of the best fighters at 45, and I think that fight, given your 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 styles, both of you would be fascinating. Would you be open to that? Would you be into that? Well, I was gonna say I would actually rather the Ortega fight. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm gunning for I'm gunning for the belt, you know. So if there's a fight for me, you're gonna give me the option to pick. I'm gonna pick the highest ranked guy because if I could beat the highest ranked guy. I think it just removes all doubt altogether, you know? So it's not that that fight with Mozart wouldn't be fun. I think two grapplers, the way we grapple, there could be some very fun scrambles, especially with his Arnold Allen fight. There were some fun scrambles in there because Arnold tried to get out and tried to do something. It creates opportunities, right? And I think when you have a style like mine and his, it could make for a fun fight, this, the same way that Diego Lopez made for a fun fight. Um, but the Ortega fight is just as entertaining because of the grappling styles. I got the wrestling. He's got some good, solid striking. I think I got some decent striking. And uh, we're both, I think, pretty solid on the ground with jujitsu. And I think that makes for a great opportunity for a lot of good scrambles and a lot of good um, grappling changes for people who don't really understand grappling. I think that would be a cool fight for people to kind of engage in and, and see where the fight actually takes place because maybe it might take place standing up. For whatever it's worth, I don't know if you saw Dana's post-fight press conference, but I thought he was complimentary of your performance in the fight. Um, I'm wondering if you saw that. I heard people telling me, man, and I, I thought that was, for once, really nice of him. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, did I have to lose the belt just for people to just like, like, I don't know, just cut me a little slack. I'm not asking for much. I'm like, it, it, it's easier to be... I think you take more to go out of your way to be dismissive and rude to someone versus to just kind of, you know, just prop them up. I think it's just easier to do the other. Um, so I, when I heard that he made some good comments and whatnot, um, someone played me a clip and it said something like, you know, it's not easy to go up a weight class. Yeah. And it's like, I, I didn't expect him to say, oh, it was, he could have just been like, well, we all know how a Sterling fight goes. He could have easily said that. And then people would have just shit all over me again. But I thank him for that. You know, that was that was cool. That's all I've ever wanted for him to kind of at least make me somewhat of an ally because the fans are going to regurgitate whatever he says. And he knows that. We all know that. Um, and I don't even think he's, he's he was ever saying it maliciously, but I think he just speaks his truth. And 
however Dana feels at the time is however he feels at the time. And thankfully, at that moment, he was in a good move to to give out some type of slack and compliment. And uh, again, I, I I think he was spot on saying, I think for me to do that to a guy like Calvin, you know, to make Calvin look slow, who's been in some barn burner fights against some of the baddest guys. Come on, man. It's like, guys, how many strikes did he actually land? No. You, you know what I mean? This was a fight I was the most nervous about. And for me to go out there and do that, I think I think it says a lot. So um, I'll see what the UFC offers me next. Also, I do think it's worth noting, every fighter on the planet wanted to fight at UFC 300. The fact that they put you on this card, like, there's no way they don't like you. There's no way he doesn't like you. He could have easily said, nah, put him on Rio or put him somewhere on some Apex. Like, to me, that was all, when I heard that you were on the card, I was like, this is all blown out of proportion and I always feel like he's had a soft spot for you, truthfully. And I know, like, some of the yeah. comments. But, like, they if they don't like you, they're not putting you on 300. It's just as simple as that. And so <laughs> I felt like that was a yeah. huge photo confidence when they when they put you on this card. Um, can I ask you, uh, I, I know you made the joke during the weigh-in show about Chris and the eye pokes and whatnot. And then I saw you were asked about the new gloves. And my read on it was you've tried something and you were a little bit you were unsure if this was like a big enough change. Can I ask uh, you to elaborate on that? Like, cause they made a whole big presentation on Friday and I know some fighters at the PI got to play around with some prototype. What could you tell us about what you tried on? Um, I mean, the one we tried on, I don't know if they made any changes to that, but it, it wasn't really significantly different. At least I didn't really, it was like a little bit of a bend, but I don't know if that's going to be enough to, I mean, you you got to think when you relax your hands, your hands are naturally just like this, right? So with the regular gloves that we use now, they keep them. They're so stiff that they keep our hands like this, and it's not hard to keep them open and to close them is actually pretty. There's a lot of resistance to go here and make a fist in those stiff, rigid gloves that we use now. So we always have to break them in to kind of make it have that natural relaxation. So with these, it gives it a little bit of a, a curvature. Um, I don't I don't remember it because it was so long ago how much of a curvature it gave it, but I don't remember it being that significant. So if they made some alterations and I gave my feedback, and hopefully the, all the feedback they've gotten from all the fighters who did try them on, um, they made some more changes, and hopefully that is going to be something to give it a little bit more of a curve where for you to open your hand, like even when I open my hands now, I got to put a little work into that. I can feel my extensor muscles flexing, so. With that being said, hopefully the gloves are something similar where it's not super easy to, to do this and poke somebody in the eye. Mm -hmm. And when someone's going like this, it, the ref should right away, I don't care if you're at a distance, should be telling you to close your goddamn hands. It's a very simple thing. And now if you react and you open your hands and you swat, that's completely different, right? But when guys are open and they're like pawing at each other, I'm like, dude, you got to say something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I don't think it's... That complicated, but for some reason, as human beings, we tr we make things way more complicated than they need to be. To, I don't know if it's to make it sound like we're that much smarter than we actually are to, to other people, but yeah, I don't know. Can I just ask your opinion when you when you saw the last ten seconds between Max and Justin? What what, what, what are you thinking about that? What do you how do you feel about that two days later? I was like, Justin, go the other way. Yeah, turn around. <laughs> I was like, Justin, don't go to the center. Whatever you do, don't go to the center. No, but uh, man, that was insane. I, I, for, I thought Max was winning the fight. And for him to even say, F it, UFC 300, let's go. And to, to do that, that's a lot to risk with a guy who hits as hard as Gaethje. And for him to get the better of that exchange was very unexpected. I, I said in the, my breakdown that I just felt like Holloway would have the speed advantage, but the guy who hits like the truck is going to be Gaethje, and the volume was going to be on the advantage side of uh, Holloway. And when he got down, he he dipped, and he ripped the body a couple of times. I want to say it was two or three times, and he said, pop, 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 and then came with the overhand right. Right over Gaethje's guard. His hand was, both his hands were down. He was getting ready to throw clean right on the chin, and, man, that was as beautiful as an overhand right that you can land tight in the pocket like that, and... uh Unfortunately, Gaethje had to eat the eat that, and that's the game, man. That the pictures of that was just those are gonna be some legendary, iconic photos. Like I, I know what that feels like to kind of be that man face down. So that sucks. Um, and I, you know, hopefully Gaethje's okay now. But uh, and I'm fans of both of those guys. But that was that was badass. Now hopefully, Max, stay your ass at 155. Yeah. <laughs> we don't 
We don't want you back down here. <laughs> Do you think he beats Ilya? I think it's a very compelling fight. I think Max's footwork is what makes him a tricky opponent. Um, Styles make fights. Max has got a hell of a chin. Ilya can crack. Uh, but the thing is, Ilya doesn't... Ilya just walks you down, right? And this is just my assessment. He walks you down so he gets you close enough to the cage and then he lets go of that combination and he puts guys out. It's whether or not he can do that to Max and will Max sit there and try to exchange with him against the cage where Ilya does his best work. And I think that's the that's the interesting dynamic of that fight to kind of see which way he's going to go. I think it's a very compelling fight, man. I I, I don't know. I, I It's hard for me to say because I think if Ilya's smart, if the striking doesn't work out, he goes and takes Max Holloway down, uses that elite level grappling, and that could be the difference in the fight. How soon do you want to return? I think September, October would be cool. Okay. But it really it really depends the matchups that are next for the UFC to make and when Ilya is going to be able to fight and defend his belt against either Volk, if Volk is going to take more time, or if it's going to be against Max at 145 and kind of just figure it out. Or is it going to be against Ortega? You know, so there's a lot of possibilities. Because if I'm Max, it's kind of like, well, I just beat the next guy at 155. Why am I going to cut back that extra weight when I kind of skipped the line and I showed that I should be the next guy? A lot of guys want to see Max fight, right? I can see him be next after Dustin. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just curious, before I let you go, I saw you and others, I think it was on uh, Wednesday, take photos with the, the NBA trophy, the Larry O'Brien. Oh, yeah. Uh, a, how <laughs> cool was that? How heavy is it? And B, what was that for? Was that just a promotional thing for ESPN and ABC? Yeah, I don't know what they were actually promoting, but I thought it was pretty cool. Um, that trophy was heavy as hell. I think it was, it was 30 pounds. Wow. But um, we did some cool promo stuff. They had me do something, um, kind of add some of my own little Funk Master twists on some stuff, and then we had some fun with it. And it was easier because I, I wasn't cutting as much weight where typically on that Wednesday I'd be exhausted. And I would not want to do any of that. But uh, it was a cool, very unique experience. I got to share my my NBA dreams that once upon a time I thought I was going to be in the NBA. Uh, so this was close enough. It looked good um, on you. You yeah. looked you look good with the trophy. Thank you, thank you. I was trying to take my Kobe Bryant um, picture, trying to do like a remake of that. Yeah. When he was like sitting down on a chair in the locker room. That was a cool shot. I thought for a second you were going to rock the fro for the fight as well, but clearly... That was just before. I, see, I, I wanted to, but I already bought the green hair and I committed to it. And I was like, I'm going back with the Riddler because everyone was like, oh, he dyed his hair green. So that's why he lost. I was like, F you. I lost because I made a stupid ass mistake. Um, and I I like the green. It, it kind of feels like the Riddler. So I want to go out and do that. So I got to do a couple of things for this fight. UFC 300. I got to make my second song and I got to walk out to. Oh, wow. I thought that was... A, the, I don't know if people in the arena realized that was actually my song. Wow. So it was a pretty cool That was cool you singing? That we had for. I, not me singing. Okay. Uh, that's just, say, I don't, uh, okay. Singing, you don't want to hear me sing. Um, the song is called Kill Shot, though. It's on all streaming platforms. Um, so we got to do those two things and <clears throat> obviously go up to 145 and do a couple other cool things. So I'm just, I'm grateful, man. This Life, life is crazy to see where I am now. 34 years young, and I still got a couple more good fights in the tank. Um, thankfully, those retirement talks are no longer valid, and uh, I could kind of, I don't say rest, but I could kind of breathe now that uh, I got the first one off to a right start, and I got to show the world that I can compete this weight class, and I can be very dominant this weight class as well. Can you now finally move on from August? Do you feel like that's like, a, now that you got to win, you, you can finally move on? I've been wanting to move on, but uh, people keep asking okay, me about okay, it. Right, and then, right. and then, no, no, not not okay. not you per se. But I'm just saying in general. People, and then when I give them a a valid explanation, I'm like, guys, I never lie to you, people, the fans. I don't lie to the fans. You know what I mean? I, I tell it straight how I feel. If I felt anything different, I just tell you straight how it is. And it's as if uh, people don't like hearing the truth. Like, yeah, like excuses are excuses. Like they all suck, no matter what. Doesn't mean it's not valid. Um, Again, I, I've said that multiple times, the better guy that night won. I just think the guy who fought last night, that's the guy that should have been in there in August. But it is what it is. Uh, I'm now chasing a new up, new opposition, new goals. And hopefully, hopefully, man, before it's all said and done, if I can become a two-divisional two divisional champion, my life is complete. Yeah. Well, that means complete, right? But then my athletic career is complete. 
Uh, love the background, by the way. The Von Erichs represented back there. I didn't know you were a, a Von Erich fan. Is that they uh, gave me um, an invite to the to their premiere? The movie, I got yeah. to meet a couple of them. Iron Claw, yeah. and then uh, that I think that's Sonic. It's very strategically yeah. placed over there. I like that. It's, <laughs> The uh, <laughs> well done, well done. Um, great stuff, Aljo. Very happy for you. Congratulations on a great win, a new chapter for you. Can't wait to see how it plays out. Appreciate you coming on as always. And and you said uh, your your recap is up on your YouTube channel now, Weekly Scraps. Um, we're actually going to do an episode today. Okay. All right. All right. For the weekend. Okay. So go check that out. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. All right. There he is, the Funk Master, Aljamain Sterling. Kind enough to join us. His podcast is called The Weekly Scraps. Go check it out. And uh, yeah, it's it's an amazing thing. Um, the uh, the amount of fighters that are now doing their own content. I was thinking about this recently. The amount of fighters that are now doing their own content. Like even from when we started, uh, three you know when we came back here three years ago. Um, it's amazing how how much that has evolved. How many you know it used to be just the the fighters who we're no longer fighting who are doing the media stuff who are retired. Now, so many of them have their platforms and that's why we're appreciative of uh, any time they come on and want to give their channels and platforms some love as well. Um, still to come, Jorge Masvidal in a few minutes time, joining us in studio to talk about his June 1st fight in LA, Inglewood to be exact at the Kia Forum against one Nate Diaz, a rematch of a fight that happened here in New York City at UFC 244 in November of 2019. Of course, this time it's a boxing match and it was announced on, I do believe, Thursday, maybe Friday that also competing on that card will be Chris Avila, the longtime friend and teammate and training partner of Nate Diaz against Anthony Pettis in a boxing match. Uh, the younger brother of one Ryan Garcia going up against the son of Fernando Vargas. So there's some familiar names on this card and it's a uh, June 1st on pay-per-view. So he is going to join us in studio. He was at the event. He's the original BMF title holder, so to speak. And uh, he retired around almost exactly a year ago um, today, April of 2023. And of course this will be his first fight back. So that is to come. I do want to tell you about our good friends over at BetterHelp. Uh, we love BetterHelp. They're a great part of the team and family, and they want to let you know that they are here to help you. So as you know, overtraining is a real thing. We all want to push ourselves to get stronger, faster, and more efficient, but that can lead to spending too much time in the gym and not enough time resting. To feel your best, you need to take breaks, and your social life isn't that different. Packing your calendar with one event after another feels like a great idea, but it can totally wipe you out, and leave you feeling exhausted and, frankly, pissed off at the world. BetterHelp Online Therapy can help you figure out what you need to feel your best, whether that's more time with friends or more time alone. And that's not always easy. I realize that uh, everyone has packed schedules and everyone has things to do, and it's hard to figure it all out. We all go through this. And when you put too much on the plate, you get a little overwhelmed. And so speaking to someone, talking it out, planning your life, being organized preparing for the week ahead, preparing for the day ahead. These are all very important things. And therapy can help you build more awareness of what you need and when. And over at BetterHelp, they afford, excuse me, they offer affordable online therapy with licensed professionals. Scheduling is convenient and finding a therapist suited to your style is a quick and easy process. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. You can visit betterhelp.com slash MMA hour today to get 10% off your first month. Again, that's BetterHelp. H E L P dot com slash MMA hour. Please support them because they support us and most importantly, support yourself. Now, our good friends over at DraftKings want to let you know that the NBA season is officially in the books. And now it is time for the real season. And how about your New York Knickerbockers with all the injuries, with all the trials, with all the tribulations? the number two seed in the Eastern Conference. And sure, there were people who said, nah, you better tank, you better lose. Don't win that last game. Don't get the 50 wins. Don't beat the Bulls. Get the three seed. Have that loser mentality like your Cleveland Cavaliers who tanked it against the Charlotte Hornets. Just throw the game. Nah, we don't do that. Not your Tom Thibodeau New York Knicks. And so I advise you right now to put all your life savings on the Knicks winning the chip. 
And over at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA, that is the place to be. From the play-in tournament all the way to the finals, DraftKings Sportsbook has you covered with same-game parlays, live betting, odds boosts, and so much more. In fact, our good friend New York Nick, uh, New York Nick, New York Rick, has put it all on the line for the Knicks to make it to the finals. Is that not right, New York Rick? Got them winning the East, baby. Why not the whole thing? Why, why couldn't you go uh, all the No, way? the West is going to crush whoever comes up. You think so? Absolutely. You really do? Yeah. Who's going to crush them? The Thunder? The Thunder. Wolves? What are you talking about? The, the Suns. The Suns, the Mavs, the Nuggets. It's, it's over. Who, right now, who's your pick? Right now, who yeah, wins the whole thing? I'm going out on a bit of a ledge here. I've got the Suns over the Bucks. Wow. Oh, Bucks? You think the Bucks turn it around? I think the Suns are more surprising for most people, but yeah, that's who, that's who I'm backing. Yeah, you know, Bucks, Giannis, not 100%. They haven't been gelling. I love this particular postseason because it is so wide open, right? I mean, I think you can make a strong case for like five teams right now. Not, GC? Eh. I'll You're, say this. Let me just say one more thing. Everybody loves the Celtics. I think they're frauds. No I Celtics. agree. I agree. They've always been frauds. Uh, who's your pick, GC? Yeah, the Hawks, man. Hawks, yeah. Yeah, Hawks for sure. They're, I mean, they're solid. Three seed, you know? Three seed in the playing tournament? Yeah, no, I just wanted to see if you were paying attention. Um, in any event. Plus 100,000. Is, <laughs> is that real? Crypto Joe just hit me with something because of my Celtics slander. That's Haw- fine. Hawks plus 100,000, but then when I'm like, yeah, I'm not really that into it, you're just like, what the heck, man? Why? Why, what, why what? aren't you into it? That's your team. Plus 100,000, man. Listen. They ain't winning enough. Lest you forget, last year playing Miami Heat went all the way to the finals. All right, I remember that when they lose. All right. Uh, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use code the MMA Hour. New customers bet five dollars and get two hundred in bonus bets instantly. That's code the MMA Hour only at DraftKings. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call one hundred Gambler or in West Virginia, visit www.100gambler.net. In New York, call eight seven seven eight Hope NY or text Hope NY four six seven that three six nine. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call eight eight eight. 789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please pay responsibly on behalf of Booty and Casino Resorts in Kansas. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. CDKNG.com slash bball for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. Yeah. All right. Still to come, Jorge Masvidal. But let me talk to the guys. Guys, let me talk to you. Um, Yo, let's talk, man. Is let's this, talk. Is this true? There's talking happening. Is this... Wow. Okay, is this true? Is there a winning streak right now for the Parlay Boys? Oh, you know. That's correct. Not only are we back, not only did we hit the Parlay Pals pick, we also hit the same game Parlay as well. We were double winners this week. I can't even remember the last time we lost. I feel like we didn't even sweat, did we? Like, I feel like just just easy work, light work. Yeah, actually, yeah, this was a fairly sweat-free Parlay. I guess Nickel Brundage under two and a half. I mean, that ended in the second round, but that wasn't. No. Nah. Yeah, whole, whole thing, pretty much easy. When's the last we should time have put you... the SGP and the Parley Pals. Yeah, uh, added the SP, SGP. No, nah, we did the we did the we did the separate SGP. So we were double winners this week. And Alex Pereira did it all in one foul swoop. I mean, just the left hook cashed everything. The under twenty Whoop. and a half minutes, the Alex Pereira winning, and the knockdown, all in one shot. So when's the last time you guys won two in a row? Oh, Lord knows. Who knows? Who cares? Yeah, I just want to know. Like, when was the last time we lost? That's yeah, another thing. That's yeah, what I'm talking I can't about. even remember the last time we lost. No, I, I, I love this. And uh, I love the fact that you guys stared the uh, the ultimatum. You stared the deadline in the face. And not only did you beat the deadline, you came Kicked back. The there were 10 seconds left on the clock. <laughs> yeah. We pointed to the ground yeah. and we knocked that's that shit out. That's essentially what you guys did. did. That's exactly Easy. what we did. We win the week before. Then we come in and not only do we hit one. So we, we already got past the ultimatum. That was Max Holloway winning the fight. And then we said, let's go to the center of the octagon. Not only are we going to do a parlay for 300, we're also going to do a same game parlay. Knock them both out. I mean, it's life's good. Amazing. Life's good. What about the rest? Also good. Also good. Uh, we go five and three on the singles. Have a really good week. I just have to say, after going back through everything, if you see Charles Oliveira misses and then also uh, parlay dies on that fight going to a decision, um, had that choke gotten locked up for him at the end of the fight instead of being up six units, which is great. I'm not going to complain about being up six units. I would have been up 15. Mm. Had that choke been sunk in, sunk in on Armin Sarukian, I would have been up 15 units. But alas, it's nice to get out of the uh, out of the cold streak, 
hit on a lot of dogs, Holloway, uh, Yeary. Felt good. Felt good. Up six units. Now we're chipping away on this 2024, and we look to the road back to being up uh, 100 units. I'm not the only one that hit the... We got big hitters. This was a uh, this was a big week for him. We can actually do the intro. This is a this is an intro worthy oh. big hitters week. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're back. All right, we start. Yasuo, uh, also known as Mo. I don't even know where to begin with this one. Uh, plus 297,142. Bo Nickel to win in round two. Armin Sarukian to win by decision. Max Holloway to win in round five. Zhang Wei Li and Alex Pereira by KO. All five. Gets them correct. $54.41 into $161,675.67. I mean, just insane. All five fights on the main card, he pretty much called to a T. Other than the Zhang fight, that's the only one that didn't have a method. All of them nailed it. Shout out to Mo. That's insane. Uh, we keep it rolling. Nico, Nico Official 16. He calls... Max Holloway to win in the last 30 seconds of the fifth round at 250 to 1. Turns $2 into 502. Another insane one. Dan Fernandez, plus 71,193. Turns a dollar into 720, but he goes Moicano by KO, Andrade by decision, plus 260, Pereira by KO, Sterling by decision, and Bo Nickel by submission, five up. Five down. A couple more crazy ones. Avenutolo. I don't really know how to pronounce it. Avenuto Low or Avenutolo 082. Shout out to Ant either way. Max Holloway to win in round five. And Max Holloway to win in the last 30 seconds of the fifth round. He turns $10 into over 700 A couple guys hit. I think the exact same parlay, 13 fights, got every single one of them right, plus 83,250. This one was from Swiss. The other one was from Aiden. I'm pretty sure it's the exact same parlay because it's almost identical odds, but it's 13 fights, all 13 on UFC 300. They got every single one right. Figueredo, Bobby Green, Andrade, Moicano, Diego Lopez, Kayla Harrison, Aljamain Sterling, Yuri Brahash, Bo Nickel, Max Holloway, Wiley Zhang, Alex Brera and Armin Sarukian, absolutely insane. And then a couple multiple shout-outs, a couple guys that had either fighter winning in the last 30 seconds of the fight. I can't believe how many of these I got. Both of them threw 10 down. Both of them turned it into $1,010. Shout-out to Loctopus Lines and Dizes. Yeah, shout-out to the Loctopus. And then lastly, uh, all these guys had Max Holloway to win in round five or Max Holloway to win in by KO in round five, massive odds on that, plus 5,000, plus 7,500. Uh, Jay Hive picks, Narco Cop, and Texas MMA 07. Don't know how you guys do it. Don't know how crazy. I, I, got, I went that crazy, and I just bet on Max Holloway. I couldn't have, imagine if I had Max Holloway in round five hitting the buzzer beater on the plus 5,000. So shout out to them, and shout out to all the big hitters. What a card. What a card. I knew we'd get a, a plus six figures. For UFC 300. Oh my gosh! Look at that. It's good to be a big hitter. You're a big, hitter. Be a big hitter. I was. I was. I was rooting for your uh, all violence. Ah, uh, died distance. quick. It's all right. Yeah. It's all right. I got it all back though. I landed. You know, I was hoping I was going to be able to watch it on the TV. The Masters Sunday at the Masters. I had a couple bets down there. Landed to to winning a couple more bets. I mean, we're we're rolling right now. You are rolling. Um, a friend of mine. Sometimes people, you know, it's a big card when people ask for your picks. Oh, I got. I had someone as that? the card was starting. Was yeah. just like, what are the picks? Give me a winner tonight. I'm just like, <sighs> worst way to ask for it's a game the worst. pick ever. Just it's like the worst. you're putting so much pressure on me by asking me that. Um, also, I've put my picks out in 19 million different places. Said them on 18 different broadcasts all throughout the week. So. During the pandemic, I used to get this all the time because everyone was looking for something to do. And uh, 
I would, I would, uh, it would just bring so much pressure. I don't want this. I don't bet. So I don't want, you know, I don't want someone else to, uh, to lose. And I don't want to feel the pressure when I have nothing invested. But for one friend, he asked me for every single winner, like every fight. I went 12 and one. Wow. What's yeah. the one you missed? Uh, Jim Miller. Ah, uh, yeah. 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 Frankie knew about old Bobby Green. Yeah. Thing. Oh yeah. That's right. Damn Always right. Through. I do. Oh, 12 and 1, not bad. I mean, the, one's quite good. the whole thing busted, like, was it the second fight or a third fight? But yeah, you just could have done a round robin or something and really made some some head. Yeah. Yeah, I was pretty proud of that. Um, in any event, uh, great stuff. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll check in one last time. Uh, but I do believe our in studio guest is here, and it's been a freaking long time since he joined us in studio. And so I'm very excited about this. He is returning to action on June 1st. In Inglewood, California. Is he here? Is Game Bread here? The legend, the original BMF title holder, the one and only Jorge Madvidal. How are you, my man? Good to see you. Thank hey. you so much. Please, have a seat. You've never been in this studio, right? You were in the old one when you talked about the... Uh, I didn't want him. Hey, man, you promised me cheeseburgers, pizza, Did all I? types of... Where, where's the food? What you, you can't be eating that. I can, of course I can. I'm on weight already, bro. I'm always on weight. Are way. you really? Yeah. How much you wear right now? Uh, probably like too sexy. Okay, that's right. You look fantastic. Thank you, my brother. It's so good to have you in studio. I'm training my ass off. Um, it's a long training camp, man. You know, the fight was supposed to take place at a certain date, and then it got pushed back, got pushed back. So I've just been training nonstop, you know, getting myself ready for this uh, for this fisticuff. This what, what was the original date? It's good to be here, man. Yeah, it's great to see you, my man. What was it? Um, we, were, we were targeting March, and March moved to April, now June. And and why? Um, why did it keep getting pushed? Different things, you know, a uh, little bit to do with the UFC and, and things like that. Uh, Nate Diaz as well, side. So I, I just, just the way it happens, the cookie crumbles. But it kind of worked out for me because I've just been training this whole time, like the fights tomorrow. Okay. Um, how do you feel about the fact that you guys are going head to head with the UFC pay per view? I've, obviously, I, I don't like it. You know, I never. Um, want to go against the UFC because that that is me that's yeah. my fan base but real fight fans are gonna you know enjoy both they're gonna be watching both and fucking have the will it be maybe on before back. so they don't have to like you know your boy Dustin's fighting uh -huh, for the belt yeah man I love Dustin I never want to go up against Dustin or anything you know he's another monster of the pay-per-view world but um it is what it is you know and anyways we're, we're, we got a lot of boxers on the card so we're really trying to go the boxing route you know um obviously I never want to go against the UFC Yeah, when it comes to things like that, you know? Is the UFC going to help promote this? Because they had to, like, they gave you permission, yeah, right? they to... gave me permission, um, and it's going to be on Fight Pass. You can purchase a fight on okay. Fight Pass, so um, they'll definitely be helping with that, dropping ads, and then everybody know. So it's definitely available through your Fight Pass, you know? Okay. Before the presser on uh, Friday, I want to ask you specifically about it, but before you did, like, a scrum. Yes. And uh, you seemed, like, pretty upset. In the yeah. scrum, you called them uh, Diva Diaz. Yeah. You said you were going to speak your truth. You were going to yeah. tell everyone. So so why is he, in your opinion, a diva? What's going on? You know, a lot of things, you know, I don't know if some of them might get into it, but let me see. Uh, okay, a quick one I'll throw at you um, in this great state. Where are we at? New York, right? This is New York State, great yeah. Great state where I got crowned. The That's Bay right. Champion. He was November like, 2019. And, and at one point, because Vegas was booked out, a lot of places were booked out, New York was a strong possibility. He's like, I won't fight if it's in New York. I just I won't fight. I'm like, the fuck. What's what's the what's the beef for it's fucking boxing? That was another right. man. You got your ass whooped. But I get it all right. Then another diva moment. He said he also wouldn't fight if the fight's in Miami. I'm not fighting if it's in Miami. Okay, cool. Well, last time I had a bad experience with uh, my boxing match in Texas, so I'm not also fighting in Texas. What the fuck, man? <laughs> and, you know, to book a venue of, of that magnitude, sure. it's not like it doesn't happen in a week or right. a weekend. You know, it happens months in advance. So, you know, um, our original date, we were trying to get April 20th, but it ended up being, um, they had both of the biggest venues in, in Vegas booked, and then they ended up moving it to Brooklyn for the David Haney and yeah, Ryan yeah. Garcia fight. You know, so it's like, man, all, all these problems, and dude, I'm just trying to fucking fight. What are you, what are you trying to do, bro? You know, so it could have been in April in, in a different place, but this dude wasn't trying to do it. So I just feel like very diva-ish, you know? And then other things I'll keep dropping on the press that are all, like, on the contract, and it's contract side. Like, the way it's written out, like, Nate Diaz mastered all well. Hey, I damn near nearly killed you, so that means I'm supposed to get these little privileges. And, like, now I'm supposed to say mastered all. 
But instead of trying to negotiate, he's just like, well, I'm not fighting if it's like that. Like, I won't fight. So the promoter's getting back to me, telling me these things. Like, bro, look, there's no budge in there. Like, he just won't, he, he's not going to fight. Like, he says, you just move on and go fight somebody else. I'm like, bro, do you want to fight or what, bro? Because you, you brought up already, and I got numerous other ones, um, motives not, not to fight, you know? So it just makes me question, like, maybe he don't want this heat, bro. So he wanted his name first. Wanted his name first. At walk the, out at, at the way and walk out second at the weigh-ins. He has to weigh in last, you know, like, brother, you didn't win the last fight. You know what I'm saying? What the fuck are you talking about? Is there any part but, of you that's like, no, F that? Yeah, a lot of me was F that. Like, no, motherfucker, because a uh, big chance the fight was going to be in Miami and they're really pushing for Miami. Obviously, we know I've, I've done sure. I did so well when we went with the UFC. And uh, Nate completely was like, I'm not going to fight in Miami. I'm not going to fight in Miami. I'm not going to fight in Miami. And I have to walk out first. I have to, like, is this guy retarded? How would you walk out a last in my city? You know, like, I am not going to walk out. Right. Fucking first in my city against you. I already mopped you up, you know? So these things are, like, make me question his, his fucking motives, bro. You want to scrap or what, bro? Or you want to fucking... So why why did you ultimately agree to it? Because I want to fucking beat his ass, bro. You don't and, care. And, and the UFC gave me permission to go do all this, you know? So I'm not gonna let this dude stop it. Like if it would have been him, it would have been somebody else, you know. But it's just like, all right, I don't, I don't care. I'm, I'm ultimate fighter, bro. I'm actually from the UFC, ultimate fighting championship. I'm gonna fuck everybody up, man. Especially if I'm gonna get a paycheck on this. So okay, I signed off on all the things, and it's still a problem, you know. And even with with this date, you know, we could have pushed it back a week once the UFC announced uh, that they were gonna go June first, and I was willing to go. Um, I think it's Memorial Weekend or something mm -hmm. the weekend before, and we would have fought that weekend. But he was like, nah, I already announced on my Instagram that I'm fighting on this day, so I don't give a fuck about the UFC. We'll go head-to-head -head with him. I'm like, that's just not good business, you know? I'm a fucking promoter. He claims to be a promoter. Like, it's just not good business. There's absolutely nothing that weekend. We could take over that weekend. And I like month. that weekend much better if I'm being honest. Well, you know... Um, I don't love you guys going up, just from a business standpoint. Oh, I'm trying to sell pay per view. There's nothing happening and, Memorial Day weekend. And, and I finally got, I carved out something nice for myself where I'm getting a good amount of the pay per view, you know, boxing style. So it just, it, you know, I'm, I have a great guarantee, but the back end could be sure. way bigger than the guarantee, you know. So why not go when there's absolutely none? But this dude is like, I don't, I'm not employed by the UFC. I don't give a fuck about the UFC. We'll go head to head with him. Like, it's just stupid to me, man. It's just like bad business, you know? So for all these reasons, I'm a little extra amped uh, up, you know, because okay. now you're fucking with my pockets on top of it, man. I, I don't want to go against the UFC. And the UFC knows it. They, they talk to me many times about this, and they're like, bro, it is what it is. That's that's your call, uh, Game Bird. I'm like, well, it's not my call. You know, I just signed up the fight. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's it, basically. Uh, what was the vibe you got from him on Friday at the first stop of this uh, this tour? I felt like he didn't want to be there. Really? That's what I felt like. Like, he didn't want to be there, and I get it. Maybe he had, like, weed to smoke and fucking vegan plates to eat or something or some food to be. But, like, his, his energy, the way I was reading him, like, he didn't really want to be there, you know? And and he knows one thing that whether I'm in shape or not, like, man, I'm coming to fight. <laughs> you know, I'm coming to fight. So if you pull that shit, you pulled out with the, the little fucking Mickey Mouse uh, club guy, fucking the guy fighting Tyson out, if you, mm. if you show up like that to Jake Paul. my fight, yeah, that fucker, if you show up like that to, to our fight, you know what's going to happen. It's going to happen rather quick because I'm just going to put the pressure on you right away, man. And I'm not going to let you slide for no 10 rounds coming out of shape off the couch like that. That's not the same Nate Diaz we're accustomed to in like the UFC and stuff. I don't think he took Jake seriously at all, you know. So um, I hope he's been preparing and get himself ready for war because he, he knows uh, it's just the way I roll, by the way I scrap. I'm trying to kill your ass. Is there any part of you that is uh, worried is not the best word, but like wondering if he will in fact show up? Shit, if he doesn't, that's on his ass, you know? But do you, do, you, do you doubt this at all? Based on what you said his body language was and all this other stuff, like, are you concerned? He doesn't have a history of doing that. He doesn't that. have a history of doing it, you know? So in, in the back of my mind, I'm like, nah, I don't, think, I don't think Buddy will pull out, you know? But it's just like I kind of question some of these motors. Like, bro, how about if I would have said, okay, you know what? You're not walking out. Yeah. Last, we're not fighting. Then like, are you going to lose out on a fight like that and something so negotiable when the chips are on, like, my side. But at the end of the day, like I said, I, I want to fight, you know. When this opportunity got offered to me, I was very excited to box, and here I am. Uh, considering your other great paydays, where does this one stack up? It's good? You're happy? Wow, wow, wee, wow. Yeah, okay. It's very good money. Yes, okay. No, th this is uh, this is very good money, brother. For, for myself, for my family, this is... Uh, is this the most ever? Well, we made it. I don't know if I can say that on I mean, camera. I'm, I'm not asking you specifics. I'm but just... if I was just to be talking to you and yeah, like we yeah. forget about the yeah, camera, yeah. 
but it's a big ass, big ass check. Okay, I'm it's happy. Not, it's not just big, it's big as fuck. It's it's uh some serious ass money, man. And 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 the promoter is Fanmio. Fanmio. Who did the um Logan yes, Paul sir. Floyd Mayweather fight? Mio. Yes, sir. And what's your what's your experience like so far with them? Fucking amazing, man. Okay. I mean, this guy's over delivered on everything he's fucking told me. You know, this is Solomon. This is Solomon, yeah. brother. And uh, met him. We talked. Um, he's like, hey, you know, I'd want you to come box for my thing. And I was like, <laughs> I'm signed to UFC, brother. It's not that easy. He's like, all right, I'll, I'll I'll talk to them, see what we could do. I was like, this motherfucker's barking up the wrong tree, bro. You know, yeah. This is the UFC, man. Yeah. You know, and he's like, he had some chips that he can move and and pieces he can move in the UFC. He was like, all right, you know, we have this, you got that, pop, pop, pop. We'll let you borrow a boy for three fights. So here oh, wow, here. three fights. Three fights, bro. You ain't never heard of that? Wow. Oh, I got okay. For three uh, fights, all boxing? Man. All boxing. So when did this, because actually I noted it was... Been a year, the deal. Well, so, so you said goodbye April of 2023. Yeah. Um, around almost exactly this time. And when did this all start afterwards? I, I want to, you know, I didn't know of it, but uh, Solomon and Dean too, shout out to my brother Dean yeah. too, we're, we're talking maybe, I'm going to say since like... You know, May. Oh, wow. September. Okay. Boom. When did it get on like, your radar? I'm going to say like October. Okay. October and and were you in right away or did you have to think about it? Like, were you already checked out? I'm never fighting again. I, no, at this point I was like, fuck, man. Um, a lot happened in my life. So I was like, this is the only thing that keeps me grounded. I need to train not once a day, but like twice a day. I need to just stay moving with them, promoting and making all this money on the side. I just, th th this is what keeps me calm. This is my temple, my peace, you know? And then um, it just happened to be when they gave me the, the opportunity, I was like, this is the greatest task to not only fund my operations, you know, but to fucking keep the temple clean, keep the mind right. And then when, when the opponents started showing the opponent list, because the original opponent wasn't Nate, you know, it was several opponents on, on the list. I saw that and I was like, wow, I fucking love it. There's a lot of opponents on that list that I, it would be a dream matchup to, to box. So I, I jumped right all over it, you know? So part of the deal with the UFC the, was the money, they gave the you a list of names. Bad. The money wasn't bad either, you know? I don't, I'm not doing it because of the money, but the money wasn't bad. But, it, but is that accurate? They gave you a list of names, right? A bunch, a bunch of lists of names. C could I ask, like, who some of the names were? Mm, some some well-known boxing figures, I'll tell you that much. Did you pursue any of them? Like, were any of them close? No, 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 no. We're, we're, we're still working on, on on the bigger names, and hopefully by the time the Nate Diaz fight is done, we'll have these bigger names nice and carved out. They signed, I signed, so then I could start talking about it, you know, but uh, it, it's going to be, we'll, we're having the same discussion when the next name comes. It's going to be a big boxing name, another household name. And and uh, you have to win, though, right? Like, you can't... Of course. But I know you you don't doubt that. But like, is it all contingent on you winning this fight? Like, does the three fights uh, only happen if you win this fight? I mean, it only happens to the magnitude that we want it to yeah. happen if if I win these fights, you know. And uh, I don't I don't even think of like losing, you know. Right. No, of course. Um, Jake Paul has mentioned that he was not one of the names. Yeah, he's not one of the names. And I'll address that little coward right now because I know he'd be watching yeah, this, this shit like this a little camera creep. Right here, yeah. Is this camera right yeah, here? Yeah. Talking to this little pervert creep that be creeping on your show, brother. Listen, man, the UFC don't like your bitch ass. Dana White don't like your bitch ass. Obviously, Hunter Campbell don't like your bitch ass. So he said, we're not going to let you make money with this guy because at the end of the day, we're partners, right? Like, me and Nate going to make money right now whether he likes me or not or whether he likes the situation or not. We're about to make a fucking ton of money. They don't, they don't care for that motherfucker. They're like, we're not going to make any money. That's why... Uh, Dana went and sponsored Tyson's camp and is helping him out and all that shit. And, like, he, he gets behind Tyson because they don't like his ass, bro. Jake has done too much shit to, like, Dana that's not cool. And that's our chief in commander. So I get it that they don't want me to fuck with him and make him any type of notoriety and money. They don't give a fuck about him. Now, fucking Jake runs up on me somewhere else where it's not, like, a ring or something. We could find out, bro, because you're talking about the PFL. What the fuck are you going to do in MMA? Are you, are you kidding me? You can't even box. Now, all of a sudden, you fucking MMA, I'd kick your fucking kneecap off your fragile body, you dumb motherfucker. Don't ever bring up MMA, you disrespectful piece of shit. And I'll tell you why. I've been doing that shit since this motherfucker was fucking sucking on fucking bananas and shoving them down his throat on fucking YouTube to get hits. I was fucking fighting grown-ass men since the age of 18. My whole fucking life. For this guy to call me out on MMA, like, get the fuck out of here. Be fucking 
stream selling bitch. And I, and I get emotional because I love my fucking sport, bro. And I represent my sport, you know? See that little bubblehead motherfucker right there? That's, That's right. me right That's there, right. motherfucker. Shout out. Uh, who's this idiot to call me out of name? He tweeted anymore? about you guys. You saw this? You know, he knows $10 million. Well, like, bro, and what? I'm going to take a pay cut to go fucking fight at another <laughs> organization? Get the fuck out of here, you fucking bum. UFC takes care of me well, but you don't you don't know what the fuck people make because we don't put it out online, you know? But he doesn't know what the fuck I make. Now I'm going to take a pay cut to fight some fucking clown. Like, get the fuck out of here, bro. You Ten know? mil is a pay cut for you. It, it's good to be the king. In, in, in the UFC, I could, I, could, I could get some nice numbers. In boxing, I get, you know, maybe a little bigger numbers, you know? So Is there not a case me. to be made he's such an easy opponent? Just take... Yeah, but in the UFC, I'm, I'm signed to the UFC. Yeah, the, yeah. U, the, under no circumstances, the UFC is going to say, here's one of sure. our top draws, PFL, take him. <laughs> So you can I play saying? devil's advocate? Do you Please. think he's throwing this out because he knows it can't happen? Of course, okay, man. Okay, okay. I can't go to the PFL. I can't, <laughs> right. I fucking, I can't go to no other MMA Nate organization. Nate can, though. You, yeah, Nate can do whatever the fuck he wants. But me, I'm still signed to the UFC. I still have fights that I own. I retired, and they said, you what? We love you, bro. You've done so much for the company. You want to go box, man? We'll let you go do your thing. Go fucking make your money. But obviously, I can't go fight for another company and make that company blow up. Now, there's no way I could be in PFL. There'd be no way they'd let me go do that, you know? Who do you think wins in an MMA match? Jake or Nate? I would have to put all my tips on Nate if he's, like, training the right way and he, and he takes it seriously. I mean, whenever the fight hits the floor, it's a, it's a dumb deal now. Does Nate want to prove a point and stand with him and stuff? Uh, I don't know, but I, I would just feel that if Nate's mind's right and his body's right, there's, it doesn't get out of the first round, you know? Mm -hmm. When when all this happened with the list and all that stuff, was there any part of you that was like, you know what, I do want to fight, I do miss it, why don't I just go back to MMA? What, why? Yeah, de definitely, definitely, you know, because for, first I started missing MMA. Yeah. When did, how long did that take after you retired? Mm, it took a little minute, bro, and I took like, I went the most stagnant I had ever gone in my life. I went like, I don't know, 45, 55 days without doing anything. No exercise? No exercise. What'd you do? Fucking being, just fucking being a bum and I'm fucking degenerate and fucking just being a f something that I haven't been my whole life. Just okay. fucking, you know, all of a sudden I'm going out every fucking day and-, and You were, like you were doing, in retirement, you were having fun. Yeah, 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 you know, call it that, but that that's not me, you know, I'm like, that that's not me, you know, and I fucking quickly, like, all oh, the two, first two weeks or three, four, five days, like, ah, oh, it's pretty fun, you know, everywhere I go in Miami, everybody knows me, I'm getting everything for free, I'm, I'm partying, you know, and then- like, nah, this ain't me, God. You know, but I didn't really know what was going on. But the main thing that was missing was all through my life, and I've said in numerous interviews, no matter how bad things were going in my life or I didn't have a place to go or I didn't have a meal to eat or anything, as long as I made it to the gym, the day just turned out fine. The, my body felt great. My mind felt great. My spirit was in a good mood. And then when I got out of that gym, all of a sudden, I could find a way to get some food mm -hmm. or so. oh, you want to stay on my couch? Let's go. Boom. I mean, I could, you know, like the gym would always fix everything from top to bottom, you know? And obviously praying to God and, and, and always just asking for God for, for the strength. So I kind of forgot about that for a second. And I started kind of finding like in the depression. And then as everybody knows, uh, man, my pops got locked up again. Boom. They took his ass, you know. And that's when it fucking hit me. And, and seeing him get locked up again at fucking, I don't know, 38 at the time, was like I felt like I was a fucking little boy again, like a kid, you know? Wow. And I saw that, and it hit me so fucking hard that all, like, just, like, by default, I was like, okay, I'm going to go work out. And as soon as they, they took my dad away and I saw the whole thing, I got uh, I got to my spot, put my running shoes on. I ran for, like, two hours. I hadn't done shit for, like, 50 days. Wow. And, uh... And it was a tough run, but I felt great. And during it, I was able to like solve a lot of problems just as I always did because your mind goes off. I started thinking, I was like, man, I can't believe I haven't dealt with this. Or, ah. Started fixing things. When I got back, I felt great. So on that very day, I vowed to myself, I'm going to work out every fucking day whether I compete or not. It's just, it's my nature. What the fuck is wrong with me? You know, I was a cool kid long enough. Now I need to fucking do what I've always done, which is take care of my body. And uh, I started to, and then that was like sometime in, in April-ish or something. And I'm already starting to just train, train, train without, you know, a purpose. And then, boom, this boxing deal falls in my lap. And wow. I'm like, man, it's all aligned. God loves me. Like, God wants me to stay on this path. Because if not, why would I get this call? Why would I get this opportunity, you know? By the way, when I leave this one for you, brother. Yeah, what is this? True. This is my company, dog. This is your new company? What, what kind of now company? my new company has been my company, man. We've been around. Okay, what is it? Uh, uh... Is it um, some wacky tobacco? What what do we got? No tobacco. Right okay, there. no, that's what we call the the rolling paper. Okay, oh the paper. Okay, okay, nice, nice, and nice. And we got the merch, bro. And it's called Tree of I like it. I like it. You know? It's nice. I like the orange. Yes, sir. Because of the sunshine state, yeah. orange. Um, when you retired last year, 
ultimately, I know we spoke like the Monday after, but now like with some reflection, why, why, if the, all this makes you feel so good, you love it so much, all, why did you walk away on that um, night? You know, it, it was ma many things that many kind of outside factors that were happening in my life that were kind of, you know, messing me up a little bit in training, just slightly knocking me off my, my, where you need to be at, you know, and I'm a little bit older, so now I can't pull some of these things off, and I just, I wasn't like where I needed to be, you know, and uh, injuries as well. Just like injuries that you get in a camp, you start strong in a camp, and, and you know, no diss to boxing, but it's just a different grind, mm -hmm. you know, where, where I'm running, hitting bags, hitting pads, and, and I'm sparring. As an MMA, you, you just have a different grind, man. It's just different. Whether it be your back, your neck, you know, and uh, some of these injuries I've had already for a good amount of time, and it just kind of kept getting worse. I'm like, I need a little break from it, you know? And this is kind of like my little break for me. Okay. Did you know in the back of your mind you'd be back? Yeah, at some point. I was like, yeah. No, but like I, even that night when you walked yeah, away. No, at that night, I'm just pissed off, man. I'm like, fuck. I'm just so mad. But I still know, like, man, this is, the, the, the thing is that it's the fucking greatest drug I ever took. Probably better than sex. Um, best roller coaster I've been on. It's like the whole fight experience. Yeah. It's just amazing. I love it. You know, I love it. The, the Everything, the preparation leading up to Do I like to run? No. I like to lift weights? No. Do I like to diet? Fuck no. You know, but all these things make you like a better athlete and in turn also like make you a better person, making these right decisions to, to constantly hit those markers. So um, I was like, hell yeah, bro. I, I, I'm going to come back at some point. I just didn't know when. Did you think because you were in Miami there was even more reason? Like, okay, this yeah, is... definitely. You like know, if this was some started. random place, maybe you wouldn't have felt compelled to do it? Maybe not. Maybe, yeah. But, you know, it's it's where I started. Yeah. I was like, fuck it. It's where I finished, you know? And now I'm back. It's a, it's a crazy thing because uh, often... In, I, th I think I may have even asked you in that interview, like, you know, combat sports retirements don't usually last right? the first time. right. So now you're one of those. Yeah, no. I'm one do you of think those you'll ever do MMA again? For sure. Oh, really? So I, you're I told, fully back. I, I, I told the UFC that after these three fights, if they, if they, you know what, we were working out the deal. I was like, man, y'all let me go do these three fights. I'll come back and bust somebody's chops up for you. Damn. And they're like, oh, okay, we like that. How, how many more you have with them? With uh, UFC. I'm gonna say five fights. It's a okay. Yeah. I'm old enough to remember a time in the spring of 2020. Because it's funny to hear you say, like, commander-in-chief and all this stuff. And I'm not trying to stir the pot. But, like, you were kind of – you you were pushing back. Remember yeah, all that? And, and I still, you were on ESPN you know, Sports Center. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking about, like, fighter pay and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. And, now you and, seem very happy. You, you know, it, is the pay perfect? No, nothing's perfect, you know. Um, does the UFC take care of me? Yeah, they, they take care of me, you know. But it also took it, – it's something that I always, like – you know, go in my mind because uh, when we stopped with negotiations, it was like seven weeks before the Usman fight. Mm -hmm. And then Gilbert stepped up and, and took the fight. And then he got sick. And then they called me six days to go. And nice. uh, it, it's it's just like I had him by the balls. You know, like yeah. the deal that I got, I had him by the balls. I don't know if other people get that deal in their lifetime. I, I don't know. But I, I truly had him by the balls. And, and I always contemplate like all the money that I made in the fight. Or if I would have just took a much lesser check, got the title or something, because I was well prepared, sure, in shape, sure. not cutting 20 pounds in six days, you know? Like, all those things factor in my mind. But at the end of the day, you know, um, that, that's why I was able to get that deal because of the six-day note. Okay. If not, I wouldn't get that deal, man. Do you regret it? Do I regret it? Yeah, there's nights that I fucking regret it, you know? I wake up in my mansion, my silk sheets, <laughs> go fucking, I hop in my fucking... Three hundred thousand dollar car, drop my kids off work, and I and as cool as that sounds, I still regret it, bro. I'm still like, damn. Okay, I would have took a much less considerable pay cut on that day. But fuck, man, isn't this what I signed up for? Isn't the belt what I signed up for? Fuck, if I got fucking all the Versace I could ever wear, and but you're a prize movie. fighter. Ultimately, isn't it better to have the money? You know, and and always in the back of my mind, um, one thing that stuck with me was like Strike Force. I fought for their world title, you know. And I made pennies on that, my man. Right. Like $16,000 in wow. a six-month training camp because I get, kept getting pushed back from September 1 to October to November to finally December. And then I fucking destroyed my hand in that fight and I was out for some time. Fucking nothing. No money coming in, absolutely, because there's no sponsor back yeah. there, nothing. So that one always stuck with me. I'm like, the next time I fight for a world title, it's going to be some serious-ass fucking money. If not, I just won't do it, you know? That, that, that week was insane. 
because like you you know you took it was during the pandemic that was the first one on Fight Island. <sighs> But, but I mean, I don't think you should regret it. You don't still regret no, it. No, I don't regret it. I just, just a part of me just like a lot of times wakes up in the middle of the night like, fuck, man. Yeah. What would it have been like, you know, if I was properly prepared for that fucking fight, not goofing off, not living, you know, how I was living. You know, I was going to the gym a couple of times a week, once or twice. Yeah, I think Dustin Poirier was going to fight Dan Hooker. Mm. So I was giving him a couple of rounds like once a week. Oh, uh, yeah. I'd show up to the gym and just spar and that's it. And just spar and then take off. You know, and that's, that's all the cardio that I was doing. I wasn't running, I wasn't training or nothing. So I just like, damn, could have been, you know, maybe it could have been a little different, man. Not not to knock on Usman, now, but, you know, it's just something that, that right. I contemplate. Like, fuck, you and Usman you know? are cool now, right? I mean, we, we were never really like uh, actual beef beef, you know, or nothing like that. Like this other scumbag that I can't mention his name because the feds are running here. Okay, um, okay, okay. You know, yeah, bro, he said things I didn't like and I said a bunch of shit he didn't like and stuff like that, but... We always kept it within those lines of, of like respect, you know. Mm -hmm. And and then he's a hell of a competitor. He came out and and did his thing. In the second fight, the first fight was like, oh whatever, but he could have could have fought me. And then he went out to the second fight and he fucking fought me, man. Mm -hmm. So for that, I just had a, a lot tons of respect, and I just got a bunch of respect from him now. Now he's doing the same shit, winning fought fucking uh, what's his face in like ten days notice, yeah. you know? It's fucking it takes balls to do that, and he knows not because he did it. Like yeah, this motherfucker. He's a G for doing that shit, you know? And I had just seen Usman, right? Like, the day before that got signed, I was out and about in Miami, late as fuck, like, four in the morning. Someone touched me like that. I mastered I go, boom. I was ready to fuck uh, the time, because this is right after my retirement. Yeah. I was like, don't nobody touch me after Yeah. Me. I fucking turn around. And it's Usman. I go, what wow. the fuck? He goes, what's up, man? What are you doing here? I go, this is my city. What are you doing here? He's like, man, I'm chilling, bro. And I was like, all right. Just on the street like that? Yeah, or... we were somewhere. We were somewhere, okay, you know? Right. And uh, fucking, it, it was a good time. And then the next day, I see this motherfucker signing up to fight. Fucking, what's this face? I'm like, bro, fucking wild man. Let's yeah, go, yeah, bro. yeah. By the way, that weight cut in July of 2020, Fight Island, was that the worst one ever? Um, The six-day notice one. That was a bad one. That was, oh, of my later part of my career, that was a bad one. And then, remember, I used to fight at 155. And right. I had maybe like two or three weight cuts there that just fucking hurt me and haunted me for life, you know? Really? really bad Which is the worst there. one? Do you remember? Um... Like where you thought maybe you wouldn't make it? Uh, I like Quinto ended up being like a horrible one, man. Really, Virginia? Yeah. Why? Uh, I I got in sick. This is this happened to me a couple times, uh, especially at fifty five. Like I'd be getting ready to fight, and your body's like already weak, and then you catch like a fucking cold or something, and you get fucking the flu or something, and you're fucking you get fucked up. I can't go to the gym or nothing. Like fucked up, like six seven days fucked up. And then my weight shooting down, and I'm like, all right, well, at least I'm not heavy. At least I got that under control because I'm not eating, I'm not doing anything. Then when I started to get better, it's like my weight would shoot up and it would stay up, and I couldn't fucking get it off. And I had a horrible time in the owl fight. And um, Mike Chesia fight, I had a very bad one as well. I don't know why that, that, that one ended up being. I actually missed weight. The first, well, both fights, I missed weight the first time, then they gave me the two hours, and I mm. came back. Oh, fucking miserable. made the weight because you can't fuck around. Once you sign that dotted line, you got to be a man. You got to do your part. It could have been so much easier for me to be like, oh, I missed weight by four pounds. Here you go. Take this. Yeah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. But nah, you, you you can't do that as a man, as a fucking athlete, or as a woman. Once you sign that fucking dotted line, do yourself and do your fucking opponent. Give him the respect by showing up on weight. You know. So I've never missed weight in my UFC career, and I hold that with a fucking huge badge of honor. You know. Speaking of uh, women cutting weight, what about Kayla? 135, you see that? Tell me about my girlfriend. She, she is unbelievable. She's gonna, she, people are gonna find out. Um, and props to Holly, she's just a monster. I think Holly's. You were there on Saturday, right? Yes, I yeah. was. Holly's one of these all time greats, a legend. She's willing to fight the best of the best, the up and coming, the most fucking established champion, and everything in between. And I just give so much prop to Holly. She's still doing that to fight a fucking animal like Kayla. It's just not very benefiting for her style either. But, um, Kayla's going to fucking buzz saw through the division. I swear to you, Kayla's going to buzz. She looked through. incredible. She Were you worried about 135 for her? You know, at first when she originally signed up, yeah, I was because I used to see her. I've, I've been her teammate five years. And yeah. I, and I've watched her get down to 145, and I know she's hurting and stuff. And, and you know, she has fucking ashy Larry lips, and her teeth are huge because her gums are strong. And I'm uh -huh. like, damn, she, she cut a ton of weight to get to 45. But, man, if there's one thing that that girl has, it's fucking the mindset where... Okay, I can't eat a carb for fucking seven months. Done. I won't eat no carbs ever again. Like she could just fucking get the job done, you know. So I was, well, I, I talked to her maybe like I don't know three weeks um, before the fight. She was like, "Man, actually, my body's shaving off the weight good. I'm, I'm feeling great. I'm gonna fuck shit up." 
And when she told me that, I was like, she's not going to have a problem with the weight cut, you know? She looked a little sucked out. Like, yeah. when she did the interviews after, her cheeks were sunken in and stuff like that. But I knew she'd hydrate well and fucking, she's just a monster, bro. There's not a lot of chicks that, like, beat up dudes in the gym that are, like, decent dudes. She's one of them. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Her like versus Amanda. Baby. Um, what do you think? What do you think? This is the big one. I can't. I I'm wanna, the biggest Amanda news. I know. Fan. I know. Bro, I fucking love Amanda. Amanda is the other chick that I could see beating up dudes in the gym and be like, it doesn't happen often, you know. Um, you see her both, video? And yeah, yeah, I saw it. Yeah. You know, and they're both so great at what they do. You yeah. Know? Amanda's fucking hands are devastating, and she can keep that the fight on the feet. It's so hard to take her down. Kayla. If she gets you down, bro, it's a problem. I mean, Holly's no slouch. Yeah, yeah. Holly knows what she's doing. Holly was able to take Ronda down like twice, and she's not a slouch on the ground. She knows her thing, but you just saw like the vastness of, man, you're fighting a fucking gorilla with clothing on. And Kayla, when she gets you down on the ground, and her, her striking's getting better and better. She's mm -hmm. fucking powerful. She fucking threw a high kick and then double leg. It was fucking like beautiful. So it's, it's one of these things like, uh, I, I don't think. Well, I, I know for a fact, Amanda's never fought no one like Kayla, and Kayla's never mm -hmm. fought no one like Amanda. But Amanda has been out for some time. She hasn't been training like that. Kayla's like one of the most dedicated athletes I've seen. She's got two full-time kids, and this girl never misses a gym session. Early is on time, and on time is late with her. Like, she's fucking constantly trying to talk shit to me if I'm showing up like a minute wow. late. She's fucking halfway across the mat. You motherfucker, you're late. Wow. Yeah. Like, she's that person. So I, ju I just... uh. I'll put my money on Kayla right now. Wow. Yeah, I'll put my I, money I'm on not Kayla. asking you how. Don't it, kick my ass, Amanda. No, no. Ah, she's going to beat me up now. Uh, uh, by the way, but, yeah, I'll put Moicano. my money on Kayla. Hey, Nato Moicano said the same. Um, put his money on Kayla? He didn't say put his money, but he said, ah, oh, it's so hard. But ultimately, he said he's going to side with Kayla because he likes them both just mm -hmm. like you. But, um, and, and you don't have to tell me how it went. Shout but out just, to my boy Moicano. Yo, we've been killing it for man. a minute. Yeah, well, you know what's the amazing? Promos, but wait, before fight. we get to more count, can I just ask you the 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 training sessions that they had together? Were you ever there for that? I was Kid. there. I I yeah, I was there for one of not the not the one I wanted to be. The first time they trained, I didn't get to see that one. I heard all about it. Okay. And I would spill my guts to you, but you can't. You no, can't you can't really do that. Do that. That's gym. Really That's gym that, etiquette. You know? Yeah. And um, I was there for for other ones, and I could tell you, it's a fucking pay per view. Oh man, it's a pay per view because it's just. You know, I would love to see it. Both felines that are not gonna give an inch to no other chick. They're just like they're gonna piss on the fucking tree yeah, yeah. with their leg up like they're a male dog, and they're not gonna let no one go near that tree. Like they're fucking competitive as fuck. And they they ultimately the sessions that they had were you count them in like a hand, you know, because they yeah, were yeah. just getting too rowdy with each other. Where you're gonna they're gonna end up getting hurt because they're 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 going on fight mode the full time. You know, it's not not either one of them is backing down, whether it be striking or whether it be grappling. They're they're going hard with each other, so it's gonna be one of the best women's fights ever when it happens. And it's gonna happen because it has. To. I see Kayla; she's gonna bust out through the division, like I said. Yeah, she's gonna grab that mic. She's gonna call out Amanda. Amanda's gonna come uh, back. It's gonna be sick. It's gonna be insane, bro. Yo, what about ATT? I think you guys went seven and zero this weekend. You see that? Did I see Armin. that? Fuck, I lived that life, yeah. bro. I'm, you know, it's it's. No, 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 this to anybody. It's like a, a fan of a team. And like, it's one thing to be like a fan of a team, but like, this is me, man. I'm one of the pillars of American Top Team. You know, whether it be Moicano, whether it be freaking um, Kayla, you know, um, Armin. Armin. All, all of them, I've blood, sweat, and fucking seen them go through it. And I've worked out with them. I've worked out with Armin numerous fucking rounds, was telling everybody, like, this kid's a fucking problem. Worked out with my kind of numerous times, seen him fucking just wiping the floor with everybody and fucking BJJ and bettering his boxing every day. So I, I know these motherfuckers are fucking like what they go through, you know? So it makes me so proud. Um, shoe face over at PFL, mm -hmm. like, man, I've had so many camps with this guy just fucking working the worst positions in my life, starting with him. Like for Damian Maya, I'd fucking eat, sleep, and fucking dinner with this guy, you know? Because it was just every day the best jujitsu guy that I could get on. And he was a guy in fucking, okay, it's just like, it's a, it's amazing. You know, all the other guys that we had at PFL, Conan's son as well. I've seen that kid, I've known him since he's like 14 years old. And now wow. he's fucking doing his thing on the world stage, you know. So it's, it's just, it's fucking so amazing to see my team, American top team, just fucking crushing. To go 4-0 in UFC 300, it's like, it, 
you, you, I, I can't even put that in, into words, you know. And then other gyms try to compete for the number one spot. There is no fucking competing, fuckers. You know, we might lose one fight here, one fight there, but overall, there is no fucking competing with Bo us. the greatest team in the world. Fucking Bo Nick, are you yeah. fucking kidding? He was mad. He was he yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking, you know, Bo's another fucking animal. All, all these eight, I don't know how many rounds I got with this fucking animal as well. You know, to to see all these motherfuckers do their thing and do it like that, it's so fucking like, fuck yeah, man. It, it just fucking fuels me up to. I've been there at UFC 300. All of them just gave me like. All right, I got another seven weeks of grinding. Let's fucking go. Every week, like it's fight week, balls to the wall, you know? Do you think Bo could beat Hamza right now? Because Hamza was talking about his wrestling, or is that premature? Look, if if Hamza gets into a wrestling with Bo, Hamza fucking loses. Usman literally came up off the couch. Usman was literally partying with me, you know? Um, I'm not going to throw him on the bus or none, but I can tell you he wasn't in the fucking... Right. Anywhere near the shape he should have been for that fucking fight. And second and third round, second round maybe is a swing round, third round, he clearly busted him up. Everybody gave Usman that round. So it, it's just a thing where I know that that fucker gas is hard, man. And Bo's not going to gas. Like, I, I've just seen it with my fucking own. Bo's not going to gas. Could he get caught with a shot right now because he's still earning his career? Yeah, that could happen. But other than that, he'll break fucking uh, whatever his fucking name is. He'll fucking break the dude. He'll get, if they get into rusty scrambles, especially, he'll break them even faster, you know? And I just, I know for a fact he can't keep up that pace. Now, he, he could wrestle like that with guys that they can't wrestle back in him, you know, like strikers, or he could be a nightmare for a lot of guys that don't have that wrestling. But for Bo, that's one of our best wrestlers to come out in this country in a long time, his shots are limited. He's going to have to keep it to the feet and hope he can close his eyes and fucking boom, catch Bo. If not, it's going to be a fucking bad night for, for what's his face bro we were mentioning Moicano to me what I love so much about his story is this guy's in the UFC for like 10 years no one knows anything about him he does no interviews no nothing and now you see he's so funny he's entertaining yeah, the personality he's talking about the economy and all this stuff he's incredible what, where has this guy been did you always know that he had this in him this like showman you know at the gym he's kind of like quiet you know and then he has like a little group of people that will yeah. talk to you know so yeah we know he has personality but um I think he's seen like, man, I want this money. I yes. got fucking, I gotta start, you know, opening up the mouthpiece and let everybody know I got a mouthpiece as well. And he's doing a fucking amazing job. His post speeches is just something I look forward to. Just fuck amazing. Everybody. <laughs> yes, he's incredible. It's amazing. I don't know what's gonna come out of his mouth. I love this motherfucker, dude. Um, the style is also amazing. He's so fight friendly. You know, if he's not finishing a guy, he's close to getting finished, and then he comes back. You know, and. He has some of the best fucking ground game I've ever seen, period. Walk through the doors of American Top Team. And that's talking about all the numerous Mundial champions we've had straight from Gi, great uh, wrestling people, BJJ people. He has some of the most phenomenal groundwork I've ever seen. And I've seen him run through everybody in the fucking gym, get their back and tap them out like it's nothing. Like th wow. This guy's next level on the ground for real, man. Okay, so you were there. Max Gaethje points to the ground. That's your belt. You were the first one to hold it. So and it was so awesome that Max has it right now. Like, I couldn't think of a better motherfucker. He is the guy, guy, right? He Holy is that shit. guy. Oh, and what are you that, thinking? What are you thinking when you see this? He's he's winning the fight. He's up four rounds to none. It's done. He could have just walked around like this. He says, let's go right now, me and you. That's a BMF. And he understands the, the code of the BMF. Like, yeah. one of us here got to be no longer on their feet when this when what? this bell rings, man. It just... <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. And the thing, one BMF has the fastest knockout, and the other BMF has like the latest knockout yeah. in a fight pop, right? It has 459. to be. 459, yeah. Well, uh, Yair and Zombie was 459 of the fifth round. Remember that one with the, yeah. the elbow? Because when I looked and they were like showing the replay on the, on the live, it was saying 0-0. Zero, zero. Yeah, because, yeah. You know, and no, this was like the replay afterwards. It was saying like 0-0. Zero, zero. So it was like, da, 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 bang, boom. It was nuts. But, you know, like, and then the bell yes. rings, you know, so it could have been marked at like zero. Like, bro, but no, no one's going to stand in the way of that. It was just too great. It's the greatest fucking thing ever. And after going through that battle, and like you said, he, he's up, you know, worst case scenario, 3-2, you know, but he's fucking clearly winning the fight in my book. Gagey had some moments, but he was never like yeah. controlling winning the fight, you know. So for him to do that at a little point, like, when that dude points to the ground, wherever the fuck you, yeah, are, you it, become an Olympic Back sprint. Yeah, yeah, do the yeah. opposite. Don't <laughs> fucking engage. It, it, man. He's everybody's favorite fighter. He's all fighters' favorite fighter. I've always loved Max, and pff, now it's like, man, fuck this. Can guy. he beat Ilya? 
that's another guy I love, man. I've been talking about since he came into the UFC, and he lives like my little brother, but I love this motherfucker, man. That, that's going to be a heartbreaking fight because I'm a huge fan of Max, huge fan of Max. But I know Ilya very personally, you know. Um, I've trained with him a lot of times. I've seen him since, you know, like his first, second, third, fourth, fifth UFC fight. I'm telling everybody, like, watch out for this dude. He's going to be a champion. Yeah. Now he goes and does it against a fight that I didn't think was, like, the most favorable for him against fucking Volk, which is another animal. Another, yeah. The cream of the crop, apex fucking predator. And he pulled it off relatively easy fashion, you know. So I was fucking, I was stunned to tell you the truth, the, the way that he did it, you know. Um... From the Max and Ilya fight, man, I love Ilya. I love Max. I just, I'll, I'll give when the fight gets closer. I'll, I'll, okay, I'll give, uh, you'll sit on the fence. That's I'll cool. Pick, I'll pick. But you know, you know, I'm but wondering. That's gonna be one of the greatest. I'll be there live for that one. I promise you. Wherever the fuck, if it's in fucking moon, Spain, I'll, I'll buy my ticket. I'm going to fucking no Spain. 100% of them there, but if it's in the moon, if it's in Jupiter, I'm fucking there. It's going to be one of the greatest fights at 145. One thing I was wondering about, like, oh, if they fight, will the BMF title be on the line? But then I was thinking of your fight when you fought Usman yeah. after winning it. It wasn't on the line. And, and Why not? And it'd be at 145 anyways. Max won it at 155. But BMF should be anytime, anywhere, any weight, no problem. But also when, ch- when Dana did it, remember he said it's 101 and they weren't planning on doing it. Yeah, okay. Said, like, so do you think if he fights Ilya, the belt should be on the line? That's up to them. That's up to Elia and Max to discuss what's on the line. I'm putting this on the line. You're putting that. that that's up to them. You know? Okay. Like mainly, it's different it's up rules. to Max because he's the one that went up right. to weight, right. fought one of the most dangerous guys we Fair. have at 155 and did his thing. So it's really up to Max if he's going to put it up or not, you know? What's up with you and uh, Justin? I saw him. He said some stuff I saw recently about you. I didn't even know. You didn't know? No. Yeah, he said, you want me to read it? Please. Uh, here it is. He said... Sorry, let me get this. Uh, okay, he... Because uh, all I had said about him is that I want to fight him for the BMF belt at some point in my career. Yeah. No interest. Okay, let me get the quote here. It is, you said if you put the BMF, uh, you want to fight him. And then he responded with, the only orbital... This is to DC. The only orbital Masvidal got broken is against Kamar Usman, and I love to see it. He fucking cheap shot at Colby Covington and didn't break his orbital bone. Um, nothing more special than seeing all that mist come off his face. And then after that, he said, when Effin Camaro put a hole through it, this is his words, don't get mad at me. He's fat as fuck. I fight at 155 pounds so he can fuck off. Yeah, man, the guy's like fucking Homer Simpson CTD down. And I don't want to talk too much shit about him because he just got fucking flatlined. So, um... I'm hoping our paths cross in the UFC, you know, because this would be like a very good comeback fight for me, easy fight for me. I mean, he's literally just walking forward, eating shots, no head movement, no nothing. So it's definitely a guy I'd love to fucking stick my face to. Nothing personal. Obviously, he seems like he's a little personal that that I make picks and stuff, but I would love the bus fucking gauge his face up, you know. Let him heal for this because he might never come back the same, Mm. right? Because that was a war that he went through, and then on top of that, he got fucking executed, you know. So uh, Gagey can say whatever the fuck he wants, but I really, like, I'm not giving a fuck about him, but if our paths do cross paths, I'd like that motherfucker out. I'd well, love what was it like being there in the building, 300? Oh, Did it feel different? Did it feel special? It felt special. I like that they brought back the old graphics and the right, music right? and stuff. I loved it. Um, it's like the fights were getting on. It was nuts, bro, because it was like, one good fight after another yeah, good it was fight great. after another good the Jiri fight was yeah, fucking geez, that insane, guy. bro. I don't Jiri, my hats off to Jiri because he got worked that first round. Like I was looking at his leg and his leg was fucked up, man. This guy's like like if it wasn't his leg, you know, just going through that samurai mindset, bro. And uh Rocky used to be at American Top Team and I've seen this guy train person, like he has gifted power. I saw him Layout maybe in the course of like I don't know he was at two three weeks like maybe two or three different sparring partners like put him down out with sixteen ounce gloves just fucking out like <laughs> snowing like damn this guy's got raw power like he's got he's a natural you know with the power so I thought this fight for G was gonna be tough you know because I know Rocky's very very technical good kickboxing as we saw it was low kicks moving check hook and then boom straight right and Jerry's mindset is just fucking. Out of this world, my hat's off to Jerry Rowe because that was fucking impressive, bro. That was one of the fights of the night for a fact. For sure. Max and Before, Holloway had yes, to happen 100%. for a fact. That's fight of the night, performance of the night, knockout of the night. It was crazy, man. Jerry, and, and Jerry's just coming out for knockouts. Yeah. Man, right? Getting so knocked it, out by Alex. Yeah. His mindset is just, it's not like everybody else's, man. Hats off to that guy. That guy's a fucking... Alex is freaking nuts, right? Oh, my God. 
pushes off Herb Dean. He gets nailed in the butt. They say, stop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> said, Leave me alone. Herb, don't fuck yeah. this up. <laughs> Herb, stay the fuck up. Damn, man. When you when you're there for that and experience that, that may like that probably makes you wanna right run through a freaking wall right then and there, right? Fuck, I wanna fight right now. This is, yeah, like, this is crazy, bro. And you know, it, it's one of those things of high level guys that I always love. You know, like a like a wrestler that'll have like a unstoppable double leg. That like let's say Burroughs for for everybody knows he's gonna shoot the double leg from outside. But you can't stop it. No matter how much video you watch, no matter how much drills you do, you can't. It's like the same thing with Perry. Everybody knows he's got this left hook, this anesthesia. And there's nothing you can do to stop mm. it. It's just one guy after another, and you can just go down the list. Fam, 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 bro. It's just so special to see a guy like that, and you can't stop his left hook. They can't get under him, take him down. They can't block him. It's just his timing on it is perfect. The leverage that he generates, it's one of the most beautiful things in the MMA right now, that damn left hook. By the way, this might be a crazy question, but uh, have you been to New York since the fight against Nate? Yeah, yeah, many times. You've been here? Okay, yeah. so this is not your first time back. No, no, no. I saw you took a picture outside of uh, Trump Tower today. Yes, Trump Tower, baby. If, 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 like, who do you think he was rooting for when you fought Colby, honestly? Because I see Colby with him. You know this for a fact? 100%. Well, why do you think that is? Ask him. Has he told you this? Ask him. Okay. I don't put words in Do you think he likes mind. Colby? I don't think he cares for him. You think he likes you more? I mean, he said it to his face the, uh, the other day. He's like, I better it against yeah. you another time. <laughs> yeah. Man, come on. And then, How do you think that made him feel? Who, Kobe? Yeah. He, Kobe knows it's all a fake in the front. Like, he doesn't know anything about politics. Right. He doesn't give a fuck if Joe Biden wins or Trump wins. To him, it's all like, do I have some money to go to the casino? That's all he gives a fuck about. He knows not. Have a conversation with Kobe. Do you ever talk to Kobe? He doesn't talk to me anymore, no, unfortunately. I wonder why. You know, I wonder why too. He doesn't talk to to fucking anybody, you know, because he's a fucking rat. And people eventually find out what type of rat that he is. He's the biggest fucking comedian. John Jones warned me about him, and I was like, ah, oh, you know, man, fucking a hundred percent true. Woodley w was telling me about him, a hundred percent true. A anybody that's ever got into action, you know, this motherfucker hates this motherfucker with a passion. You know, if Trump actually got to even kind of close to him, you know, look, look, this is why I know Trump don't like him because Trump one don't like quitters. Excuse makers, and you took your ass whooping, took your ass whooping, you lost, you lost. Kobe said on the fucking press conference that they robbed him of the decision because he's associated with Trump. Right. Are you fucking stupid? Are you fucking delusional? How fucking how hard did I hit you that, or allegedly did I hit you that day outside that shit? Huh? Yeah, and I, I know Justin was saying whatever the fuck he was saying. That fucking pussy of Justin wasn't there. I didn't sucker punch nobody. Motherfucker saw me face to face, and then we went at it. If, if all that sucker punching shit or I don't know what that other fucking podcast wannabe comedian was saying that I jumped them and this and that, if that would have happened, I would have caught serious charges now. Yeah. But when all the light and all the evidence was shown out, they were like, yeah, this is a fist fight between two pro fighters. One of them just threatened to kill this motherfucker if he ran into him in the street. And that was Kobe that had just made a video with, with uh, I forget what podcasters he had just done a video with, just threatened me that if he sees me on the street, he's going to fucking kill me. It just so happens I'm on my way to get some acai and I run into you, motherfucker. What's up? Kill my ass, right? That's why I ain't getting no charges off of it, no mm -hmm. nothing, because I ain't doing nothing wrong. You know what I'm saying? Two pro fighters getting in the fight is a sucker punch, so it's just an engagey fuck face. Shut the fuck up, man. Because I ain't never sucker punched nobody in my life. I don't, I don't have to do that shit. I, I've done it, but when I was a kid in different situations, life or death situations, but a coward like Kobe, I don't got to sucker punch his bitch ass. What's up? What were you saying? Mm. Can you call Trump right now? Like not on the show, but like, do are you are, do you have? Does, is that how it works? How does that work? Like, can you do? I have him? his number. Like, can you text him? And do we talk in text? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And uh, will does he Kobe be at your have fight? It? I don't think so. <laughs> will he be at your fight? I'm hoping so, man. But you know, I I just wouldn't want to ever put that much pressure on him because he's got an election to win. He's got much bigger fish to fry than than showing up to to an event. You know, so um, obviously I would fucking love Trump to be there. But he's got to save this country, man. I don't know what he's going to be doing or what he's going to be doing, but his people know that, that I'm fighting. and We'd love for him to be there. If he can make it, he'll make it. And if he can't, man, I, I know he's saving this country. You, know? uh, you guys are doing uh, four stops on this tour. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Draining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. Nah, you know. Because um, you still have tomorrow. And, and you saw me since, since like, when, when you know me, like 2011. Oh, yeah. No, I think 09. I think it was, like, oh, nine, Toby right. Amada. Oh, oh, 09, since oh, 09. You know, and it took me a lot to get used to, like, the interview world yeah. and the media and stuff. I just want to train and fight at yeah. the end of the day. But 
uh, the big part of me understands that to sell these fights, these pay-per-views, I have to do this. So do I want to go on tour and, 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 do, and go to all these different cities? Eh, not 100%, you know, I'm still training, I'm still doing my thing, but really I, I just want to, you know, train and stuff. And yeah, it, it's draining, but it's the nature of the beast, man. Somebody's got to sell these pay-per-views because it ain't going to be Nate, you know? Well, I noticed it's uh, Vegas, New York, Dallas, and then Cali, right, L.A.? Uh, Miami. Oh, okay. Miami. No Dallas. No Dallas, Miami. Okay, Miami. Okay. Yeah. That, that's going to be a scene. Yeah. Miami should be fun. So he's going to Miami. I don't know. The rumors say he's going to Miami. Okay. Know. You think there's a chance he skips it? I, I don't know. I didn't say that either. All right, all right, I don't fucking know. I, for all these press conferences, I don't know. I see it when I believe it, you know? Okay. Um, do, you feel like, do you feel like you have to bring different stuff to all the press conferences? I just keep shedding light and revealing more things about sure. you know, why I think he didn't want to fight me. Then he can answer me that because he, he was always saying in the UFC that I'm ducking him. Well, you know, I went and fought for the world title. You know, I wasn't ducking anybody. I just literally was fighting for the world title. Right. Then after that, there was some fucking um, confusion between the camps of why I couldn't get done. Maybe it was because the old people used to manage me and, you know, they weren't the best at communicating with other fucking camps and you just couldn't get fucking done. You know, so I went and fought the number one guy in the world at the time. And then after that, I went and fought the number four guy in the world. So it was like, shit, it could have got done, but, you know, it didn't happen. Now it's it's getting done, so what's the excuse, you know? Mm -hmm. so show up and go. And by the way, I saw in Miami when, when Jake was there, you guys did like a whole thing. Yeah, we did a little podcast. Yeah, so... I don't I don't have a problem with the guy, you know? It's not, not personal to me, you know, but he gets mad every time I say my opinion, you know? Okay. And that the UFC doesn't fucking want to let me fight, whatever, bro. I him. thought you buried the hatchet. But there was no hatchet. I, I don't... Well, if now... I, if, I don't, I don't, I don't have, I'm upset that he would call me out to MMA because I know he's trying to get views up when he knows, when he knows he would never get in a fucking cage with me. Like in a boxing ring, yeah, he'll, he'll get in a boxing ring with me. But in a cage, that guy, would, they couldn't pay him to get in the cage with me. He, as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm just being an idiot now, even entertaining this. He's never been in a fucking cage. I've been my whole life in the fucking mm -hmm. cage, you know. It's very different than the boxing ring. The condition that you have to build up for it, for your legs to get kicked, your ribs to get kicked, your arms to get kicked, go do that first. And then when you're done doing that, then go get the grappling condition. Because if I decide to high crotch you, pick you up in the air and slam you through the canvas, what are you going to do to stop that? There's nothing you can do to stop. So for you to call me out in MMA, it fucking boils my blood. But it's not like I got any personal problems to do that. Fucking actually, okay. I wish him the best, bro. And you know, I hope he does well. How do you feel about the Tyson fight? Um, You know, it's just... Tyson's old, man, you know? Yeah. How old is he exactly? He's going to be 58. You know, and father time is its not good to anybody, especially combat athletes, you know, that, that put in so many work. He's been getting hit by heavyweights his whole life, so I, I don't know how much of Tyson is left, you know? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And really, and here, I don't I don't uh, dislike Jake in, in a way like that, like on a personal level, like Kobe and shit like that, you know? I actually like his story because he, he, he shared a story before with me on how he got into boxing. And the discipline of boxing is what got him out of the, the evils of like Hollywood and all that stuff and the lifestyle he was living. So I give it up to him. That's fucking awesome. But don't get ahead of yourself and call me out in MMA. <laughs> you know you're not going to do that right, right. ever in your life. Ever. Is, is there a resolution in sight for your father? Is there something? He's working on it. You know, he's got court coming up soon and we're going to okay. be good. So you, but not before this fight? Like he won't? Yeah, before the fight. Oh, wow. Yeah. Really? yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 that would be a huge weight lift off your shoulders, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so soon. Very soon. Okay, wow. Well, good luck. Yeah. Um, so June mm -hmm. 1st, Nate Diaz. Uh, cru is it cruiserweight? No, it's 195, right? 175. 175. Okay, 195. Um, main event, pay-per-view. Uh -huh. You said it's on Fight Pass. Is it going to be on all, like, like direct TV as well, or is it just Fight no, Pass? That just fan meal and Fight Pass. That's it. That's it, okay. Fanmeal.com, fightpass.com. And you guys announced also uh, Ryan Garcia's brother. Yeah. On the card, Fine. Fernando Fine Vargas' Fine. son. Yep. Uh, Anthony Pettis against Chris Avila. Yep. And I'm assuming more to come. Any other names? Way more to us? come. We uh, were very close to getting a big, big boxing match. Two boxers um, on the card that are oh. going to fucking do very well. Very, no, very no weird. names. Uh, pretty fairly known, pretty okay. decent known. Yeah. You want to tell us or not yet? I can't say. It okay, yet. okay, okay. I can't say. It. Um, and they hit me with fines and yeah. shit. Eight rounds or ten rounds? For mine? Yeah. Ten. Ten. Okay. This is big time stuff. Yeah. You feel good about I feel, it? I feel great. Confident. I feel great. I feel so confident. Wish it was tomorrow. I, yeah, I wouldn't mind if it was right now. Right now. Right now? You could do one seventy five right now. 
Right now, I probably weigh like two. No, you sets. did that already. I tried to get you back. You did the same joke on me. I tried to get you. I hit you twice with it, man. Yeah. I can't tell you how much I, I weigh to... because if it was just me and you, I'd tell you. There's people but you... listening. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They're spies. They're spies. What, what do you, you? You got a good eyeball. What do you think I weigh right now? I think one eighty-five. You got a good eyeball. <laughs> I mean, in that range, that's fine. That's yeah. easy work for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. easy, easy. And easy how, how big are the gloves? Uh, tenors. Tenors, okay. Oh, no. And and you're and you're training at a, anything less is like you got to be a less weight class. I think it's like maybe one fifty four and under eight ounces. And you're training out of Vegas for this one, no training Miami. Out of Vegas, taking mm -hmm. it super serious. Yeah. And uh, I heard um, Jorge Capetillo, man. I left legend. everything back. That yeah, super duper legend. I mean, if you don't know who this guy is, do some research on him. This guy's fucking. He's made so many champions from scratch to zero, and then he's had a lot of a lot of big names as well. So I was very honored that he even take the opportunity, you know. And um, I got I went to like three different boxing camps. I went to Campetillos as well, and it was like I known this motherfucker forever, you know. Wow. And also he's he's a Latin dude like myself, sure. so we had a lot of like it, it was just we just clicked so fucking hard so fast. And then you know he's a worker. Every day he's got me working like a dog. Twice a day, Monday through Saturday, I see this motherfucker and we get after you know. Wow. And of course I got Paulino Hernandez, my my coach since uh since a kid. Since I started with me and uh, they're full time as well as like the second in command, and he just oversees everything, makes sure that what Capetillo's instructions he's giving to me, I understand him and I carry him out. <sighs> but it's it's a different grind, man. Um, you know, I've always been in Florida, Coconut Creek is like an hour away, so I'm always like with my kids in and out of their yeah. life. You know, this is uh, this is different. I've had to leave them. Full time now, and I, and I fly back every so often to come see him. But I, that's tough. I'm not, yeah, I'm not. For how long? Like when did this start? January. Wow, January. No second wonder you wanted the fight to be in March yeah. or April, huh? Second, second week of January, you know, and it's shit. And by the time the fight comes, it'd be like six months. My kids have been over there, and I've been yeah. over here, so I, I definitely miss them. But you know, it's uh, it's rough and tough, but somebody's got to pay for it. You know, I can tell you honestly right now, I'm in like the best shape of my life that I've been in really, really, really long time. You know. And Roberto Duran gonna stop by? Oh hell yeah, he's gonna stop by for a couple weeks. We're gonna bring him out, the legend himself. Oh, you're getting tired on me. <sighs> no, no, no. I'm so boring. I've been up you. since like five in the morning. No, I've been up since like five in the morning. Got to get these runs before the weight comes. Yeah, no, no, no I get it. I get it. But yeah, Duran's gonna be with me like two weeks in in the training camp, and then he'll definitely be at the fight ringside. You know, hundred uh, percent. Last question. When's the all next? The questions you want? Don't think no, it's all good. No, listen. Huh? I can Where's take the a food hint. You promise. I could take a hint. Oh, we've got a nice little cafeteria, granola bars and stuff in there. <laughs> you promised me cheeseburgers, pizza. You can't do that. Um, I'm gonna oh, this the hat? Brothers. Yeah, we can put it on the set. I got to put it right here. Dade County. Um, Dade County shout out. Although I hate the Miami Heat. Why? Nah, fuck them. I'm a Knicks fan. Fuck the Heat. I get it. You know, I got I to gotta rep. I get it. I get it. Um, when's the next game, Brad? Uh, FC. Yeah. We're working on it. We got some big names. Okay. I know you've been watching. A lot of people watching. Yeah. Everybody's asking me. Um, we're, we're coming out with a seller card pretty soon. Are you t are you putting that on the on the no, side? No, 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 no. Because I... I I got my lane, yeah. which is, you know, recruiting, matchmaking, promoting. And then there's other lanes where they're still doing their thing. We, we, we got just about done. So maybe in about two, three weeks' time, we're going to fucking announce a nice card. Another one that's going to make a, a bare knuckle MMA? Oh, yeah, bare okay. knuckle MMA, baby. Okay. That's all we're announcing, bare knuckle MMA, man. That's the, that's the main thing now. Yeah. Because you dabbled in the boxing last it, year. We're still doing the boxing. Okay. Obviously. This is Game Bear Boxing. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. With me. Right. You know, and we got the, the Game Bear Bare Knuckle. And uh, we're going to keep riding them horses right there, bam, 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 all the way to the Kentucky Derby. I actually think, I saw you at the press conference on Friday, this last thing, and I think that all your your reps, for lack of a better word, promoting over the last year plus has now turned you into a a a, a greater interview and a greater – like on the stage on on Friday at the presser, I felt like you were in like promoter mode. But like you 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 understood what to do. You weren't just sitting there and waiting for people to ask you questions. And I think I think that's part of what you've learned over the past year because you've had to promote. You've had to be Dana White, Definitely. right? You've had to be – and that has made you into like a better Definitely. orator. Do you know what I mean? Oh, 100%. You know, um, practice makes perfect. Yeah. You know, so now you get it now. You, me, you, me promoting a lot of these guys that I see a big, bright future in, in, in game bread, bare knuckle, it just helps out definitely, especially with the – The gift of gab. Um, thank you for stopping by. The man, Jorge. Some, some people still call you George, but I... People do. Only, like, the close ones are allowed to call you George, Not no? George, man. Because they want to fuck with me, bro. They want it? Right? They, they're like, what does Lambert call you, George? No, he only calls me one thing, Georgie. 
Georgie. He knows I fucking hate it. Oh, really? <laughs> he calls okay. me Georgie, 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 Georgie. And, and you don't like that? I'm not a fan of it, man. My name is Jorge. You Jorge, know what okay. I mean? But, you know, Dan, I can't. That's that's the American top team commander in chief, our fucking Godfather. general. Yes. You know, more than a godfather. That guy's a fucking fearless, relentless leader. So, Dan, thank you for basically calling me a fucking one. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um, do you, are you okay with when I call you Jorge? Jorge's the best. Okay, okay, all right. Just want you, to make be, sure. You're my brother. Because people, yeah, people are like, eh, you, you don't say the Georgie. You don't say the rrr, you know? You but call me whatever you want, but you're my brother, man. Much love. Much love. There he is. June 1st, Kia Forum, Inglewood, California. It's Masvidal Diaz 2. It's Diaz Masvidal 2. And I think it should be. There it is. I think it should be 2. I know it's a different sport, but I feel like there should be a 2 on there. Um, Different sport, man. And you why know? does he get the full name and you get just your name? Because, you know what I'm saying, the dude's a diva, man. He said, if I if it ain't like this, I ain't fighting that. And if it ain't that, you know, because when people see me walking out first, they're going to be like, but then he whooped this dude's ass. Just remember, this dude said he wouldn't fight if he didn't walk out last. Because, you know, it's real fighting, and I'm a real fighter, you know. But yet, you sounds like you really don't want to fight me, though, dog. Well, uh, tomorrow in New York City, uh, there's the second stop. Later on in the week, it's Miami, and then it all gets wrapped up in... Uh, in Cali. I just found out I'm not allowed to do flying knees, though. That kind of sucks. Yeah, no, I wouldn't do that. Sorry. That's why I want to get Ben's bitch ass in, in some boxing, too. I was throwing, you really? Yeah, well, I want, you know, just kind of want to punch You talk to dude. him? Nah, no, we just send him offers and shit. Okay, know? and what does he say? He's a bum. We offered him all types of money. He's a bum. He didn't want to take it, bro. I think he he's wants done. to sit in his garage and do podcasts and talk about wanting to fight me MMA, but now nah, I'm not in MMA. I'm offering you a boxing fight, which I just found out you can't do flying knees, Ben. Hello. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hello. So you know? Yeah. Come on, come box, Ben. I'll knock you the fuck out. I, what's that other fucker? Um, he, uh, What's the name? Kobe's ex boyfriend, uh, Chelsea Sonnen? Oh, that yeah. motherfucker. <laughs> I didn't even. That <laughs> motherfucker, too. He can get it. You guys, I need to figure it He went on like a rampage, by the way. Rampage, huh? Did you see that? All the I've tweets? I've seen that, man. I, but I'm not like a Twitter guy, bro. I'm just. Like, oh, my gosh. It was like 20 talking. tweets. Yeah, that's crazy, huh? That a man could be that obsessed with, with me. And that's what I do. Look at this gaging motherfucker. He just sounds like he's obsessed with me. Look at Chelsea. These motherfuckers just fall in love with me, man. But when they see me, it ain't. It Did ain't you see him at the event? He was there on Saturday. Who? Chael. Nah, I ain't see his ass. Me too. That could be that. the second fight. I don't know about Chael being the second fight. Man. It's, just fun, it's just fun to, to talk shit with him and stuff, but that dude ain't going to get into a box. You don't think so? Not after what he sees, what I'm going to do to his friend Nate. You know? Okay. You're not going to get in there, man. Well, I can't wait. Uh, good luck to you in training. Thank you for stopping by. Good I'm having a hard me. time leaving, bro. I know, I know. Is there anything else you want to say? First and foremost, I want to thank okay. my biggest sponsor. Yes, please. Jesus Christ. Okay, God shout Almighty, out. thank you always for God for putting me in these situations and uh, showing me the way and just, you know, hitting me with the signs even when I don't want to see them, you know. So definitely shout out to God. Shout out to American Top Team. I'm not preparing with them. They're, they gave me everything in life, all the tools that I ever needed in life to go and succeed. So shout out to American Top Team, the whole gym over there, from the athletes to every single trainer that's over there. Um, shout out to Dean Tool, Victoria Gonzalez for making it happen. And uh, Capetillo, Paulino Hernandez, with, with uh, all these people that I mentioned, Chris Noria. Um, this wouldn't be possible, so fucking, I'm excited, brother. And shout out to Cafecito. Cafecito, huh? You like that cafecito? They, I love it. They have any good ones here in New York? They have any good Cuban coffee in New York? Oh, they gotta have. They, they gotta have. Have you ever had? Yeah, I just can't remember. Uh, the, Roberto Duran, the, my fight with Nate Diaz, he actually... Took me to this oh. Cuban place, right? No way. Yeah, yeah, that, that he would always go to before his fights. He's like, you're gonna love this place. I used to go here before all my fights. And we get there, and like, it's a Cuban-ass place, bro. Fucking great food. I, the name's gonna come to me right now. In New York City? In New York City. And um, eat for starters, this is one of the rowdiest people I've ever met in my life. Yeah, They always say, don't meet your heroes because they let you down. <laughs> this guy, was I couldn't believe how great he is. For starters, start the conversation. He's drinking whiskey with milk. I what? Never, I never seen that. In my, I never. I never. Whiskey I'm not with... joking. I'm never seen this in my life. And he's going into stories, and he's like, drinks another one. Ah, ah. He's like drinking. Now he's starting to get loose. And his like family members and daughters are like, nah, man, man. That's what I was rounding him up too much. And they're trying to calm him down, talking to him in Spanish. But I understand this perfectly. Before the fight or after the this fight? This is this is the day of the weigh-ins. Oh, the day right before. Shit. And he starts. He had like three of these whiskey things already. And he starts saying stories, and he'll say a story, and then he like. 
punchline and then punch me in the leg. And, oh. bye, bye, bye. and he gives me the first one. I'm like, damn, he still got it, bro. I felt that. Ah. And he gives me the second one. And then he gives me the third one. By the fourth, I was like, like oh, he hits me again. I'm not. I can't. I, yo, I, you know, I'm going to fight tomorrow. You're here. Yeah, yeah. Actually, now they're starting to go through. Yeah. By the fourth one, he's like, oh, sorry, I forgot. He finds somebody else. He'll say a joke. And then, bah, punch him. <laughs> but he's the fucking greatest ever, man. And he just uh, he had a... Uh, tough time right now. So right, shout right. out to my boy, always, bro. He's fucking back. He's got the pacemaker. He's doing great. We're gonna have him out there for the fights. So one of the biggest legends that ever. Yeah, of course. Lived in the sport. So I'm just, uh, I'm very happy that I even got to meet him, man. Incredible, man. So, milk with whiskey, huh? Milk. Have you? With did you try it? Well, not before the fight, obviously, but. Nah, I didn't. Not since. Uh, that that combination just sounded like, bro. It's, yeah, a little it's too manly for me. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's some things that I just. There's... You said no mas. To the milk no whiskey. Yes, that's no right. monster whiskey milk, man. Uh, all right. Uh, Jorge Masvidal, June 1st. Quick break. And uh, Izzy, my interview with him from Friday. We'll play that and we'll be back to wrap this bad boy up. Timbo's back. Timbo's back. Did you see Timbo on the show yesterday? I saw highlights. I saw yeah, highlights. he was he great. He mentioned me a couple times. Thank you so much for coming. Always, really man. Good to see it. you. Where's, uh, oh, yeah, I'm mic'd up. What, you, what do you need? You need time? Oh, no, no. I thought I was like, I no, no, need one good. of those, but yeah, I'm mic'd we, we, up already. Someone, he took our belt. Uh, we had the belt out here, but it's Which all one? good. Ah, don't worry. Um, I don't know who it is. Welcome. Thank you. I know you were just doing another interview. Yeah, I was uh, with uh, Mighty Mouse. So the thing is, with me. Yeah. No more Zoom. Those are nice. You like these? Thanks. Fuck yeah. Those are real nice. Yeah, Zoom, I felt like everyone got. During COVID times, everyone got a little bit acquainted with Zoom, and that's the standard now. But I'm like, nah, I think this is way better. Oh, you know, people in person, feel the energy, live, and yeah, it's a vibe. And are you here just as a fan? It's a fan. I'm just a fan. I'm you just, just came to watch? Game. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I remember where I was when I watched UFC 100. I remember where I was where when I watched you? UFC. In my house in uh, Wanganui. Uh, I can't remember the name of the street, but I remember exactly the, the, the house and UFC 200. I was in Auckland at my friend's house and UFC 300. And I'm like, I want to watch it live. It would have been cool to, you know, headline it or something. Okay, I'm okay. just saying. So could I ask, in your yeah. mind, how, mm -hmm. how close was that? I it thought that right, should have no, been. No, like, so I was heartbroken because um, I thought it was us. And I was like, oh, they would announce it. They would announce it. And Tim was holding out because he and Hunter, Shadow Hunter and Dana, they were, like, going back and forth. And then I'm glad because I... I'm glad Tim called me before they announced it, like, I think three minutes before they announced Jamal versus Alex, because if I found out on Instagram, I would have been like, uh, Hunter and Dana would have got calls. Because I was, I was ready. I was training In your mind, was it that. a done deal? I thought it was done. I was, like, oh, I was training. Wow. I went For to how Switzerland. Long? I was training probably about four weeks, three weeks. I was on. No way. Yeah. Why Switzerland? Mm, I had something to do over there. Okay. And I was still training anyway. But, um, yeah, so for me, I just didn't want to be scrolling and find out. But they called, Tim called me and was look, it's not you. I'm like, what? And I was, the, the paper we just finished, and he called me. I'm just like, what? No. Because I was expecting like a trailer to drop, being like announcing it. And then I, then I found out, and I was like, oh, man. So I was like, whatever. And yeah, it is what it is. But yeah, we'll do it later on when the time permits. And, and how do you feel about the reason why it's not happening? I'm not sure. I can't see your eyes. Yeah, yeah, OK. <laughs> They're not built like us. It's different. Like everyone now, okay, so I wasn't even fully healed. I'm taking time off. And when the opportunity presented itself, I was like, fuck, it's history. It's, this is monumental, UFC 300. Fuck it, let's do it. But again, they're not built like us. Myself, Alex Volkanovsky, Kamaru Rusman, we were guys when we were champions. So just fuck it, just fight. Fuck the belt. I got belts at home. Even fans, whenever they see me now, they're like, oh, man, I hope you get that belt back. I'm like, bitch, they're at the house. I'm a two-time middleweight champion. Soon to be three. It's at the house. It's not about the belt. I'm coming for the heads. Right now, it's about fighting while you can. But he's young. He's done what he's done, got this far, become champion. So good on him. But yeah, it is what it is. You want to hold on to that belt and be cozy, that's, that's your prerogative. But yeah, when, when we were doing that, fuck the belt. It was just about fighting the best. And that's it. I, I saw uh, some comments from him on a podcast where he was like, I get to decide when this fight happens. You don't get to decide. Did you see these comments? And nah, I don't really follow the guy. He follows me, but I'm like, I guess that's maybe him trying to... I, I think he's actually a fan. He just has to fight me, but he's actually a fan. He's a big fan. A I fan of yours? Him. Yeah, of course. I paved the way for him. You know, without me, 
one of the great African champions. He wouldn't be here. He's the fourth African champion in this game. So kudos to him. So I pay, we paved the way for him. So he's a fan. He's a fan of what we've done. Did you try to say, okay, I can't do the DD? Give, give me Alex, because at that point, you know, it was still yeah, Alex, some that's, rumors. That's, that's always there, but watch this. I think after I fought uh, in Miami, I said I have probably less than 20 fights left in my, in my career. So. 20? I said 20. All right, that was my conversation with Israel Adesanya, and it kind of flew under the radar a little bit. There was a part of me that almost thought about holding it for post-300 because there was so much that was happening and so much content, but uh, in the end, I... Uh, well, we did it live, so you can't really hold something that's live. But uh, that was great stuff from Jorge. It's always so different. It's like I said on Thursday and Friday. It's just a different vibe. Someone's in their car. Someone's in, and then when they're in person, uh, he gave us a lot of good stuff there. That was a lot of fun. And uh, I appreciate him stopping by. And in fact, I do want to let, let me let me pull it up here real quick. Um, so the, the first stop was in... Las Vegas. Second stop is tomorrow at Palladium Times Square. The doors open at 5.30 Eastern, and the press conference is at 6.30. The Palladium Times Square is on West 44th Street. That's uh, 44th and Broadway. Wednesday, April 17th, they're in Miami at Pier 5 at Bayside Marketplace. And that starts at 5.30. Doors open at 5.30, 6.30, press conference. Pier 5 at Bayside Marketplace. And then Friday, April 19th in Los Angeles at the Novo at LA Live. I've been there before for other press conferences. Um, that's on 800 West Olympic Boulevard. The doors open at 5.30. The live show is at 6.30, the press conference. And so them's the stops. Ambitious, but they believe in it. And over at fanmio.com slash PPV and fanmio.com slash Diaz versus Masvidal, you can buy the pay-per-view right now. The early pricing is now over. That was up to April 12th. It will be $79.99. And they've just added a bunch of fights, including Chris Avila versus Anthony Showtime Pettis, obviously in a boxing match. So that's June 1st, and like I said, June 1st is going to be a very busy day in combat sports with the Better BF Bivol fight in Riyadh, this fight in Inglewood, and then, of course, Poirier versus Makhachev. Um, had talked to Dustin about coming on the show. He's actually flying today. We'll see about Wednesday. I can tell you that Yuri Prochaska is going to be on the show Wednesday. I can tell you that Bo Nickel is going to be on the show Wednesday. And I can tell you... That in our first chat since winning the UFC featherweight title, Ilya Taporia will be on the show Wednesday. And what a time to speak to him coming off what transpired Saturday night in Las Vegas with Max Holloway, putting the world on notice. And, and just, it's always crazy when someone's here, they're already a superstar, they're already a legend, they're already a fan favorite, they're already beloved, and somehow they've reached a whole other echelon. And it's just crazy. I know that there were people close to Max at one point who were maybe saying it might be time after the third Volk fight. Could you imagine how those people feel now? It's, it's remarkable what he's done post that third fight and the legend that he's become and uh, the legend that he continues to become. And who knows, he could, he could very well be champion by the end of the year. That's not a crazy thought. Um, all right. Uh, a great day. I did want to ask one last question to GC, but I don't know if he's if he's there. He's there. Yeah, I'm ready. In the end, you ever do this in school? Yeah, classic. It's the best. In the end, first time in Las Vegas, after years of talking about it, yeah. years of dreaming yeah, 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 about yeah, yeah. what it would be like, what is the final grade? What's the final? Man, I, giving it a grade is tough. Giving it a grade is tough because, I mean, we were obviously score, there for work. Yeah, but you got to feel you did the grade. I got to feel. I uh, I, did. I mean, there's so much. I don't even have. I've been to Vegas plus fifty times, and there's spots that on the strip that I've never been yeah. to. It's impossible to do it all because when you're working, you're you're staying in the same sort of radius. Yeah. You did the fight feast at the win. Did the win? Yeah, the fight feast at the win. Saw the Bellagio fountains. 
uh, did some sports books, did some gambling. Um, you know, obviously at the MGM Grand, got got to do a few things. Definitely want to go back and do more. I liked it. I actually liked it a lot. Everyone's always like, you can only stay for two days, then you got to get out. Probably because I wasn't, you know, binge drinking every day or like partying every day. I would imagine that does make you want to leave. One one way that I will agree with people that say that is uh, just how expensive everything was. I mean, like it feels like you're at like Times Square or something or like you're in like an airport, like a bottle of water is like seven to ten dollars. Everything is super, super expensive. So I could see how that could get old. But overall, I love it. Love the mountains, love the desert atmosphere. All the casinos and everything are obviously nice because there's a ton of money that goes into it. A lot of energy. Overall, I'm gonna give it a uh I'm gonna give it an eight one out of ten. Ultimately, did it live up to what you thought oh, yeah, 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 it yeah, could yeah, and yeah, would yeah, be? Yeah, yeah. Everyone that was just like you can't compare Atlantic City and Las Vegas, I now see what they mean. I mean, it's the only thing that they have in common is that there's casinos in both of those yeah. towns. That is it. It's just like it was. It's a lot. It is a. Uh, there, it, it, it's a wild town. It has a special kind of energy, though, right? Oh, for sure. For a big fight, like it's one thing to go to Vegas. Period. Energy. Vegas, big fight. It's just. It's there's nothing like it on. It's just once, once, all and the it's time. different. From, you could. It's palpable Wednesday as opposed to Friday, Saturday. Oh yeah. You could feel 100%. the difference, right? It 100%. just. It's like a storm. It continues to build, and it's fun to get there at the beginning of the week, but then to just see it go click, 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 and then come Friday, come post weigh-ins, like you just feel it. You just. It's amazing. And. If I could, if I could just say this, like for me personally, <clears throat> you know, we, we don't go to as many of the fights these days. And especially in Vegas, I haven't been to too many since uh, 2021. And, you know, there's a part of me at times where it's like, ah, you feel a little bit of FOMO. You feel like you're missing out. You know, those fight weeks are some of the most fun uh, experiences that I've ever had in my life. And I just wanted to say to everyone who stopped by to say hello, and it particularly started to happen a lot on on Friday Everyone who said hello, everyone who said a nice thing, who wanted to talk, whatever. I can't tell you how much I appreciated the words, how much I appreciated the support, how much we appreciate the support and love. There are some people who are more excited to see Connor than than me, which was incredible. Um, they would have been excited to see Frank, but they don't know what he looks like. Rick, of course, got a lot of love as well. And uh, it just really meant a lot, and I appreciate it, and I sort of forgot a little bit. And uh, I really enjoyed the week because we got to do, you know, we got to cover it our way. We got to do the show our way. We got to take the show out to a big fight. And uh, and I'm not trying to knock anyone else who's covering it in a different way. But uh, it was just it was just really special. And it was special to be back. And it was special to be a part of it and not feel as removed as uh, maybe in some other cases. And the best part was just feeling the energy of the fans, feeling the energy of the people, feeling the love. And I really did appreciate it. So... To anyone out there who stopped by, you know who you are. Thank you. We all appreciate it. I certainly do. It meant a hell of a lot. I I, I went home feeling really, really thankful and grateful. And uh, I hope that we can do it again soon. I hope that we could perhaps do it for the uh, the June card in uh, in Vegas, the return of Conor McGregor at UFC 303. And even if we don't, uh, this is uh, this is a week and an experience and a and a feeling that won't leave me anytime soon. So thank you very much. I wanted to close with that. For now, you can hit the music. Frankie, I think since we came back and started the new era, this is the least amount of things Frank has ever said on the show. Damn right. It's pro- It hasn't been more than five words. It really hasn't. Like the, right now, you just doubled it. Uh, and there I was you trying go. to see if I can emote yeah. without saying a word. So, you know, I'm not sure what to make of it all, but... Uh, we all have bad days, man. Okay, all right. Listen, we do. But uh, just like the great um, the great Michael Jordan once said, you, you miss a hundred of the shots you don't take, right? I'm sure that's the one who said that. Is he not the one who said it? I think it? it's Wayne Gretzky. Was it Wayne Gretzky? Yeah, and then it was quoted by Michael Scott on The Office. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was Michael Jordan that said it, but I guess I it mean, makes sense. it's such a great line. You Who knows? You could attribute it to any of the greats. Yeah, no, that's 100% true. Um, well, anyway, you know, it was a great show. Appreciate everything. And we're back on uh, Wednesday with what appears to be another great show. And I do want to let you know, two-week break after Wednesday's show. Spring break, Passover, Post-Easter, 
after Wednesday's show, our next show will be the Monday after UFC 301, which sounds absurd, but that's only two weeks, four shows total, May 6th. So get us while you can, friends. Get us while you can. While you can. You're going to miss us when we're gone. You're going to miss me when we're there. going to miss me anywhere. You're going to miss us when we're gone. When we're gone. So yes, Wednesday and then a bit of a break. But I can't wait for Wednesday's show. Great way to go out. Back on Wednesday. Peace out here.